I don't have to go, you know. I can help clean things up around here. I know how to keep a low profile. This isn't up for debate. You're going.
Best mounts in all of... We're just about ready to set sail. I don't know about you, but the moonlit is looking a little too close for comfort these days. I was planning on sailing to Sadrith Mora next, but I don't mind taking you to an Alliance capital. Trade is always good in the capitals. My word. If the counselor is in Leowin or the surrounding countryside, the Ivory Brigade will find her. Not now, citizen. Can't you see I have my hands full at the moment? I'm sure a guard or one of my brigadines can assist you. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? Leowin's problems are legion. And now the Wood Elf Archer's predictions seem to be coming true. Damn these old Imperial secrets. Counselor Jirik has disappeared, and the Ivory Brigade is already spread too thin for my liking. The Wood Elf, Evely Sharp Arrow. She brought news that the Dark Brotherhood was targeting members of the Elder Council. All because of some secret of the Longhouse Emperors. We took her warning seriously. But Jirik refused Brigadine protection. With that guild of assassins, I'm not sure what to think. But Jirik is missing, and I don't have enough Brigadines at the ready to conduct the proper search. You look capable. So, care to earn some gold and help us determine the Counselor's fate? Here, let me update your map. These are places Jirik visits during her daily routine. If something befell her, it happened somewhere along this path. Meanwhile, I have Everly Sharp Arrow checking locations in the city. She was very eager to help. Councilor Jirik was a member of the Imperial Elder Council, back when we still had an empire. 
Now her title is mostly ceremonial. But she continues to assist the Legates by serving as an intermediary with the local nobility. Since the collapse of the Empire and the dissolution of the Elder Council, Leowin has become an independent city-state. Countess Caro sits on the throne, but the Chamber of Legates governs the city. I suppose the Countess is technically the highest authority in Leowin, but she leaves the administration of the city to the Chamber of Legates. Leviticus, another former Council Elder, leads this august body, along with Tabezako and Amhalu. Councillor Jirik is a creature of habit. Her daily routine is to stroll along the river and stop to read near a cave across the way. While Everly Sharp Arrow examines spots the Councillor frequents in the city, you should check these locations. On paper, Countess Caro rules Leowin, but in practice, the Chamber of Legates governs the city. Legates Tabezako and Amhalu and Councillor Leviticus. They handle day-to-day -day tasks. Me? I'm commander of the Ivory Brigade, Leowin's militia. Indeed. Since the fall of the Empire, the Ivory Brigade had to redouble its efforts to replace the Imperial Legions. We maintain active defenses in the north to keep the ongoing war at bay. But we have our hands full with refugees, bandits, and such. The Three Banners War. Let the Alliances fight over the Ruby Throne as long as they leave us in peace. I just wish I had more soldiers to spare for this new threat that Everly Sharp Arrow brought to our attention. Everly Sharp Arrow is an adventurer from Valenwood, though I get the sense she's relatively new at the job. She recently arrived with news of a threat against the former members of the Imperial Elder Council. I was skeptical at first, but now... She told us that the late Emperor Leovic Steward was murdered by the Dark Brotherhood. Apparently, it pertains to some secret of the Longhouse Emperors, but those details she discussed with Councillor Leviticus. Everly found a number of documents pertaining to this secret. One of these contained a list of names. The steward and some of the counselors. She assumed that since the steward had already been killed, the rest of the list might be next. Councillor Jirik was a member of the Imperial Elder Council, back when we still had an empire. Now her title is mostly ceremonial. Since the collapse of the empire and the dissolution... Are you really trusting the fate of Councillor Jirik to this... this outsider? Oh, why didn't Councillor Jirik heed your warnings? If the Ivory Brigade requires mercenaries to do their job, perhaps Leowen needs different protectors.
Pico, over here. Rock Grove begs for your aid. Counselor Jurek? Oh, pardon me. You're not the counselor. Apologies. I heard you stumbling about and thought it might be Counselor Jurek. Oh, no one important, I assure you. I'm simply one of the counselor's aides. I help her with paperwork mostly. Run errands, that sort of thing. She initially refused the captain's offer, but she received a letter that made her... Uh, uneasy. Last I saw, she was headed back to the city by way of the Eastern Gate. But she never returned to her manor, so I came to look for her. Please, find her. Someone, anyone, help me! I refused to believe, but Farrell, Leviticus, they were right. I was attacked. An assassin. You, you must warn the others. The counselors. Leofix's secret. It, it will be the death of us all! Counselor Jerick! Damn, we're too late! Damn it, I'm too late. Poor Counselor Jerick. She didn't deserve to die like that. At least I don't think she did. Did you see what happened? Who attacked her? The mark of the Dark Brotherhood. Just like with Faro Lupus. Uh, sorry. I'm working for Counselor Leviticus, the head of the Chamber of Legates. I came to Leowin to warn him after I stumbled across some secret concerning the Longhouse Emperors. It relates to something called the Four Ambitions of Mayrun's Dagon. I think they're Daedric weapons, but I'm still puzzling that out. I was working for Faro Lupus before he was murdered. I found a strange tome with Daedric markings at his behest. 
Yeah, that's what brought me here. I found a list of names. Borrow Lupus and members of the Elder Council. It said they all knew something about this secret. Since Farrell was murdered, I figured the others were in danger too. Looks like I was right. Let me have your map. I'll mark where Counselors Valeria and Sophus were last seen. Go warn them. Convince them to take precautions. Then meet me at Counselor Jirik's Manor in the city. Maybe we can find something to shed more light on this secret. I'll get the city guards to come and gather the Counselor's body. She shouldn't just be left out here. Then I'll head to Counselor Jirik's Manor. When you're done checking on Counselor Falaria and Counselor Sophus, meet me there. Like I said, it all started when I found that strange tome for Faral Lupus, an Emperor Leovic's journal. It was in code, but I got it translated. Sent me to a few hidden Imperial caches where I learned that the Longhouse Emperors had a secret. Right, but it turned out I wasn't the only one trying to learn more about the ambitions. A group of cracked acorns called the Order of the Waking Flame. Fanatic Mayroon's Dagon cultists. Had to put arrows in more than one of those bastards. I guess someone hired them to eliminate everyone who knows about the secret. The question is, who? And I was told by a more or less friendly Dramora named Lyrinth that the fate of our world was at stake. So of course I want to figure this all out. So Foral Lupus hired me to retrieve a book from a retreat once used by the Longhouse Emperors. He never told me what it was, and he died before I could ask. The book is... weird. It has weird pages and weird markings, and I can't read a word of it. Not much. Foral's partner said he planned to use it to make things right, but she didn't know how. And it's Daedric, I think. I will say, carrying it... It's kind of a burden. And I've been having strange dreams. But I don't want to talk about that. Like I said, it all started when I found that strange tome for Faral Lupus, an Emperor Leovic's journal. It was in code, but I got it translated. Sent me to a few hidden Imperial caches where I learned that the Longhouse Emperors had a secret. Hear ye, card sharps and collectors! Test your wits and courage in a brand new card game, Tales of Tribute!
We weren't expecting visitors. Are you here to see the counselor? Are you here to speak with Counselor Sophus? I'm afraid my husband has taken our dog for a walk. Is there something I could help you with, perhaps? Danger? What are you talking about? Does this have something to do with that letter? And who are you, by the way? Captain Rianne? I see. Well, if the Ivory Brigade sent you, my husband likes to walk our dog Chero along the tree line. Go on and find him. I'll wait here in case he returns. My husband, Valen, received a letter from an old friend this morning. Faralupus, Emperor Leovic's steward. I could see that whatever was in that letter upset him, but he didn't want to discuss it, and I didn't push him. Now please, go find him. so long. They should... Valen! No! Oh, Valen! Oh, my love! What happened? I thought Captain Rehan sent you to protect my husband! You know, Valen acted strange after the letter from Faral Lupus arrived. He didn't tell me what it said, and I never asked. Before he left today, he gave me a sealed scroll, said to give it to Counselor Leviticus if anything ever happened to him. A scroll, sealed and bearing my husband's stamp. Take it. Give it to Counselor Leviticus. I hope it helps catch whoever murdered my husband. I'll summon the town guard. They'll help me with... with my husband. What do you want?
stay alert. I have it on good authority that I'm in danger. Of course, Counselor. Step back and state your business. I have every reason to believe that my life is in danger. If you so much as make a threatening gesture, the Brigadine will dismember you. He has very strict orders on that regard. I was beginning to suspect as much. Very well. Tell me everything that you have learned. Leave nothing out. I want to hear it all. Lupus. Emperor Leovic's old steward? And Jirik as well? Gods. They are targeting the Elder Council. Anything else? Tell me. The slightest detail could mean the difference between life and death. The ambitions? I heard that term once before. Years ago. I must go to Tidewater Cave. I have a cache hidden there, and I need to check my records. Meanwhile, I suggest you find Jirik's files. She kept them in a hidden compartment in her nightstand. Possibly. I oversaw the Imperial Treasury, so my records deal with expenditures and collections. I have documents going as far back as Emperor Morikar. Possibly even Durkarach. And I know I saw that term someplace. I will see what I can find. Extremely well. We were rivals as well as colleagues on the Elder Council. It was that way between all of the counselors, I suppose. Her death is a tragedy, however. I will miss her. Possibly. I oversaw the Imperial Treasury, so my records deal with expenditures and collections. I have documents going as far back as Emperor Morikar. Possibly even Durkarach. And I know... Challenge what you know. If you're courageous enough, all things are possible.
I'm glad you're here. I've been searching all over, but I could use your help. This place is huge. Why do rich people need so many rooms? Oh, but tell me, did you warn the counselors like I asked? Sophus is dead? Damn! Was it the Dark Brotherhood? What am I saying? Of course it was! I've torn this place apart, but so far I haven't found anything related to Imperial secrets or the ambitions. Maybe you can spot something I missed. I knew you'd be a help, but I didn't expect you to just have the answer the moment you walked in. Good job! Councillor Jirik's bedroom is upstairs. Let's see if we can find that hidden compartment. Hidden compartment? I love it! I mean, I hate that people have died, but... Um, so, what did you find? Let me see that. Hmm, that's a code, all right. Some of the other documents I found use something similar. You know, I'm really starting to hate all this secrecy surrounding the ambitions. Good idea. We need to report in to Councillor Leviticus anyway. Let him know what we uncovered. If he has a qualified scribe, great. If not, I know someone. They help me with those other documents. Let's go to Leowin Castle and talk to Leviticus. I can't help feeling that once we solve the secret of the Longhouse Emperors, we'll know how to stop the Dark Brotherhood from murdering any more of the Councillors. I'll see you at the castle. Counselor Jirik, what happened? I need your report, mercenary. Word reached me that Councillor Jirik was murdered. What about Sophus and Falaria? And did you find definitive proof that the Dark Brotherhood is our culprit? That's the Black Hand, symbol of the Dark Brotherhood. I wish Jirik and Sophus had allowed me to assign brigadines to protect them. At least Valeria, 
however reluctantly, agreed to a military escort. Did you and Everly uncover any other information? It appears that Counselor Leviticus's trust in the Wood Elf was not misplaced. Very well. You and Everly can head in and talk to the Counselor. Captain Rianne and the Ivory Brigade will deal with the Dark Brotherhood. We are perfectly safe in here. Your damn Empire, Leviticus. It no longer exists, but it still causes us trouble. You must be the mercenary that Captain Rianne told me about. And I see you're working with Evely Sharp Arrow. Good. Good. I assume you have something to report. I'm listening. Damn it all to oblivion and back. I should have taken Faro Lupus more seriously when I received his letter. This is definitely the mark of the Dark Brotherhood. Anything else to add to this? Yes, that's the Longhouse Emperor's Code. Only a handful of Imperial scribes can decipher it. I know one. Baragon. I'll send for him at once. Meanwhile, we must warn the remaining counselors on the list. Abor, Valeria, Itinia, and Vandacia. Very good. I've sent messages to Itinia and Vandacia already, as neither of them are currently within Leowin's jurisdiction. I need you to go to Fort Blueblood. Counselor Abor has taken refuge there, but I'd prefer to have her here in Leowin. Everything we do now must be swift if we are to get ahead of this. Go to Fort Blueblood and convince Counselor Abor to return to the city. She'll be safer here than at the fort. Sadly, no. Whatever Leovic confided in Pharaoh Lupus and the others, whatever he ordered them to do, he kept it a complete secret from me. I suppose he assumed I wouldn't go along with anything illegal or Daedric, and he was right. I was, but the Elder Council was made up of almost two dozen counselors. According to the list Evely Sharp Arrow brought me, only seven counselors were privy to this secret. Make that six. I, I have no idea why Leovic listed me among that group. Who knows what was going through Leovic's head when he wrote that entry in his journal? Varon and his rebels were literally pounding at the doors of the palace at the time. And Leovic wasn't totally in his right mind even before the rebellion. The Longhouse Emperors were reachmen who seized control of the Empire and ruled for some forty years. Dukarach the Black Drake founded the ruling house. Morikar ascended to the throne after his father's death, and his son Leovic followed him. Leovic made a mistake. When he decided to declare Daedra worship as the law of the land, Duke Varen Aquilario subjected. He led a rebellion and personally dispatched Leovic in the Imperial throne room. Thus ended the Longhouse Emperor's reign. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Varen disappeared a few years later, and the Empire collapsed. Now the so-called Alliances are fighting over the scraps, and Tamriel is in shambles. We're doing all we can just to keep Blackwood safe and secure. Abor has always had an affinity for the Imperial military. When she received her letter of warning from Pharaoh Lupus, she sent word to me, told me she was going to the fort that the soldiers would protect her. I fear she is badly mistaken. Only a token force of Brigadines guards Fort Blueblood. If the Dark Brotherhood is truly our enemy, I fear a lone assassin can bypass the fort's defenses with relative ease. Abor would be better off here in the castle. Go and bring her back at once. 
so much to Fort Blue Blood? That's to the east across the river. I'll meet you there. What?
Look, Councillor Leviticus and Captain Rianne sent me. I need to see Councillor Abor now. And what about my sister? She hasn't been seen since she took the Councillor her meal. Councillor Abor was very clear about this. She doesn't want to be disturbed. Oh, another mercenary. Is our Ivory Brigade so enfeebled that Captain Rianne must resort to hiring sellswords? Look, as I told the Wood Elf, Councillor Abor was quite insistent. She doesn't want to be disturbed. All right, enough. I can see when I'm being overruled. Very well. I give you permission to enter the Watchtower. Councillor Abor's safety is now in your hands. Lurius? Oh, something about his sister. She's another servant here at the fort. Works in the kitchen, I believe. Apparently, she brought the Councillor her meal. He says she never returned, but the servants look for any opportunity to sneak off. The Councillor demanded we protect her, said her life was in danger, but refused to give me any details. Imperial confidentiality, she insisted, above my station. I put her up in the watchtower and assigned a couple of brigadines to guard her. The Dark Brotherhood's calling card. Of course they tore out the pages and took them, just when we were so close to finding out more about the ambitions. Abor's meal is still warm. So what happened to the servant that delivered it? We have a door locked from the outside, a dead counselor, and a missing servant. Did the assassin take off with both the torn out journal pages and the servant? Anyway, they not only murdered Abor, they probably know how to find the ambitions now. See that rope hanging from the top of the tower? Bet my bottom acorn that's how the assassin got in and out. But the missing servant... Something about that is knocking on the back of my head. And why would the Dark Brotherhood take those pages? Maybe. But everything I've read about the Dark Brotherhood never suggested they would be interested in weapons of war. If that's even what the ambitions are. Damn it. We're loosing arrows in the dark here. Let's tell Commander Orton about Abor.
So, will Counselor Abor be returning with you to Leowin? Am I finally going to be able to get my fort back in order? Murdered? Gods, keep your voice down. Do you want to start a panic? Tell me what you found in the Watchtower. Let me see that. A black handprint. The sign of the Dark Brotherhood. But where is the servant, Talais? Is she involved in this fiasco? And how did she and the assassin get out of the watchtower? My brigadines never left their post. Well, that explains some of it, but not all. We need to locate Talais. Since you're already involved in working for Captain Rianne, I want you to quietly try to find Talais. Start by talking to the other servants in the kitchen and dining hall. Your sister is fine. This one is certain. Then where could she be? She would never neglect her duties. Probably found a dark corner and someone to snuggle with. This one does that all the time. <coughs> Pleasant days, visitors. How can this one assist you? Ah, Talis. She worries her brother so. She asked me where we kept the hot root flakes. Counselor Abor sprinkles them on every dish. I told her they are in the pantry, but you need the key from the kitchen to unlock the door. All right, grab a broom and start sweeping. What? No, that's Talese's job. And do you see Talais anywhere? No. Then start sweeping. Another new face in the fort? First Counselor Abor, now you and that cute wood elf. Look, I'd love to chat, but Talaise has wandered off and left me to handle her chores. She took the Counselor her meal and hasn't returned. Did you check the watchtower? Abor's a little old, but maybe Talais decided to improve her station, if you catch my meaning. Abor reeks of fear. Maybe Talais finds that attractive. Well, she's been acting like a frightened guar since she arrived. Stays locked up in the watchtower. Only lets a single servant in at a time. And I hear she's been burning papers. Documents of some kind. She's scared out of her wits, if you ask me. The servants come to the kitchen to mutter and gossip. This one will not have it. Misawa asks that you do not distract them overly long, as they are already naturally lazy. What is it that you need? That young woman. She has not returned from the watchtower, so her chores remain undone. And she took the pantry key with her when she went. It is no longer hanging on its hook. That is a clear violation of the kitchen rules. A clear violation. The pantry is in the cellar, but the door is around the side of the building. Talaise mumbled something about how the counselor loves hot root flakes, grabbed the key and the tray of food, and went off. This one hasn't seen her since. Before we check the pantry, let's talk. So, what did we learn? Counselor Abor was frightened, but that's understandable. Interesting that she was burning documents. Her journal indicated that she knew more than the others. And Talaise visited the pantry before heading to the watchtower.
couldn't hurt. And every mystery novel I ever read taught me you should always follow up on every clue. Even the ones that seem insignificant. Let's check the pantry and see if she was looking for more than hot root flakes down there. Murder to lace too. Would the Dark Brotherhood murder? Oh no! We need to talk about this. All right, I think I figured it out. The assassin followed Talaise down here, murdered her, and took her place so they could gain access to the Watchtower. Pretty clever, but they didn't have to kill her. No, not from what I've read, anyway. I thought they only killed those whose names appeared on their contracts. I can't imagine anyone asked them to kill a poor servant. Yes, but we still need to check on Councillor Falaria, and someone needs to go to Gideon and make sure that Councillor Vandacia is all right. Can I leave those tasks to you? I want to return to Leowin and consult with Councillor Leviticus. Oh, good point. Before you head out, report to Commander Orton. Tell him what happened to Talaise, and how we think the assassin slipped into the watchtower undetected. His brigadines need to be able to recognize an imposter when they see one. After your report to the commander, make contact with counselors Valeria and Vandacia. Valeria went to Tidewater Cave to get her records, and Vandacia works in the Gideon courthouse. Cracked acorns! I suddenly had the weirdest feeling come over me. Yes. No, I don't know. We were talking about the counselors, Valeria and Vandacia. Suddenly I had a premonition. It was brief and disturbing and mildly unpleasant, like the dreams I've been having. But this is the first time while I was awake. Remember I told you about that strange book I found? The one with the Daedric writing that I can't read? I've been having bad dreams since I found it, and the dreams are becoming more frequent. This time it happened right while we were talking. It was just a flash, but it was accompanied by a feeling. I felt a sense of overwhelming evil, all tied up in the figure I saw in my mind. Like someone held a portrait in front of my face for just a moment and then pulled it away. It was one of the Waking Flame cultists, I think. Someone powerful, in command. A dark silhouette wrapped in a cloak. I'll never forget the feeling it invoked. It was like a wave of hopelessness. We can deal with this later. Let's get back to it. What?
All right. You talked to the fort's servants and rummaged around in our pantry. What's the verdict? Did you find the missing servant? That's... Oh, that's horrible. Are you sure? No. Of course you're sure. No one would lie about something like that. I'll tell her brother what happened and send someone to tend to her body. Gods, what a day this has been.
<laughs> the mercenary. A few moments later, and you would have found an empty cave. Your timing really is impeccable. We've already packed up my records, and we're about to head out. But what news of the other counselors? Did your warnings reach them in time? All three of them? That's disheartening news. Well, I'll take my records to Leowen. Perhaps between the two of us, Counselor Leviticus and I can ascertain what past incident has returned to haunt us. Oh, just a lifetime of public service and bureaucracy. Mostly financial records, but also meeting notes, ledgers, those sorts of things. I oversaw budgets and finances, the collection of taxes, public works, and I kept immaculate records. That's good to hear. Emperor Leovic loved to hide things in coded documents. But what about Counselor Vandasia? Do we know if he's still safe in Gideon? Perfect. Remind him he's too old to play the hero, and I want to see him in Leowen Castle immediately, if not sooner. These brigadines will make sure I get to the city safely. Me and my records, both. Godspeed, mercenary.
I was attacked in the streets of our fair city, Keshu. I demand you deal with the criminal post-haste. Your guards did their job, Counselor Vandacia. The prisoner is secure. And what's this? More assassins? Explain yourself immediately. One attempt on my life today is more than enough. If you're another one of those Dark Brotherhood bastards, I assure you, you won't find either myself or Governor Keshu to be easy prey. Warn me? As always, Leviticus offers too little and too late. I received the letter, same as the other counselors. My personal guard took the threat seriously, and we captured the assassin in the act. But what of my esteemed colleagues? Are they safe? Dead. All three of them. This is unimaginable. Feral Lupus's letter suggested the Longhouse Emperor has left behind a secret that would prove to be a threat. But I thought he was just being melodramatic. Has Leviticus determined what this is about? Four ambitions? Never heard of them. How could something I know nothing about make me a target of the Dark Brotherhood? It's got to be a mistake. You must question the prisoner. Get him to confess and reveal the truth of this sordid affair. Governor Keshu locked the prisoner in the holding cell in the courthouse basement. Question the villain and find out why the Dark Brotherhood is trying to wipe out anyone who was part of the Imperial Elder Council. I'll head for Leowin afterward. I wish there was something I could tell you. The letter I received suggested that some old council business was the cause of all this. Why the Dark Brotherhood would be interested in such menial affairs, I'm not sure. I'm completely baffled. As I said, I never heard the term. The Longhouse Emperors were enamored of secrets and code words, though. Perhaps I encountered it, but it was called something else. If you think it might be important, ask the assassin when you interrogate him. I'm not sure how relevant my ancient history is, but I was appointed to the Elder Council by Emperor Durkarach himself. I helped guide the Empire through most of the reign of the Longhouse Emperors. Sadly, my role in guiding the Empire often put me at odds with the Emperors. I was rarely privy to their secrets. I'm afraid I can't shed any light on that particular mystery. Keshu the Black Finn. War hero, progressive Argonian, and governor of our fair city of Gideon. I serve as an advisor and bureaucrat. Nothing more. I have deep roots in Gideon, so I try to do my part to keep the wheels of government turning. My personal guard is dedicated and well-trained, not to mention lucky. I was nearing the courthouse when the assassins sprang from the shadows. My guards reacted instantly and overpowered the villain. We brought them here, and Keshu locked them away. door is open. What happened here? Poured something on the lock. Hit me. And escaped. Some sort of acid ate right through the lock. Look, there's more of it on the floor.
Abraham that way, toward the old ruins? He almost knocked me over! How rude! He attacked this legionnaire and ran into the ruins of the old city. You're persistent, I'll give you that. All right, let's chat. Do you make it a habit to read other people's mail? That letter is personal and private, full of sensitive information. Well, aren't you a fast reader? If you chased after me because of something Council Van Dacia told you, well, he lied. If the Dark Brotherhood sets out to kill you, you're dead. We don't make mistakes. We don't fail. Not ever. I haven't killed anyone. Not recently, anyway. And if you're talking about our calling card, anyone can dip their palm in black ink and slap it on a sheet of parchment. Look. We receive no contracts. I'm here on different business entirely. Good question. If you figure it out, let me know. I certainly owe someone for the bruises the Councillor's guards gave me. Now, as much fun as this has been, I really do need to get back to my daring escape. Best of luck with your mystery. Tempting, but no. I detest so-called places of justice.
mercenary from Leowin has returned. Tell me, were you able to capture the assassin? Or perhaps you killed him in battle once you caught up to him? I am eager to hear the news. Allow me to peruse the document, if you will. <laughs> Proof positive that the Dark Brotherhood is in Blackwood. We must find this sanctuary and destroy it. What did you expect? Such lies fall from his lips like rain from the sky on a stormy day. Villains never freely admit their guilt. The evidence is right here in this letter. Meet me and Leowin, and we'll share this information with Leviticus. What? Oh, my personal guard are nearby, and these legionnaires are sufficient. You need not be concerned. As for Keshu, she had business to attend to. Gideon business. I saw no reason to distract her from her regular duties. Now to Leowin.
I'm off duty. Bother someone else. The Dark Brotherhood. They must be driven out of Blackwood. I still can't figure out why they would be targeting us, Vandasia. Eliminate the threat first. Then we can seek answers. All of the remaining counselors in Blackwood are gathered here in the castle. Valeria, Vandasia, and myself. While we await the arrival of the scribe I sent for, tell me what you uncovered in Gideon. I'm not sure I agree with Vandasia's assessment. Yes, I remember reports of their presence early in Morikar's reign, but they were driven out. The assassins must see this as the perfect opportunity to reclaim their base, but what does that have to do with Leovic's secret and the ambitions? Vondacia, Faleri, and I were just discussing that. We think Leovic had each of the counselors unknowingly working on a different aspect of the Ambitions project. They each had access to a piece of the puzzle, but no one but Leovic knew everything. And that's our prevailing theory. If the counselors ever came together to compare notes, the truth of the Ambitions would be revealed. To stop that from happening, the Dark Brotherhood was sent to kill my colleagues. Indeed. Hmm, very curious. Still, I'm hesitant to take the word of an admitted killer at face value. Not with so much at stake. Regardless, their very presence still poses a threat to all of Blackwood. The Sanctuary cannot be allowed to reopen. Jirix and Sophus's documents contain information written in Imperial Code. I sent for the scribe, Baragon, but he has yet to arrive. Until then, the counselors will remain safe within these walls. You have done well so far, and have my thanks. Whatever the truth behind the murders of my fellow counselors, we can't allow the Dark Brotherhood to gain a foothold in Blackwood. I'd like you and Evely to go to Blood Run Cave to ascertain the situation there. Talk to Evely and make your plans. Until we know more, I'm not prepared to engage in an all-out war with the Dark Brotherhood. No, better to send you and Evely to investigate the situation. Then we can determine if a more forceful response is warranted. Hey, partner! Over here!
Mercenary, you're needed back in Leowen Castle. Pico, over here. Rock Grove begs for your aid. Perhaps this was not such a grand idea. Ah, you have caught me in a moment of indecision, stranger. I set out with the idea of looking into strange rumors concerning Deep Scorn Hollow. Now that I have had some time to think it over, I find that I lack the courage for the task. I am Zeechus, ideal in rumors, especially the sort that hint at opportunities. For example, there is a cave called Deep Scorn Hollow on an island by the coast. It is said to be a smuggler's den. But that is not the only rumor about the place. Strange figures in hoods. Travelers who disappear, masked nobles and dark revels, smugglers' tales to scare off the locals, or something more. You seem brave. Perhaps you are interested. 
Remember your old friend Zeichus if you find riches there. I need some help. Thank the Eight Divines. I could really use some help. The name's Bastion. Watch yourself, friend. I was accosted by a dark elf at this very spot. She went into the cave over there hours ago, but she might return at any moment. The dark elf Tanare Vels. She's a traveler I met along the road. The cave is Deep Scorn Hollow. The entrance is over by the dock. I'm here to retrieve a fellow named Quisley Silvell. His family sent me to find him. I think he's in trouble. Untie me, please. The Silvells will pay well if you help me get Quisley out of whatever trouble he's in. And I could use someone to watch my back. Interested? Oh, and check the shack. I think Tanare dropped something during our struggle. Oh, thank you. Uh, look around, would you? I'd like to examine whatever my attacker dropped. I saw something fall out of Tanare's satchel when she ambushed me. Why? This is a contract. Tanare Vels is bringing Quisley in to pay debts in Leowin. Damn it! I guess that explains why Tanare knocked me out and tied me up. Of course, that God, idiot Quisley would gamble away more than he had in his coin purse. He's done it before. Usually begs his parents for help, though. I ought to just let the Dark Elf have him, but it would be... <sighs> ...dishonorable. We better see if we can catch up to her. I'd like to leave her tied up and empty-handed when I drag Quisley out of here by his arrogant nose. This is different for Quisley. He's not one for any sort of rough living, other than maybe going to gambling dens and taverns in the seedier parts of town. Probably? Yes, yes I did. We were just idly talking on the road. It never occurred to me that someone else might be looking for that petulant brat. It's not the first time I've been asked to get Quisley out of trouble. I should try to hide it better, I suppose. We were raised together, more or less. Except he was the firstborn of a wealthy family, and I was the foundling they took in. Something which Quisley never quite let me forget. Well, it's the right thing to do. I mean, the Silvels gave me shelter. Educated me alongside Quisley. Even hired a tutor for me when I showed some magical aptitude. I owe them. And if looking out for Quisley is how I pay them back, so be it. No, not that I noticed. She said to keep an eye out for smugglers along the coast and departed soon after. She likely just hung back and followed me the rest of the way. Foolish of me. I should have been more alert. All the time, friend. House Silvel has interests in a dozen cities. I travel all over Tamriel, looking after their business. I'm a mage by training, but I spend my days dealing with contracts and cargoes. And chasing after Quisley. Miss Silvel's fostered me from the time I was small seeing to my education and giving me a place in their home. As I grew older, 
Lord Silvel employed me in the family business. What I want to do isn't important. I have an obligation. Shack, a cave by the water. Huh? Looks like a smuggler's den to me. Maybe there's more to this place than meets the eye. First time I've had to look for Quisley in such a rustic location. Not his usual style. <sighs> <sighs> Like the ruin just sunk. This is definitely not a smuggling up. How did Quisley stand it down here? It's not what I'd call luxurious. <laughs> This time, idiot. <laughs> They have captives. Over here. Let me out before these cultists kill me. I Let me out too. Here. There's a cult of Sithis in these caves. Right. They sacrifice people. Thank you. We've been here for days. You should get out of here too, stranger. These people, the Unmakers, they're crazy. I think they're preparing to sacrifice people. Why would anyone want to do such a thing? I've met no one by that name, but that doesn't mean he's in here somewhere. The only non-cultist I've seen in days was a dark elf who sneaked by a short time ago. She motioned for us to wait and left without a word. I... I should go. They're cultists, I think. They follow someone called the Daughter of Sithis, and they talk about sacrifices to the Unmaker. I was on the road to Gideon when they grabbed me. Can I go now? Before we continue, let's talk a moment. Cultists? That explains some of the decoration in here. So much for the smuggler hypothesis. I didn't expect to have to fight through a nest of cultists to extract Quisley from this mess, but so be it. What's he gotten himself mixed up in now? What's there to know? They worship a god of death, darkness, and primordial chaos. Nothing good can come of that. Quisley's always getting into trouble, but it usually involves love or dice. 
He could be in real danger this time. Allowing Quisley to be dragged off to angry criminals is not much of an improvement. While Quisley might deserve it, I can't let Tanari Vels get him either. I want to try to grab one of these cultists and get some answers. It's a long story. Suffice it to say, I owe his family a great debt. Quisley and I were more or less raised together. The Silvels count on me to watch out for him, or help him if he needs it. That's what the Silvels say when they need me to help him. But he's their son. I'm just someone they raised. Forgive me if I sound ungrateful. They took me in and made sure I was clothed, educated, trained. They didn't have to do that. I've lost count. He does as he pleases. Unfortunately, what pleases him seems to land him in hot water. Every time. This, though... How Quisley stumbled into a cult's clutches, I can only guess. I'm the son of Lord Martel Halex, the traitor. I suppose the story's not well known outside of court circles. My father was one of High King Emmerich's most trusted advisors. But when I was only a toddler, he plotted to secretly murder Emmerich and appoint himself regent. Or so I'm told. He failed, of course. Others in my family were implicated in the plot. The High King stripped House Halix of its titles and domains. My mother died of shame. I was far too young to have been a part of it, though, so the Silvels took me in. this place was. It doesn't look dwarven. Let's corner one of these cultists. They might know what's happened to Quisley. I'm not really with them. Don't hurt me! You there! Stop! not lay a finger on me. You have no idea who you're dealing with. Xanathar, give me patience. What is the meaning of this intrusion? Who are you people? What do you think you're doing here? I warn you. I am favored by the daughter of Sithis. She will avenge every injury you inflict on me. Quisley Silvel? He belongs to Laleus now. She is the daughter of Sithis, and none dare defy her. Leave while you can. You're fools if you think you can save him from her. The daughter of Sithis and her brother are in the fane of scorn. I don't know when she plans to grant Silvel the kiss of Sithis. Someone else is to be sacrificed today. I've told you what you wanted to know. Can I go? Some dark elf they caught. Even now she faces the death of the crystal fangs in the next chamber. Laleus herself presides in the fane below. I haven't been invited there yet, so I don't know for sure where it is. Now let me go. Please? I don't believe him. I think he knows more than he says he does. The daughter of Sithis? The Fane of Scorn? I don't believe it. Quisley's fallen in with... with... death worshippers? Hardly. The only thing that interests Quisley is himself. Either these Sithis followers hid their true nature to lure him in, or he's so besotted with a woman that he doesn't realize he's in danger. Either way, I'd better get him out of here. I'm not sure I believe this sniveling cultist, 
but we shouldn't let anyone get sacrificed. Not even Tanare Vels. Let's split up. You keep going, in case he's telling the truth. I'll see if I can find out more about the daughter and the Fane. Please, I'll tell you anything you want. Just let me go. I know where a map of this place is. It's not far, just, you know, don't hit me. Helpful of you. What else can you tell me? Stranger, let's talk somewhere safer. Those idiots were going to sacrifice me to Sithis! Ugh, my skin still feels like I've got a thousand tiny spiders biting me. That was horrible. Oh, and thank you. I don't know what someone like you was doing here, but I won't argue with Providence. Ah, the dutiful and not terribly clever mage. I'll bet he's angry with me. <laughs> I took care not to inflict any permanent damage on him, and I fully intended to set him free just as soon as I finish here. It's business, not personal. Then you understand my predicament. I need Silvel if I want Lars Tull off my back, but it's not worth getting myself killed over. Help me get out of here, and I'll help you. I got a look at a map, so I think I know where you can find Silvel. Not much. Lars Tull suspected that Quisley was hiding out in a smuggler's cave on the coast. I thought I'd have to check them all. Then I ran into your friend, Bastion. I knew there was something off about the smuggler story, though. It didn't fit. He must be in deep, if Lars Toll is willing to write off what I owe to get his claws on Quisley. Too bad for him, but it's a chance for me to get out of a bad situation. Lars Toll makes a good living from other people's mistakes, or desperation. I borrowed gold against imagined winnings like every gambler ever. You ask a lot of questions. Not to be rude, but I'd really rather find Quisley and get out of here. These cultists already tried to sacrifice me once, after all. I found notes left behind by some unfortunate scholar. He'd apparently come here to make a survey of the ruins. I hope he had the good sense to retreat when he found fresh evidence of a cult presence. More likely, he came to a bad end. I did. It's all the way down at the end of this maze, naturally. The scholar's notes hinted that it's an abandoned temple, once dedicated to Sithis. Well, probably not abandoned now. Good. I saw a rough map of this place before I got caught, so I think I know where to go. I'll keep out of your way if we run into more cultists. After that ritual, I'm a 
in no condition for a fight. The cultists definitely go on and on about Sithis. <laughs> Dead end and a vampire in a cage. This isn't terribly helpful. There's got to be a way through. I know what I saw on the map. Maybe the map... I would have sworn the map I saw showed a passage here. Unless... Could it be a hidden passage? I'll look around a bit. Why don't you see if the vampire knows anything? If he's been here long enough... He must have seen cultists coming or going through any hidden passages. But be careful with him. I don't trust vampires. Perhaps. But I'd rather not fight my way through half the cult to get to Quisley Silvel. If there's a passage here, it could save us quite a lot of trouble. Get in, get what you need, then get out. That's how I prefer to do things. Your comrade is correct. There's a hidden door. You're not part of this cult, are you? In fact, you appear to be... lost. Your dark elf friend watches me with no small amount of suspicion. Perfectly understandable, but I'm not a slave to my hunger. Why are you wandering around Deep Scorn Hollow anyway? The daughter of Sithis is fond of sacrificing strangers. I have heard the name. The daughter of Sithis herself has him. These miserable Sithis... pretenders. I can show you the passage you seek. I'll consider it payback for the way they locked me up. They hid the switch for a secret door under that crate over there by the wall. Clever, if one is a child. I cannot believe I thought these weak-minded fools might have a genuine insight into the dark mysteries of Sithis. Lalace is a noble from Leowen who made a game of dabbling in dark lore. As I understand it, she found this place and managed to wake a presence that had been sleeping here for ages. She surrendered to the darkness eagerly. I doubt that it cared. Fools and dilettantes bewitched by the daughter's powers. They believe she is the living embodiment of Sithis's dark will, servant of an ancient power. But the only power she serves is her own avarice and lust, like any greedy mortal. Huh. Surprisingly helpful. Would you do me a favor in return?
Perhaps before you rush off, you might unlock this cell? A favor in return for my showing you the switch? Let me again assure you, I am in control of my urges. I shall not harm you. I came here hoping the temple held answers about my condition. But the cultists discovered me as I fed upon an unwary noble from Gideon. The daughter of Sithis was intrigued, but when she realized I had not yet mastered my powers, she locked me away. Yes, that would be an elegant solution to my predicament. I'm afraid that I'm rather new to this uh, state of being. I haven't figured out that trick yet. I'm still capable of gratitude, stranger. I just want to be free of this place. I came here expecting something quite different. Thank you. Perhaps the friend you seek might still be alive. <laughs> I knew it. I never grow tired of being correct. This should take us right to the cult's hidden temple. Come on! Hold up a moment before we go on. I've been thinking. I stumbled headlong into a bad situation once already. I do try to learn from my mistakes. I've been thinking. There's a good chance we won't find Quisley Silvel alive. Nothing good. I wouldn't go so far as to say that it comes down to bringing Quisley in, or taking his place, but it's close. I really need to be free of Lars Tull. I barely persuaded him to give me this chance. I won't get another one. This may sound ghoulish, but if Quisley is dead, I'd like his signet ring. It's big, gold, and set with rubies. If I bring it back to Lars Tull, it will show that I held up my end of our bargain, and he would take it in payment of my debt. Someone's coming! Oh, there you are! I'm afraid I wasted my time on that cultist. He knew nothing. Glad I caught up to you. Oh, I... You put the fear of the gods into our captive cultist. He was sobbing on the floor when I gave up and left. I did meet a surprisingly talkative vampire, though. He told me which way you went. And seriously, do not turn your back on Tanare. Our weepy friend told me that Quisley's quite taken with this daughter of Sithis. Figures. My guess is he told her his family is wealthy, so she's keeping him alive for ransom. We'll probably find them in the shrine they call the Fane of Scorn. She seems like the sort who expects the worst. I remain optimistic. I don't always get along with Quisley, but I don't want him to end up sacrificed by the cult. Or turned into some crime boss's object lesson, for that matter. Not at the cost of his life. I'll figure out something. I always do. But, just in case, warn Tanari that she'd better not try anything foolish when we get Quisley. She caught me off guard once. It won't happen again. You're not even going to apologize, are you? I'm sorry? Just keep your distance from Quisley. He's my responsibility.
Seriously! I'm no use in a fight right now. I'll keep back. Go away. Arise, my brother. Kill these I'll trespassers. I'll get out of the way. before he runs off again, the little bastard. How dare you? Lelise would never have hurt me. She said so. Murders people, you... you... idiot! You were probably next! I'm not talking to you, Bastion. Nor to that rude, dark elf that just laughed at me. You spoiled everything! You and that lumbering oaf my father insists on sending to make my life miserable. And whoever that dark elf is, barging in and ruining my life. Who do you people think you are? Well, that's... that's just your opinion. Everybody here treated me as a guest of honor. And Lelace, the daughter of Sithis, chose me to be her consort. She told me that she'd give me the kiss of Sithis soon. Why would you ruin this for me? I can't believe they sent Bastion after me again. They treat me as if I were a wayward child. I am perfectly capable of managing my own affairs. I refuse to go. Claim me. I am not some sack of flour to be bargained over. Oh, very well. Bastion works for me. Indirectly. I'll go with him. I can write a promissory note for the Dark Elf to deliver to her thug of a boss. He's a terrible person. Bastion doesn't seem very fond of Quisley. I can't imagine why. We compared notes while you were talking with that simpering idiot. Bastion said he might have an idea that would solve things for both of us. Years ago, I lost everything trying to get my brother out of a fishy trading scheme. Lars Tull offered to help me. I'm still paying for it. It would be grand to be done with Lars Tull and to pull one over him at the same time. If Bastion's willing to work with me, and perhaps forget about the knocked out and tied up business, I think we might have room for a compromise. Once we get Quisley out of here, I'm done. I've paid my debt to his family three times over. All right, I think I know how to sort this out. If Tanare is prepared to listen, that is. I'm willing to overlook the knock on the head to settle this. First, we need to get Quisley out of Blackwood. Tanare doesn't have anything personal against him. Well, no more than anyone else who meets him. But the criminals she'd bring Quisley to might kill him. I'll threaten to tell his parents about this whole affair unless he cooperates and goes straight back to Daggerfall. Quisley knows that Lord Silvel can cut him off. It's the only threat that actually scares him. He would have to earn a living. I think we can all walk away from this. We ship Quisley home, secretly. Then we make sure that Tanare has something she can take back to Lars Tull. Thank you, friend. I think Lord Silvel would agree that you've earned your payment. What do you think, Tanare? Are you willing to give it a try? 
I'll need to bring last talk proof of Quisley's demise. What kind of proof would you need? I'm clearly not dead! If I bring Quisley's signet ring to last tool, he'll believe me. That's what I was thinking. I'll tell the Silvels that Quisley sold the ring to pay his debt. I'm right here! That ring should work. It might even cover most of Quisley's debt. What? My ring? I'm not giving you a damn thing! Bastion, keep that woman away from me! Here you go. I'll make sure Quisley understands to stay away from Blackwood. Thank you. This should clear my account with Lars Tull. And perhaps clear yours with this ingrate and his family too. We should leave this place. I'll see Quisley on his way when he comes around. I'm back. Where to now? 
How can I help? Is there something I can do? There you are. Captain Rian sent me to find you. Counselor Jirik was assassinated right under Here the nose ye, of the Here ye, card and collectors. Oh, Test your oh, wits and courage in a brand new card game. Spin. Tales Even of Tribute. Mercenaries. So much for the Ivory Brigade. What about the other former counselors? Do you think they're all in danger? Who can say? But if the Dark Brotherhood is involved, You're what could our brigadines inside. or mercenaries? Got any silver in that lot yet? The safe.
If you're looking for arms and armor, you'll have to go topside. The rabbit... Uh, <laughs> the rabbit won't let me sell those anymore. There's something wonderful about wandering a city's streets with no destination.
Counselor Jirik was assassinated right under the nose of the brigadines. I heard Captain Brienne is at his wit's end. Even hired mercenaries. So much for the Ivory Brigade. What about the other former counselors? Do you think they're all in Hear ye, card sharps and collectors! You Test your but wits and courage in a brand new card game! Tales of Tribute! There you are. Captain Rian sent me to find you. Captain Rian sent me to find you. Your presence is urgently required in Leowin Castle. The counselors have taken refuge in the castle, and have been discussing options with the Chamber of Legates. They decided to send you and the Wood Elf to investigate the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary you learned about in Gideon. I think they want you to investigate, ascertain the situation. But the Wood Elf would know more. I'm just an overqualified messenger. Will you heed the captain and go to Leowen Castle? Everly Sharp Arrow is anxiously awaiting your arrival. There you are. Ready to investigate the sanctuary? All right, you heard Leviticus. Time to get back to work. While the counselors stay safe in Leowen Castle and wait for the scribe to arrive, we need to find out what the Dark Brotherhood is actually up to. Show me that letter you found in Gideon. Yeah, these are definitely orders. It mentions Bloodrun Cave. 
that's northeast of Leowin toward the edge of Blackwood territory. Well, as the spinners always say, the best way to find out what's happening in the clearing is to step into it. Of course it does. Nothing has been easy since I found that strange book and started chasing down Leovic's secret. Well, are you still interested in solving the mystery of the ambitions? Will you come with me to Bloodrun Cave? The counselor should be safe, so meet me at Bloodrun Cave. We need to determine if the Dark Brotherhood is behind the murders or not. Either way, that sanctuary is a threat to Blackwood. I just hope I don't have another one of those waking visions. Remember back at Fort Blueblood when we found the murdered servant? I had a vision of a shadowy figure. It was a robed and hooded cultist. Order of the Waking Flame, I think. It was brief and powerful, over in a moment, but the figure felt... evil. What else could it be? The book seems very old, and it's written in a language we can't read. Just carrying it around, it feels heavy, oppressive, like a burden I didn't know I had. But Lupus sent me to find it. It must be important. I don't know. I'm an archer, not a Daedric scholar or anything. I don't think I should let the Order of the Waking Flame get their hands on it, though. And maybe one of these visions, if I have any more, will actually help us figure this all out. No, but that last vision I had was clearly a warning about the cult leader, whoever they are. They're powerful and evil. So, bad dreams or no bad dreams, I think I'll hang on to the book, just in case.
uncertainty, fear, death. The will of Sithis cannot be ignored. You made it. I wasn't looking forward to going much deeper without you. So this is Bloodrun Cave, huh? Creepy. You go on ahead. I'll follow behind you. Make sure nothing tries to ambush us. I'll catch up farther in. Check the letter you found. It said something about a door located deeper inside the cave. And there was a strange line about death being the key, whatever that means. Go on. I'll follow along shortly. Day will be ours.
This looks promising. Let's top. That creepy black door. That's gotta be the entrance to the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary. I doubt it's as simple as turning a knob, because that door doesn't have one. Let me see that letter you found again. Wasn't there something about a key? Hmm, gutted, untold danger, long trek, clear out. Ah! Here it is! And remember, death, my brother, that's the key. I don't know. Maybe it's a passphrase? I've read about things like that in some of my mystery novels. Go knock on the door or something and see what happens. Go ahead. See if that passphrase opens the creepy black door. Still looking for your murderer? Well, you've come to the wrong place, my friends. We found the Black Hands beside every body! Must I say it again? You've been duped. And the Dark Brotherhood has been set up to take the blame. Haven't we had this conversation already? The Dark Brotherhood didn't murder those counselors. I have no quarrel with you, and you none with me. Now turn around and leave before you force me to do something you will definitely regret. Leowin demands, does it? Very well. This sanctuary belongs to the Dark Brotherhood. It has for a very long time. I have been given the joyous task of reopening it. I assure you, we're a business. We have no designs on Leowin or the Counselors. Obviously some enemy of the Counselors who wants to confuse you, throw suspicion on the Dark Brotherhood, keep you chasing after shadows while they accomplish whatever it is they hope to do. Perhaps we can work together to... What? Now what? Cultists, portaling in. Quickly, secure the sanctuary. That's the order of the waking flame. What are they doing here? Come on, we need to figure out what's going on. This can't be a coincidence. Did the waking flame cultists follow us here? Tend to ever stop learning. That's over with, I suppose.
made their Fall choices. Back. Close the portals. So be it. Warn the high priest. Oh, I think not. <sighs> All right. What were we discussing before they so rudely interrupted us? I assume this will satisfy your masters in Leowin. The Dark Brotherhood is not your enemy. The Order of the Waking Flame invaded our sanctuary and killed my brothers and sisters. I can't let them get away with that. Seems to me the cultists didn't want you talking to me. Didn't want you hearing me tell you for the hundredth time that the Dark Brotherhood didn't kill those counselors. If you ask me, those are your murderers. The Order of the Waking Flame. Opportunity and motive. Look, I, I don't know what that may be, and I don't want to know. But I do want to step through this portal and stick my dagger in their high priest's throat. Care to come along? Good. Now you'll see how a Dark Brotherhood assassin deals with unsanctioned targets. And please notice that I won't be dropping any notes or leaflets along the way. Come on. Let's go before the portal closes. Stay with the assassin. I'll inform Captain Rianne and Counselor Leviticus about the cultists. Like I'm not the only one who leaves important papers lying about. Give that a read, why don't you? The Lord of Bloodshed will rule over all existence. Their high priest actually ordered them to kill us. brings victory. approximation of our calling card, but that entire pile is obviously a forgery. So the Order of the Waking Flame killed your counselors and placed the blame on the Dark Brotherhood. Then their high priest sent his followers to kill us. Care to enlighten me as to what this is actually all about now? All this fuss and bother over an old Imperial secret? Let's review what we learned. 
The High Priest of the Order of the Waking Flame sent cultists to the Sanctuary to eliminate both my Dark Brotherhood assassins and you and the Wood Elf. Obviously the cult has someone watching you. They knew exactly when to attack, certain we'd all be in the Sanctuary. Plus, they were after some cash hidden there. So who are these cultists? And how well do you trust your masters in Leowin? I'm not suggesting anything. Just following the clues. If the cultists are Dagonists, then their high priest is probably a true fanatic. This secret must be pretty important, and most likely pertains to death and destruction. Let's keep searching. Let's see if something deeper inside this ruin points us to the identity of the cult's high priest. Figure out who they are, and you may learn more about this secret than you ever imagined. Oh, and you still have that amulet. It might come in handy. Because I owe them for besmirching the good reputation of the Dark Brotherhood and for ordering the deaths of my brothers and sisters. And because now... I'm curious. It's like an itch that needs to be scratched. No. The order suggested it was placed in the sanctuary after we abandoned it the first time. We hadn't finished reopening the place and I hadn't run across any hidden caches. Another mystery, I suppose. Let's keep looking. Always ready to help. I'm listening. What's on your mind? You're affable enough. Just be honest with me and we'll get along fine. How can I help? Door looks impressive. Let's see what's on the other side.
We failed to kill all the assassins, and the Wood Elf and the Mercenary are still alive. Yes. The High Priest isn't going to be happy about that, but we retrieved the cache hidden in the old sanctuary. With the contents of the cache, the High Priest should be able to determine where to find the first edition. Agreed. And we will soon have the location of another one of the ambitions. As just another Imperial Counselor, the High Priest has them all fooled. That's something new. What do you think? Sometimes listening provides the answers we seek. It seems their high priest is actually one of your counselors. That explains how they knew your movements. And they found whatever they were looking for in the sanctuary. I'd rather not know any more about this damn secret. It's cursed. But did you see how they opened that portal? They used their amulet on the pedestal. You still have the one we found? Let's find another pedestal and see if we can follow them. That pedestal looks promising. Let's talk before you try to open a portal. This may work. It may not. We may open a portal that takes us to the cultists, or we may open one to some dark and deadly corner of oblivion. Still, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So, ready to try something daring? It looked to me like the cultists used their amulet on the pedestal and opened a portal. Examine the pedestal and see if there's a place to fit the amulet. These Dagonist fools think they've gotten the better of us. Let's prove them wrong. Well, we have a portal. Let's find out if leaping into it turns out to be a good or bad idea. This is interesting. Let's look around.
Vardasia is the Order's High Priest. I knew I disliked the man the moment he had me beaten. We're too late. The location of the Ambition was sent to the High Priest. What was that about an attack on Leowin Castle? So, now I know who needs to die for this grave insult to the Dark Brotherhood. Councillor Von Dacia, the High Priest of the Waking Flame. But what do you make of that journal entry about the first ambition and an attack on Leowin Castle? They got what they were after, and now they're sending their forces to kill the rest of the Councillors. With the other Councillors dead, Van Dacia will be the only person who knows the secret of the Longhouse Emperors. And Van Dacia will do everything in his power to get his hands on those documents. I suppose your course is clear. You need to return to Leowin Castle as quick as you can. I'm going to stick around and deal with a few more of these Waking Flame cultists. I still have a little anger to work off after that attack on my sanctuary. I suggest you return to Leowin Castle with all due haste. I'm an assassin, not a soldier. I've done my part, now go do yours. When I'm finished here, if Vandesia is still alive, well, then we'll see what we shall see. That portal should take you back toward the exit, or to some terrible plane of oblivion. One or the other. Doesn't seem like I'm getting much done here. Get those doors open. We need to get to the counselors. They're barred from the other side. Mercenary, you've returned. Everly's attempting to breach the barracks. Go! The Waking Flame cultists created a distraction. And like raw recruits, both Everly and I fell for it. As soon as we left the castle, they swarmed the place and barricaded themselves inside. I'm not sure. 
By the time we realized the distraction was nothing more than a ruse, the cultists had locked us out. If the cultists harm Leviticus, Vandacia, and the others, I won't rest until they pay. What? Are you certain? Vandacia has served Blackwood in the Empire before that for more than 50 years! Enough! We need to get inside. Then we can determine the truth of all this. Find Everly by the barracks and assist her. Steady. Wait for it. Now we can go in. Let's... Oh, you're here. Oh, thank Ifra you're back. Captain Rian and I, they tricked us, lured us out of the castle. Now the place is locked down and I don't know if any of the counselors are still alive. I've mucked this up real good. Vandacia, that traitor, he tricked us, lied to us, had his own colleagues murdered, and all to get his hands on a few Daedric weapons? But Lyrinth, the Dramora, she told me that the fate of the world was at stake. We need to reach the counselors. Yes, the barracks connect to the rest of the castle. Since I dispatched the cultist guards, we can get to the counselors and the legates this way. Let's go, but stay alert. We're not sure how many of those cracked acorns are waiting for us in there. the counselors Vandacia, how could you? Valeria, with everything at stake, how could I not? Counselor Valeria, no! I came as soon as word arrived from Councillor Leviticus. I was with him when the cultist attacked, but we got separated. We have to find Leviticus. Come with us, brother. We need to stick together.
Chancellor Falaria. She's dead. We have to keep looking for Leviticus. Fantasia, you traitor. I will finish what the Longhouse Emperors started, Leviticus. I will set loose the power of the Four Ambitions. Lord Dagon, hear your High Priest. Send for the champion to destroy these men. Kill it! Kill it! Death to the mortals! Don't worry about me. Deal with the creature. Councilor Leviticus, you're alive. Let me get you out of here and somewhere safe. Fantasia. The bastard fooled us all. Friend of my sister. Come, speak with me. Despite the gravity of the situation, you should know that I was able to decipher a portion of the encoded documents before Vandacia whisked them away. I'm not sure. I only translated a small bit of the code before the assault began. It mentioned a vault to protect them, which I assume to mean the ambitions. It's hidden in the Ogel Bok, but I'm not familiar with the term. Argonian, perhaps? It sounds like it, but I'm not sure. I haven't reported to Councillor Lovidicus yet. Since it looks like he wants to talk to you now, please inform him of my findings, and tell him I apologize I wasn't able to decipher her anymore. Let Councillor Lovidicus know what I deciphered from the coded document. That the vault that protects them is hidden in the Ogel Bok. I wish I had been able to finish translating all the documents before Vandacia stole them. Isn't the family resemblance obvious? I was an adventurer myself back in the day, before I became an Imperial scribe. I think that's where Everly gets it. That and from all the books I've given her over the years. I imagine he didn't think I had time to decipher any of the coded passages. I barely had a moment to look at the documents when the portals opened and his cultists burst in. Luckily, I'm very familiar with that particular code. It was my specialty. Vandacia will pay. Vandacia. A high priest of Merun's Dagon. Has he been a Daedric cultist all these years? I failed to see the signs and now the counselors. They're all dead. Valeria, Sophus, Abor, and Chirik. Yes, of course. The Sanctuary. I suppose this proves the Dark Brotherhood wasn't involved in the plot to murder us. 
What else did you uncover while you were away? It's worse than that. Vandasia wrestled the documents you acquired from the other counselors away from the scribe. Once he translates them, he may know the location of all four of the ambitions. Ojel Bak. I've heard that term. It's Argonian. I believe it refers to a natural formation deep in the Blackwood Marsh. But Vandasia was more familiar with that region than I. I. I know someone who can help us, though. I believe you already met her. If the term leads us to the vault, so be it. All we can do is follow the clues we've been given. Talk to Keshu the Blackfin. If anyone can help us navigate the wilds of Blackwood, it's Governor Keshu. Damn! I can't believe Vandacia is a traitor and a cult leader. And he killed Valeria. Almost killed Leviticus. He's been ahead of us the entire time. We can't let him get to the ambitions. We just can't. All right, we have a plan. In the meantime, we saved Councillor Leviticus, cleared the Dark Brotherhood of the murders, and determined Vandacia is the traitor and leader of the cult. You did good, my friend. Here, your share of our compensation. So, the information from the former counselors points to an Argonian location. Some place called the Ojel Bok. Vandacia ran off with the documents before we could learn more. Now we need to figure out what it means before his cultists beat us to it. No, but Counselor Leviticus has heard the term. Says it's a landmark in the Solzan territory. The document suggested it's a site connected to the Four Ambitions. Maybe where the weapons are stored? We need to consult with an expert on that region. Governor Keshu of Gideon. Councillor Leviticus says she knows the swamps and bogs of Black Marsh like the back of her hand. So, can I count on you? Will you come with me to Gideon to talk to Keshu the Black Finn? We'll meet up in Gideon. We can talk to Governor Keshu there. She has to know about this Ojel Bok thing. She has to. Just what I've heard. She emerged from the Black Marsh swamps and made a name for herself as a freedom fighter. Battled Dark Elf slavers along the Morrowind border. When the Okaviri invaders arrived, she took her soldiers and helped save Windhelm. About ten years ago now. Defeated the invasion and helped form the Ebonheart Pact. Even commanded the Pact Army during the start of the Three Banners War. Then one day she turned in her commission. Came back to serve as Governor of Gideon. Keshu's progressive as far as Argonians go. I hear she has an interest in the history of the Argonians, but she genuinely seems committed to creating an open and enlightened community for all people in Gideon. Actually, I can't wait to talk to her. Hmm, what did the spinner say? Oh yes, it's one of the eight major cities of Black Marsh, but its proximity to Cyrodiil makes it more imperial than Argonian. In fact, Vandacia represented the Empire in Gideon for decades. Until, well, you know. No, more of an advisor of sorts. Like the counselors here in Leowin. Governor Keshu is the leader of the city. When Vandacia revealed himself to be the head of a Daedric cult, well, that pretty much put an end to his government service. Now that you mention it, very much so. He was a member of the Elder Council. His name was on the list of people that knew Leovic's secret. I thought I was supposed to protect him, 
Keep him safe from the murderer. But he was the murderer! After he killed Falaria and grabbed the coded documents, he ran. He could be anywhere. He's had decades to establish the Waking Flame and set up hiding holes. But he's after the ambition, same as us. We need to find the hidden vault before he does. What can I do for you?
Look at what the bog dog. Tragic with the three ba- Is there something I can do? See more than horse.
Cities are as alive, fickle, and uncertain as people. Some are good, some are bad. Some give you gifts, others rob you blind. Can I help you with something? I'm listening. I trust you. Did you need some? Vondacia, a cultist. Gideon will help in any way we can. Thank you, Governor. Oh, here's my partner now. Counselor Vondacia, a traitor and a Daedric cultist. I can't believe he had us all fooled for so many years. But that's a matter for another time. Evely tells me you have a lead for finding these so-called ambitions. Counselor Leviticus was right to send you to me. In Argonian, Ogel Bach roughly translates as Pit of the Outsider. There is a natural formation to the south that bears the name. Unfortunately, it lies in territory claimed by the Sulzan tribe. The Sulzan are a savage people, Nagas, who revere the forces of death and chaos. You must traverse their land to reach the pit of the outsider. The Nagas recognize no authority other than themselves and their leaders. They do not welcome visitors. South of Stone Wastes, in the heart of Sulzan territory. I suggest caution and stealth. Try to avoid starting a war with the tribe if you can at all help it. Bring whatever you find back here. Gideon will keep it safe, I assure you. Ojel Bak, the Pit of the Outsider. It's a natural formation located south of Stone Wastes. Just proceed carefully, as it lies in the heart of Sulzan territory. I suggest you meet Evely on the outskirts of their territory and go from there. After many years of fighting, including my time as the commander of the Pact Forces in the Three Banners War, I decided I had enough. Shortly after I arrived in Gideon, the governorship became available. It is my honor to serve this city. No, Blackwood and the Topol Bay region remain independent entities. We have a trade agreement with Leowin, but otherwise we're on our own. We hope the war stays to the north and west. Moreover, we hope it ends quickly. No. He served the Longhouse Emperors from the day they seized the Ruby Throne, eventually becoming a member of the Elder Council. Since the collapse of the Empire, he has been a trusted advisor. 
both here and in Leowen. This news is a shock. Only what young Evely was telling me before you arrived. I never heard of them before today. I will, however, get my best Blackfin legionnaires to investigate them. Vondacia has lived in Gideon a long time. Someone here must know something. The Sulzan are brutal. They sacrifice their enemies to the dark forces they serve, and their thirst for blood knows no bounds. That is why I urge caution. As you make your way through their territory, they will show you neither kindness nor mercy. Forgive me if this sounds like bragging. I was raised in a tiny village far to the south, but I was never satisfied with provincial life. I longed to learn about the ancient Argonians, to bring some of that civilization back to my people. You must have seen the stone structures in the swamp, the Zanmirs. In the ancient past, my people created great wonders. A great civilization. Then, for some reason, they abandoned it for a simpler, less complicated life. My explorations showed me the plight of my people. I fought Dark Elf slavers, raised the Blackfin Legion, battled Akaviri invaders. I helped form the Ebonheart Pact, and fought in the Alliance War. Now I only seek to govern Gideon in peace. After many years of fighting, including my time as the commander of the Pact Forces in the Three Banners War, I decided I had enough. Shortly after I arrived in Gideon, the governorship became available. It is my honor to serve this city.
should come in handy. Oblivion, take you! I knew if I waited here long enough, I'd find you. No remorse! Never thought I'd still be alive to see the end. Yet here we are.
Ready to make our way into hostile territory? We need to find this pit of the outsider, see if the vault is there, and reach the ambitions before the Order of the Waking Flame beats us to them. Hmm. Well, you heard Governor Keshu. This is Sulzon territory. We want to avoid contact with this hostile tribe of Argonians if at all possible, but we need to reach the pit of the outsider. Also, I had another one. Another waking vision. Happened when I got here. I think that strange book is trying to tell me something. I saw these weird cubes with symbols on them. Symbols like the ones in the book I'm carrying. I'm not sure what it all means. I want to find the vault. With any luck, we're way ahead of Vandasi and his cultists. Maybe we can get in, grab the weapons, and get back to Gideon before anyone even notices that we're around. Are you ready? Remember to avoid the Sulzan, but keep an eye out for the Waking Flame cultists. I wouldn't be surprised if we run into them before too long. Now, let's go find the Pit of the Outsider. They've got to be somewhere. Besides, we don't know exactly what Vandasia learned when he killed the counselors, or what he got out of the documents he stole from Leowin. We have to assume he's on the same trail as we are. Just what you'd expect, I imagine. They are bloodthirsty savages who revere death and chaos, after all. Be ready to fight. That's all I'm saying. It's possible, I guess, but we haven't seen any evidence of that up to this point. Look, we won't find out any more if we just stand here and talk about it. Let's get going, all right? Come and take us! Speak to me. Little mortals have no fear. I have no particular desire to inflict harm upon you. Quite the contrary. I suspect we may be able to aid one another in the events that are about to unfold. Since my last encounter with the cute wood elf, 
I have been watching the activities of the Order of the Waking Flame. I followed a couple of their scouts and discovered this charming Daedric Vault. I believe the ambitions are locked inside. The Vault is warded, little mortal. Wards that repel Daedra, including me. You and the Elf, however, should have no trouble. Just remove the wards and we can both satisfy our curiosity. Oh, and tell the elf I think I know what tome she carries. Didn't she tell you? We met before, after she first became aware of Leovic's secret. I believe the book she found is the Mysterium Zarxus, penned by Mehrunes Dagon himself. Or so they say. She must place it on the lectern to disable the wards. Ah, yes, the scouts. One has been dealt with. The other may have slipped away while I was admiring the vault's construction. So I suggest you pick up the pace. The scout could return with reinforcements at any moment. Remember, while the wards are in place, none of us can enter the vault. Use the book the wood elf carries to disable them and open the way. Once the wards are down, I shall meet you inside. Now hurry! The waking flame could arrive at any moment. You cannot see it. The exquisite workmanship. The otherworldly crafting. This vault was not forged by mortal hands. In fact, I believe it was constructed in the lava crucibles of the Deadlands. It was definitely built to contain something powerful. Curiosity, little mortal. How else am I to fill the endless days of immortality? I collect secrets, and I long to learn the truth of the Longhouse Emperors and their mysterious bargain with the Prince of Destruction. Now, go deal with those wards. Need is such a specific word. I do not need anything, little mortal. I am quite content to find a new distraction and leave your pitiful world to the Prince of Destruction. However, if you do decide to open the vault, I shall aid you as I can. Wards not only serve as powerful locks, they are designed to specifically keep daedric entities such as myself from passing through them. While merely an annoyance for a mortal, to me, the wards are deadly. Enough. The daedric vault awaits. Dagonists and Dramora familiar with such things say it was scribed in the deserts of the Deadlands. I did some research after I sensed the Wood Elf had it. An artifact of great and evil power, it is said that merely handling it could be dangerous. That I do not know. Artifacts related to Daedric Princes often possess a corrupting influence. At the least, she will probably feel a sense of discomfort if she hasn't experienced it already. She should guard it well, but tread carefully. All right, I'm placing the book as Lyranth suggested. You check out those cubes.
what did I tell you? Isn't she a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day? I placed the book like she said. And those cubes, they're just like the ones in my vision. Let's see if we can figure out how to remove the ward on that door. Well done, little mortal. Now I must explore. We open the door and Lyrinth just rushes ahead without us? Figures. Well, I guess we should start looking around too. Everything we learned so far indicates that the Daedric weapon should be in here somewhere. It all comes back to Emperor Leovic's secret. How he hid the four ambitions before Varen reached Imperial City and killed him. We don't know exactly what these four ambitions are, but the documents indicated they're Daedric weapons of some sort. Yup, and Lyrin thinks they could arrive here at any moment. Let's look around. Oh, hey, one more thing. The book sort of started to tingle the moment we entered the vault. Just thought you should know. The Mysterium what now? Never mind, I can worry about that later. Right now we have a job to do. I want to find out what's so important that Leovic had to stick it in a warded and sealed Daedric vault. I suppose the book started this whole quest. I found it in the Longhouse Emperor's old retreat. It's full of Daedric symbols and strange markings. Carrying it around, it feels like a burden. Heavy, oppressive. And now it's tingling. 
It feels like... anticipation. Like the book wants to be here or something. Look, I've had some dark dreams since I found the book and those waking visions. But this is the first time... I don't know, like it wants something? Like I didn't have nightmares before I knew that. It's not talking to me, not with words. But I can feel it, like it's waking up. And while I've had similar sensations since I found it, the tingling really became intense when we entered this place. Another warded door ahead of us. There's another ward on the door ahead. Ready to see if we can open it? 
Only one way to find out. I'll place the book on the lectern. Then we'll see what happens. Then here we go. The book is really tingling. Get ready to turn the cubes after I place it on the lectern. Almost as though it wants to help us open the door. Are we? Never mind. We need to lower that drawbridge. Glory!
was easy. There must be a lever or a switch around here somewhere. Cruel. Defeat is worse. wondering where you had gotten to. I need you once again. Little mortal, I can proceed no farther. 
Another ward bars my way. Deal with it, will you? Yes, this interior is littered with the damn nuisances. Disrupt it so that we can continue our search. I do not believe we have much time before the Dagonists arrive. Very perceptive. The construction is imbued with a magic that allows the vault to behave as if it were a small pocket of oblivion. In a way, I suppose it is. Those exterior portions you pass through, that's where the Deadlands and Nurn coexist. It's all part of Mehrun's Dagon's master plan. He believes Nurn belongs to him. And he has long sought a way to combine his Oblivion Realm with the mortal world. Hmm... Perhaps the ambitions are another step in that direction. Now, open the door. Another ward! I'll place the book. You turn the cubes. Dramatic Destron. More panache. Kalia, just make sure it actually looks like me this time. Oh, brother. I always capture the real you. People? Where are the Daedric weapons? Who are these intruders? I sense the cultists. They're close. Wood Elf, check the other side of those doors. Careful, brother. They look dangerous. Dangerous? We're heroes! All right, Lyrinth. I'll scout ahead. You talk to them, partner. I knew I felt something strange. Like glass shattering in the distance. Who are you? And why have you disrupted the wards? The Four Ambitions? A curious phrase. Pray tell, what are these four ambitions you seek? Weapons? We have no weapons here, at least none that I'm aware of. Feel free to look around if you like. Perhaps you'll find what you're looking for. Perhaps not. Explain yourself. Who are you, and why have you invaded our sanctum? Four ambitions? As in an earnest desire or something to aspire to? How can an idea such as that also be a thing? Weapons? There are no weapons here. Just my sister, Kalia, myself, and our caretakers. Teachers used to visit in the past, and the Emperor, but we haven't seen another living soul in many years. Look around if you must, but then leave us in peace.
you mind? Those are my personal thoughts. Interesting. A totem revering Mayroon's Dagon, I believe. Destron says my talent has improved. Hey! We've got trouble! I need you! See to Avalon. I shall get Kalia and Destron to safety. Vandacia's cultists have arrived. We need a plan. Portals opened all around me, and suddenly there were cultists everywhere. Well, we did take down all the wards that protected this place. I put arrows in as many of Vandasia's crazies as I could, but the rest of them scattered. Deeper into the vault. Damn, this place is enormous. I assume you didn't happen to find the Daedric weapons back in that other room? What's going on? Where are we going? Whatever happens, stay close to me. For May Rune's take on. Hard work pays off. Nobody ever drowned in sweat. to take us away yes but I never saw him unleash that much raw power in a single burst or against living targets obviously our training has served us well Destron has always been more powerful but if you're asking if I can defend myself I won't let anyone take us from here without our permission They wanted to take us away. Me and my sister, I, I... I couldn't let them do that. You think so? When they charged in here and demanded we go with them... I just had a bad feeling. I... I really didn't mean to obliterate them like that. I'll have to take your word for it. With our sanctum breached and our caretakers dead, we can't stay here. We'll go with you, if that's all right. And so the secret finally becomes clear. The ambitions aren't just weapons. They are mortals of a sort. Obviously, these two have been imbued with immense power. 
power that has a distinct Daedric tinge to it. I have learned enough, for now. The mystery intrigued me. I wanted to know what the ambitions were and why the Daenist wanted them. Now I know. Or at least, now I have some idea. Vandacia is a mortal problem, best dealt with by mortals. In the meantime, I wish to look into how these ambitions gain their power. I have my own avenues to explore. But do not fear. I am sure we shall meet again. In fact, I guarantee it. Destron and Kalia, the twins. They're the ambitions. Well, at least there are two of them. I have to say, I did not expect the weapons to be people. Whatever. Vandacia and his cult still want to get their hands on them. Obviously, we have to protect them. Get them somewhere safe. Especially since we're the ones who unlocked their vault and gave the cultists a way to get inside. Hmm. Good question. Leowen is still reeling from the cult's last assault. But Governor Keshu offered to help. I say we take the twins to Gideon. After that, we can figure out how to locate and secure the other two ambitions, whoever they are. Come with me, you two. It's not safe here anymore. You want us to go... outside? Time to say goodbye to this place, Kalia. It will be a new adventure. Are you talking to me without a proper introduction? These two will be safe here in Gideon, Everly. You have my word. Thank you, Governor. You did well to bring these twins to Gideon. I will make sure that they are well protected. Is it true, though, what Everly told me? These are the ambitions you sought? Yes, Everly was telling me about that. Daedric weapons in the guise of Imperial hatchlings. Interesting. Feed them, provide them with the place to rest. We'll keep them safe. But what about you? Do you have any ideas on how to find the remaining ambitions? Or what to do about Vondacia and his cult? I suggest you discuss your options with Evely. For someone so recently out of her egg, she has remarkable instincts and a good heart. Anything I can offer would be a guess. 
You and Evely are much more familiar with the situation than I am. For my part, I will gather the Blackfin Legion and make sure the twins are comfortable and safe. On that, you have my word. As I told Evely, a courier arrived shortly ahead of you. After you and your partner finalize your plans, make sure to talk to them. They were quite insistent that they be allowed to deliver their message directly to you. Well, we found two of the ambitions and kept them out of the cult's hands. Now we just have to find the other two and deal with Vandasia. Not yet, but I'm sure something will occur to us. It usually always does. In the meantime, take this. Your share of our compensation from Leowin. I couldn't have found the twins and saved them without your help. Thanks. While Governor Keshu takes care of Destron and Kalia, we need to determine our next move. I wonder if Captain Rian has any news about Vandasia. Oh! I almost forgot. Keshu mentioned that a courier arrived for us. They're waiting to deliver a message. Maybe Captain Rian or Counselor Leviticus? Maybe they sent news about Vandasia. I'm sure that stinkweed is still out there, searching for the other ambitions. And the twins too, I suppose. Vandasia won't stop until we stop him. Talk to the courier. Find out who sent them and what news they've brought us. I mean, provided you're still willing to stick around and help. Technically, I suppose, you've already finished the job Captain Rian hired you to do. So, what do you say? The courier's waiting right over there. Talk to them and find out what they've brought us. No, I was waiting for you. Besides, they said they were supposed to deliver it to you specifically. Their instructions were very clear about that. Are you following me? Do I need to scream? If you mind yours. Aster name had to set chrysanthemum to music. Never again. One taste and you'll never want to eat anything else.
not boasting if you're right. <laughs> oh, I forgot to the city bar, the man has... Oof, no, that's terrible. only the finest ingredients in my dishes. Finest ingredients in my dishes. I don't have to explain myself to you. Are you talking to me without a proper introduction? I haven't warmed up yet. if you're right. Set chrysanthemum to music. <laughs> never again. One taste, and you'll never want to eat anything else. Are you following me? I don't have to. Do I need to scream? To you?
business, if you mind I yours. I use only the finest ingredients in my dishes. business, if you mind yours. Looking to trade? So if that's north, that means... Wait, that's not right! Oh, more was mercy! A little help, anyone! There's no better place than Gideon. We have the best potions, too. Try some of mine. Uh, the ones I'm selling, that is.
Azura by Azura by Azura! I can't believe this! Is it really you? Let's ride. Pico, over here. Rock Grove begs for your aid.
the safest. Didn't bring any heat. only the finest ingredients in my dishes. Bastard Aiden had to set chrysanthemum to music. These two will be safe here for you, in Gimli, Everly. You have my word. Thank you, Governor. Well? What does the letter say? Well? Did the letter say anything important? An anonymous letter asking us to come by ourselves to a creepy old manor? Nothing suspicious about that. Well, I don't suppose we have any better leads. I'll meet you there. About time. I was beginning to think I'd hired the wrong courier. So, did you get my message? I was worried I'd hired one of those incompetent couriers. You know, the ones who take your gold and then toss your letter into the dung heap. I had to eliminate more than a few of those in my time. Right to business. I wanted to ask you if you tried the swamp eel in a blackberry wine sauce at the Egg and Hammer. I hear it's the specialty of the house. 
Anyway, Fondacia. I did some digging and I came up with this place. Amnis Manor. Well, I got to thinking. A cult like the Waking Flame doesn't pay for itself. It needs wealthy donors, am I right? <laughs> of course I am. Anyway, Mattis Amnis. He's a known supporter of Vandacia. And a closet Dagonist. Generous, too, I hear. Hey! I can't do everything. Search the manor. Rumblings in the back alley say that something big is about to happen. An event of some sort. And Vandacia's stink is all over it. Maybe something here will point you to it. So long to get here. Let's look around. Dacia might be at the Salvito estate near Blackwood Lake, but what sort of event are they talking about? The wardrobe's empty. Looks like Amnes has already left for the event, whatever it is. Ugh. A letter. The detailed invitation is missing, and so is the coin. I think that's everything we're going to find. Let's take another look at the evidence and see if we can figure out what's going on here. Right. Says that's located near Blackwood Lake. It also mentions some sort of event, and I think both Amnes and whoever sent this letter are part of the Order of the Waking Flame. Actual Dagonists right here in Gideon. Can you imagine? I was thinking the same thing. Could he have found the other two ambitions? And are they people too? Cracked acorns. Mysteries make my head hurt. I'd much rather have a clear target so I can fill it full of arrows. Sounds like getting to the event requires a voyage and a special coin of some sort. Since we don't have a coin or an invitation, we should go to the Salvito estate next. I think it's to the north of Gideon, near Blackwood Lake. I'll meet you there.
day will be ours! This place is crawling with Waking Flame cultists. We'll need to be careful. Victory is cruel. Defeat is worse. Get my luggage to the docks. Hurry! I want to set sail with the tide. Huh? 
Intruders! Stop them, my brethren! That's got it! Go and I'll give you whatever you want. There he is. Gracian Salvito. Get him to tell you everything he knows. What do you want? Uh, uh, gems, gold, jewels? Whatever you want, it's yours. Just, just don't harm me. All right. All right, yes. Vandacia was here. Uh, stopped by for a visit with his new charge, but, but he's long gone. Perhaps if you hurry, you can still catch him. Well, prisoner, actually. He stopped by to show him off. Gave me a preview of his big event. Oh, please, I, I shouldn't be telling you any of this. It goes against our code. No one outside the Order is allowed... Oh, all right. I can see there's no reasoning with you. Take my invitation and my coin. You'll need both to get on the ship. The Calamity. It's leaving from Leowin Docks shortly. Look here. A stranger's loss might be our gain. Anything useful? A ship at the Leowin docks? Where's Vandacia holding this event of his? And he's got a prisoner? It sounds like he found one of the ambitions. Let me see that. What a strange coin. The symbol on it. It looks like the symbols in the book I'm carrying. Here, you better hang on to the coin. At least we know how to get to Vandacia's event, wherever it is. Absolutely. Let's meet in Leowin. According to the invitation, the event requires formal attire, so we'll need to visit a tailor before we head to the docks. I'll meet you by the big tree just inside the city gates after I deal with Salvito.
over here, my friend. Oh, good. I didn't miss you. We don't have much time before that ship departs, so let's get moving. Nope. The invitation says we need formal attire to attend Vandacia's event. When I dropped Salvito off with Governor Keshu, she suggested we'd be able to get what we need at the tailor shop here in the city. It's not far. Pretty much dead center of the city. The place is called Armor and Fine Garments. Keshu suggested we should ask for a tailor by the name of Perseus Loke. He's supposed to know his stuff. I'll meet you there. Armor and Fine Garments is right in the city center. I'll meet you there. Quite busy, can't you see? Hmm. Welcome, welcome to our humble shop on the boulevard. Are you with the young wood elf? She said her friend was coming by. How may I help you? A formal event? I say, we don't usually get clientele of your caliber seeking outfits from our formal line. Adventurers, am I right? Perhaps I can direct you to my colleagues. They handle our extensive collection of protective armor. Of course, of course. We have a small selection of formal wear, and alterations are part of our service. Unfortunately, such attire usually requires a noble's purse, if you catch my meaning. If funds are short, perhaps we can come to an arrangement. The trade is simple. I need silk from the Blue Whisper Moths for next season's line. Bring me a few bundles and I'll trade them for the attire you seek. They nest to the north, along the riverbank. Or you can pay the gold, if you can afford it. A pleasure doing business with you. Now, please, take your time and select the outfit that most suits you. You want to look your best and also make a good impression when attending a formal event. That looks good on you. Hang on while I try this one on. Where does this piece go? What am I supposed to do with this thing? This is itchy, and I can't breathe. Hmm. All right, there. So, how do I look? So, be honest. I look ridiculous in this outfit, don't I? You really think so? Thanks. You look good too. So, you be the noble and I'll be your escort. With these outfits, the invitation and the coin, we should be able to walk right up and board the Calamity. Right. Just act natural, and no one will suspect we don't belong at Vandacia's party. But don't expect me to run, dodge, or loose arrows while wearing this. It isn't exactly made for sudden movements.
good you're here. This dead stump has really been rustling my leaves. And who might you be? This vessel's been hired for a private affair. Are you now? And where's your invitation? Hmm. Salvito and guest, huh? All right. This all looks to be in order. Welcome aboard. Make your way below decks and find a bunk. We're shoving off shortly, and it's going to be a long voyage. Alright, we're aboard. Let's figure out our next move. We must be on the right ship. Everyone is dressed like they're about to have tea with Queen Irene herself. I don't know. We want to avoid drawing too much attention to ourselves. We don't want anyone to figure out we're not actually supposed to be here. I guess we could talk to the other guests. See if we can learn anything. Just be careful, all right? Then we should find our berths and get some rest. We want to be ready when the ship arrives at its destination, wherever that may be. I don't remember you. This must be your first time experiencing one of Vandacia's events. You're in for a treat, my friend, an absolute treat. But tell me, have you known the council long? Ah, a new recruit to the cause. Welcome, welcome. I envy you. I remember my first time crossing over to... Oh no, no, my friend. I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. I do suggest you get some rest, though. The voyage takes us through some strange waters. I find it better to sleep through the rough patches. Makes the trip pass by more quickly as well. Mm. I do not know you. Vandacia and his recruitment drives. I prefer the company of long-standing believers, not raw initiates, fresh out of the egg. Somewhere spectacular, that's what I have been told. Vandacia does love to show off. The rumor is that this time, he actually has something vital to share with us. I look forward to seeing whatever it is. <laughs> Guesses. As many as stars in the sky, but such games get us no closer to the truth. I suggest you go and contemplate the blessings of fire and flood, Initiate. That is all that should really concern you. No matter what Vandacia says to the contrary.
Stay on the path. The keep is just ahead. through that. Everyone else has already disembarked. We need to hurry. Well, according to the last couple of nobles who headed off the ship, we're somewhere in the Deadlands, the oblivion plain of Mayrune's Dagon. I guess Vandacia really didn't want anyone interrupting this event. Same place the rest of the nobles went. Off the ship in that way. There's some sort of keep over there. That must be the place. I'm right behind you. Let's go see what this is all about. This way, please. Mind where you step. Keep going. Stay on the path. Please excuse the mess, Your Excellency. Enjoy yourselves. Counselor Vandacia shall be with you momentarily. All right, this is weird. We're in freaking oblivion, and these cracked acorns are having a party. I wonder when Vandacia plans to make an appearance. No, look around. He brought these people here to show them he's in control, that he's got power and the favor of Mayrune's Dagon. I think we need to explore this place and figure out what he's got planned before he reveals it to the world. Which is why we need to get moving. If he has found an ambition, maybe we can free them. And if it's something else, well, we need to see what it is and figure out what to do about it while there's still time. Let's search around and see if we can get a look at Vandacia's surprise before he parades it before these corrupt nobles. Oh, hey, look! Is that Lyrinth? What's she doing here? I'm getting that impression, at least from everyone that isn't you, me, or Lyrinth. What's she doing over there, I wonder? Anyway, since they all seem comfortable and excited to be sipping wine in the Deadlands, how could they not be cultists? Little mortal, I was wondering when you were going to arrive. And where did you get that outfit? Is that really what passes for the height of fashion among the Tamriel elite this century? I told you I had my own avenues of investigation. Why does it surprise you that I would be on hand for Vandacia's major announcement? Besides, the Dagonist who gave me this coin was only too happy to let me take it from her cold, dead hand. Not exactly. I haven't been able to move about as freely as I would like. I don't want to reveal myself to Dagon's Dromora any sooner than I have to. But some of these mortals believe that Vandacia has finally found one of the ambitions. As I understand it, he has been looking for them ever since Emperor Leovig's death. I suggest you take advantage of that disguise you're wearing and see what you can find out before Vandacia begins this extravaganza. I shall remain close by. I think they want us wandering around on our own.
I'll tell you what I told Vendacia. I'm Sombrin, and I won't perform for the pleasure of a Dagon cult. So, Vendacia has let some of his pet nobles come by to gawk at his prize. Away, you vultures! There aren't enough of you to stop Vondacia. He has an army of elite soldiers, crazed cultists, and Daedric creatures given to him by Merun's Dagon personally. You're hopelessly outclassed. Me? I'm the main event at this infernal affair. Vondacia plans to sacrifice me to his Daedric prince, referred to me as one of the four ambitions of Merun's Dagon. Apparently, they think my death will grant them all unlimited power. I don't know. Maybe. My mentor used that term once or twice, but I never paid it much mind. Look, to stop Vondacia, you need to get me out of here. Find the key to unlock these chains. Ken Reeve Deserog has a copy. His chamber's to the north. You get the key. I'll stay here and watch over Sombrin. Courage brings victory.
Over here. We're too late. While you were searching for the key, Vandasi arrived and called in the... For glory! We're too late. While you were searching for the key, Vandasi arrived and called in the nobles. He started his presentation. Great, but it's not like we can just walk in there and... Wait a moment, that's it! If we can cause a panic, get those nobles to run around screaming, that should create enough of a diversion for you to use that key and set Sombrin free. We just need to accomplish that before Vandasia gets to the part where he sacrifices Sombrin. Take these Rikas. They're beetles similar to dewbugs. Very tasty, though they release a foul odor when they die. I was saving them for later, but I'll get more. Place them around the hall. Then, when you give the signal, I'll lose some arrows. Just drop the Rikas around the perimeter of the chamber. Once you've placed them, give me the signal and wait for the clouds of stench to clear the room. Then you can set Sombrin free. I hope you can hold your breath, though. We had an infestation in my village when I was a little girl. If you know how to do it, you can kill them without causing a stink. They're quite delicious. But if you just crush them or stick them with an arrow, phew, that's what we're counting on. Place the Rikas around the chamber, then give me the signal when you're done. Brothers and sisters of the Waking Flame, behold our future. This is one of the fabled four mm. ambitions of Merun's Dagon, and his death will elevate us all. Like the others of his kind, he was created from birth for one purpose to give. Now that's what I call it. Let's grab Sombrin and get out of here. Interrupt this sacred ceremony! Destroy them! Counselor, this way, before the odor overwhelms you. Damn! Now go! The High Priest is getting away! Us. We will not escape this keep. No matter. Come. If we can reach the entry hall, I can open a portal back to Nern.
Well, I shall deal with you myself! and leave this place. We shall see each other again. I guarantee it. Remind me never to get dressed up for a romp through Oblivion again. This fancy outfit threw off my aim ever so slightly. I think we have to. We've got three of the four ambitions. Now we just need to figure out what to do with them. That goes without saying. Take Somran to the Temple of Debella in Gideon. That's where Keshu was going to hide the twins. Then, meet me at the Governor's Mansion. I want to let Keshu know what happened. Thank you for getting me out of that place. I am in your debt. <laughs> that story would take too long to tell. Let's just say I made the mistake of returning to a place where I once lived. I wasn't paying attention. Suddenly, I was surrounded by Vondasia's cultists. They overpowered me, and I woke up in chains. Yes, I would like to meet these other ambitions. Find out who they are, what we are, and learn more about this power Vondasia seems intent on taking from us. Lead on, and I will follow. Take Sombrin to the Temple of Debella, then meet me at the Governor's Mansion. Lead the way, my friend. There's something wonderful about wandering a city's streets with no destination. Go, my friend. Go see Evely. The twins and I have much to discuss. I'm Destron, and this is my sister, Kalia. But who are you? My name is Sombrin, and I, like you, am an ambition. Another ambition? Truly? How very nice to meet you. What do you want?
Did you get Sombrin settled into the temple? Did you introduce him to the twins? Perfect. I was telling the governor everything that happened. How we traveled to the Deadlands and stopped Vandacia from sacrificing the third ambition. We need to figure out our next move. Oh, before I forget, here's your share of our compensation. You have done well so far, mercenary. Now we must speak. Every stone tossed into a pond causes ripples. The stones you have thrown have caused waves. As much as I wish to assist you, I need to think of Gideon and its safety. My spy master tells me that Counselor Vondacia still has eyes in the city. That even now we fear he is aware that we harbor the ambitions. That he gathers his cultists to assault Gideon. The presence of the ambitions puts my people at risk. Keep the ambitions safe, but we need to find a better place to hide them. Talk to the ambitions. Perhaps the third one you rescued. Sombrin, was it? Evely said he wasn't locked in a vault when the cult found him. Maybe he knows more than the twins. I would never turn away anyone in need. We will protect the ambitions for as long as we can, yet I fear my legionnaires will not be able to hold off Vondacia's forces should they attack. Go to the Temple of Debella when you're ready to talk to them. My spymaster reports a flurry of activity that is troublesome, and Gideon is not the fortress it once was. Even so, my Blackfin Legion will give as good as it gets. Better, even. What most concerns me is the possibility of treachery. Vondacia's family is powerful and has deep roots in Blackwood. His spies and political allies fill Gideon like wine fills a goblet. And not all of them are cultists, at least not openly. I fear the enemy we cannot see more than the one we can.
I love cities. The rude people, the noise, the chaos. Is it strange that I find it comfortable? I don't have to go, you know. I can help clean things up around here. I know how to keep a low profile. This isn't up for debate. I am a... I could give you... They said I...
robbery. Oh, don't mind. Trust this one. I'm rather busy right now. Look like you. How can I help?
Always ready to help. Go on, Kalia. What is it? Unleash your power. Just like back in the Sanctum. All right. If you say so. No! Wait! Something is wrong. Pull back, Kalia. Pull back! I can't! Hold on. Let me help. There. How did you do that? Practice. I trained to control my powers after I left my vault. When I was freed from my vault, it took months for my own power to reach such levels, and then it nearly destroyed me. I'm surprised Callie has gotten to that point so quickly after her release. Our powers grow exponentially once we leave the protection of the vaults. It's what they were constructed for. But Callie's power has advanced much faster than mine did. It almost consumed her. If not for my mentor, the same would have befallen me. When Duke Varen's forces came through, they set me free. To them, I was just another political prisoner. I wandered without a purpose for a time until my power reached a level similar to what you saw here. That's when my mentor found me. I don't see why not. Plus, it will probably be safer if the three of us leave for a while. There's an old shrine northwest of here. Let's meet there. I suggest you tell your Wood Elf companion where we're going. She seems like the sort to worry. Find us in the marsh to the northwest. I'll take Callie and Destron and meet you at the shrine. Don't worry, I'll protect them. The cultists won't surprise me again. Just let your Wood Elf friend know that we have the twins and we'll keep them safe. Why do you think Emperor Leovic had those vaults constructed? They contain and limit our power. Without them, the power would grow and expand until it destroyed us. The vaults were supposed to keep us alive long enough to learn to control our power. Right. About that. Obviously, what I thought I knew and the truth aren't exactly the same. Regardless, without the protection of the vault, Kalia's and Destron's powers will eventually kill them. She was able to train me. She also had a method for suppressing my power until I can contain it on my own. Without her, I wouldn't be here today. She can help Destron and Kalia. I'm sure of it. The governor is wise. A moving target is harder to hit than a stationary one. And if we're no longer inside the city, Vondasius cultists have no reason to attack it. I wasn't paying attention. My mentor warned me that I was going to be hunted, but I didn't listen. I returned to my old vault to see if I could learn more about who and what I am. The cultist ambushed me, knocked me out before I could respond. I was raised in a vault, just like the twins, isolated, ignorant of the world outside. All I knew was that I was different, special somehow. Duke Varen's forces set me free when I was 16. My mentor found me some months later. I fell in with mercenaries, wandering and learning to fight even as my power grew. I was beginning to lose control when my mentor appeared. She was a shaman of sorts. 
She taught me how to master my power, but she never referred to me as an ambition. She said she had been looking for me. She knew of Mehrunes Dagon's interest in a hidden secret and had been searching for it. But it wasn't until my power began to manifest outside the vault that she was able to locate me. She saved my life. That was terrifying. I've never felt anything like that. Ever. Nothing like that ever occurred during our training in the Sanctum. What's happening to me? My gift is fire. Summoning flames is as natural as breathing. In the vault, it was always just a spark or a simple flicker. But when I tried to hit the target, I couldn't control it. The fire inside me, it wanted to grow, to spread, to feed. I'm fine. A, a bit lightheaded, maybe. Whatever Sombrin did, it put the fire out. At least for now. I don't like this. What if next time I summon the power, no one can help me extinguish it? I could hurt Destron. I could burn Gideon to the ground. Our power seems to be getting stronger. Harder to control. If not for Sombrin, Kalia's own power might have consumed her. Is this our punishment for abandoning our sanctum? No, probably not. But we're definitely getting stronger. You saw what I did in the Sanctum. My power is lightning, but after seeing how Kalia lost control, I'm hesitant to use it out here. I will, though, if I'm called upon to defend my sister. You told me to take a thinking break. It helps to take a break sometimes, you know? From thinking, so you can think better later. Anyway, how are the ambitions doing? Have you figured out a better place to hide them? Well, that sounds bad, obviously. What happened? Oh! I knew there was a reason we plucked him out of Vandasius' fortress in the Deadlands. I mean, other than preventing a human sacrifice. So who is this helpful person? Stick close to them. You need to keep the ambition safe and out of Vandasius' clutches. While you're away, I'm going to continue helping Keshu's Blackfin Legion. And I want to be around when my cousins from Valenwood finally arrive. Good luck! All I ask is that you all keep an open mind. That's... a Dramora! Sombrin, what's going on here? Easy, everyone. Interesting. This... 
I didn't expect to hear from Sombrin again after he left, despite my advice. But to find him in the presence of a powerful mortal and two other ambitions. But where are my manners? Greetings, mortal. I am Zyna. And so I did. I sensed his need and offered my assistance. He learned well, and as he will tell you, I never betrayed him. Is that why he has summoned me? Because those other two ambitions now face the same danger that almost consumed him? Then you must bring them to my sanctuary. They are far more than anything you can imagine. I helped Sombrin because I didn't want to see him fall into Mehrun's Dagon's hands, or destroy himself with his own power. I will do the same for the others. I hide in the Deadlands. Yes, Dagon's realm. But I have ways to protect us. Before you bring them, they must be attuned to this realm. Find slivers of the Deadlands lodged in your world. Sombrin will show you how to use them to attune the ambitions. As I said, Zyna helped me, and she can help Kalia and Destron. You just have to trust her, and if you can't trust her, trust me. Forgive me, but in my experience, most of Nern takes a dark view of Dramora. Zyna found me when I was at my worst. If she wanted me dead, she could have killed me years ago or just let me destroy myself. Instead, she helped me. Taught me control. Oh, of that I'm certain. Competition in the Deadlands is fierce, especially among the non-aligned Dramora. I know that she seeks allies to call upon when the need arises. Having three ambitions who owe you a favor? Oh, that's like gold to Zyna. Let me mark your map. Zyna told me where to find these slivers of the Deadlands when I needed them. Dagon cultists often enshrine these shards whenever they find them. You'd be surprised how often chunks of oblivion make their way to Nern. I'll describe the process when you return. I need to prepare a portal at a place where the planar boundaries are thin. Take Kalia and Destron and gather the slivers. Then I can attune them to the Deadlands. I also marked where to meet me on your map. Our powers interact strangely with the natural forces of the Deadlands. That's why we need to be attuned. Of course, I underwent the process years ago. Now we must help the twins do the same. Keep them safe, then meet me on the road south of Gideon. No, you're not an ambition. Besides, you've been to the Deadlands already and suffered no ill effects. If the twins attempted that before we attuned them, the plane would rip them apart. Our power, it's connected to Mehrun's Dagon in some way. I'm not entirely sure. I just know that there's some element of Mehrun's Dagon inside us, and it wants to return whence it came. I think that's what Von Dacia hoped to accomplish by killing me. Anyway, I'd rather not see that happen to any of us. I suppose we must trust in Sombrin's experience. He knows quite a lot more about our powers than we do. Does it matter? I felt the power inside me when I lost control back at the temple. I couldn't stop it. If Sombrin hadn't suppressed my flames, I would have ignited the city. Unless you know another way to fix me, I don't think we have a choice. Let's find these objects from the Deadlands as Sombrin's mentor suggested. If it helps keep me and my sister alive, we've got to try it, no matter the risk. No, but I never heard of ambitions either before all this began. We're in new territory here, but as long as my sister and I are in danger, I'll take help wherever I can get it. Let's go and find these objects.
Can you believe it, Kalia? We're going to be great heroes. What's heroic about being consumed by our own powers? Zyna taught Sombrin to control his powers. She'll do the same for us. If the cultists are our own powers, don't kill us first. Come now, sister. Where's your sense of adventure? What if Zyna only wants to use us for our power, Destron? She can't force us. You heard her. She needs allies, and we're as powerful as they come. I've read the stories. Pacts with Daedra never turn out well. I'll protect you, Kalia. You have my word. Silly little brother. I'm the one who protects you. You're barely older. Only by a moment. Two slivers of the Deadlands, one for each of us. Mission accomplished. I fear it just gets more difficult from here. You worry about everything. Let's go meet Sombrin. Oblivion, take you!
<laughs> the roads here may look peaceful, but they are. Relax, Kelly. We're on an adventure. Destron, be serious. Our own powers could destroy us. That won't happen. I won't let it. It might not be up to you. Kalia, we'll figure this out. We're doing this to avoid all that. Did you gather the slivers? I need you to deal with a complication for me. Creatures were drawn to the hillside by my actions. Could you make sure the path to the top is clear? The last thing we need is for some mundane and random threat to provoke a response from Kalia or Destron. Right? Just like we discussed, focus on the slivers of Deadlands. It's working! I've never traveled by portal before. Quick, step inside. Follow when you're ready, friend. I greet you, mortal. As with Sombrin, I shall do all that I can to aid the twins. But first, they must survive the Ashen Forest. They must walk the path of the Obelisks. Before I can teach them to contain their power, they must first come to understand it. The path of the obelisks will help them do so. They must visit the three ancient oracles and learn the truths that each will reveal.
protect the twins from the dangers of the forest. They cannot unleash their power safely until they have learned to control it. At each obelisk, you will bear witness to the truths they learn. Come to me when all is said and done. Then we shall see. The power of these two ambitions grows with every passing moment. You must hurry. The path begins to the northwest. Look for the obelisks of origin, empowerment, and inevitability. Each will reveal a hidden truth. The Dramora of my clan have dwelt in the Deadlands for ages, uncounted. This is the seat of my power, just as it is Mehrun's Dagon's. My purposes, however, are my own. Allegiances among Daedra are not as simple as they are in the mortal world. Let us just say that I do not wish to see Mehrun's Dagon succeed in this endeavor. The ambitions must not fall into his hands. I cannot say for certain. Their truths are their own, not mine. Yet I know that they must walk this path. A mortal cannot become what they are meant to be without first understanding what they are. Much remains hidden from these two ambitions. The Dramora of my clan have dwelt in the Deadlands for ages, uncounted. This is the seat of my power, just as it is Mehrun's Dagon's. My purposes, however, are my own. Allegiances among Daedra are not as simple as they are in the mortal world. Let us just say that I do not wish to see Mehrun's Dagon succeed in this endeavor. The ambitions must not fall into his hands. I cannot say for certain. Their truths are their own. must be the first obelisk. Prepare yourself, brother, while our friend activates it and serves... Something's happening. The babes are asleep? Oh, I couldn't get the boy to stop bawling. I fed the twins until they were full and exhausted. Your Majesty, welcome. The babes are healthy and strong. As commanded, my Emperor. She bore twins. As Merun's Dagon commanded, so it has been done. Our parents and the High Priest? I don't understand.
knows this is the obelisk of empowerment. Activate it, if you would, friend. Starting. Time for the final ritual, my emperor. Proceed, high priest. Oh, Merun's Dagon, prince of ambition and destruction, imbue these infants with your power. Let it ripen and grow within these vessels until the appointed time. As so, Dagon wills. Let it be done. Parents were sacrificed to Mayrun's Dagon? Why? opened on its own. I suppose we should step inside. Ah, this must be the day you learn you are destined to fail. That I and the Waking Flame emerged victorious. No. Destron, is that us up there? And Mayrun's Dagon? Is this our future, Kalia? Is this inevitable? How long ago was it when I crushed you and claimed the ambitions for myself? It must be rather depressing to see that all your efforts were in vain. That my victory is inevitable. Visions. You must understand the forces with which you meddle. Given your failures before you died, that doesn't surprise me. You entered the portal at the obelisk of inevitability in the Deadlands. What could be more inevitable than the future? Look around and see for yourself. The very fact that you stand before me proves that you didn't stop me. You didn't save the ambitions. You didn't save anyone. I destroyed you. Now this realm belongs to my lord and master, Mehrun's Dagon. Who stands behind me? Look at the throne on which I sit. Meron's Dagon may be the master of all Nern, but he has given me Tamriel as my reward. From High Rock to Morrowind, all bow to my will. 
There is no power in Tamriel equal to mine. Mercenary, time to go. Through the portal, quickly. Bandesia. He had us displayed like trophies. We saw our future. We're doomed. Snap out of it. What you saw was just one possible inevitability. Nothing is set in stone. I didn't think that was how my story was going to end. I really thought we were going to win. Isn't it? You saw the Prince of Destruction. How can we hope to fight something like that, let alone his High Priest? Maybe it's better if we just let our powers consume us. At least then Vandacia won't be able to claim us. Now you sound like Kalia and Sombrin. You're right, though. We have power beyond anything Vandacia possesses. That's why he wants us. Once Zyna teaches us to control it, we'll be unstoppable. All right. We're with you. Let's go get this done. Vandacia is going to win. We saw ourselves. He was drawing power from us, like sipping wine from a chalice. But you saw how Vandacia looked strong, powerful, and Mehrun's Dagon looking down on us. How do we stand against that? I don't... Can it really be that simple? Was that the point of these visions? To show us how we were created, and to reveal a dark and possible future? All right. I understand. Just because the night is long, doesn't mean the sun won't rise tomorrow. The Obelisk of Inevitability reveals just one possible future. True, it's the most likely outcome. But it isn't the only one. Now that we know where things are heading, we can work to change the course. We're dealing with forces beyond our understanding. It was always going to be a difficult journey. But the obelisk of inevitability only shows what will happen if events continue on their current course. That future hasn't happened. Yet. The perils of visiting oracles. Are we better off knowing what is to come, or continuing on in blissful ignorance? I believe our choices matter. I choose to resist Mehrun's Dagon, and no vision will sway me from that path. I hope you feel the same. for the twin ambitions. Let us speak. We can finally greet each other in person, mortal. Before we begin the process that will permit the twins to control their powers, I must ask you a single question. Why does one who abhors Mehrun's Dagon care what happens to his ambitions? A noble sentiment. But they are more than just people. They are powerful weapons. Dagon's priest imbued them with a portion of the Lord of Destruction's own energy when they were born. It has grown and intensified in the intervening years. Imagine that each ambition is like a mortal bank. Instead of gold, the priest deposited a portion of Dagon's energy inside them. That energy grew with them, compounding and doubling year after year like interest on your savings. It also transformed. In every way, 
What was once just of oblivion became mixed with Nern. Now that energy is a part of both realms. And that is why Mehrun's Dagon wants it back. It will give him the connection to Nern that he so greatly desires. A path to your world. Their power is like a volcano, building until released as an explosion or a lava flow. One is catastrophic, the other merely destructive. I will delay the eruptions while teaching them to dissipate and maintain control. You may observe, of course. We must begin the ritual at once. This way. Stay close, friend. I'll feel better knowing you're nearby. What's happening? What's going on? Zyna, what are you doing? Helping you fulfill your purpose. Your ambitions. You belong to Mehrun's Dagon. Oh. What happened? No! Thyna! Damn it! You betrayed us! Damn her! Zyna betrayed us and cast us into the spider nest! It's a dungeon beneath her sanctuary. She sends her enemies here to die. But we aren't her enemies. She saved my life many times. If she'd wanted to hurt me, she could have done so long ago. Why turn against me now? I don't want to believe that. But I heard what she said too. And she completely drained my energy. I can't call upon my power until it recharges. We need to find a way out of here. We need to get to Kalia and Destron before Zyna turns them over. First things first. I need to restore my power. Uh, let me think. Zyna told me about an old foe she destroyed, tossed them into this place and kept their skull as a trophy. It may hold enough energy to recharge my power immediately. The skull is in the treasure chamber. You can get there through the east door, retrieve it and meet me at the door in the north. When you find me, I'll be in a meditative state. Present the skull and I'll do the rest. Menthix, an ancient rival. Challenging him was one of the last tasks Sina assigned to me as she trained me to control my power. Together, we vanquished Menthix and left his bones in the spider nest. Sina did something to Menthix to chain his essence here forever. She kept him from coming back by trapping his power here, below her temple. That's also why the skull contains energy. Energy I can use to recharge my own power. She probably didn't want to have to deal with three ambitions and you at the same time. She needs our powers at their full strength for whatever she has planned. She reversed what I did. I could feel it. Kalia and Destron's powers have been unleashed. Eventually. But probably not before she completes whatever she has in mind. Hurry. We need that skull. With it, I can recharge my power and help the twins. Then, when they aren't in imminent danger of exploding, we can figure out the rest. The skull contains the trapped essence of a powerful Daedric Lord. If Zyna had simply killed her rival, he would have returned like Daedra do. So instead, she trapped a portion of his energy to keep him from coming back. You heard Zyna. My powers of both Oblivion and Nern. I could use a spark from the trapped essence of a Daedric Lord to recharge my power. That means Zyna's old enemy will be free to return someday. Not that I care about that anymore.
feel the residual energy. Hold the skull toward me, please. While my power finishes recharging, take a look at what I found. I left it over there. Alright, I'm ready. Follow me. We have to stop Zyna. Attack! She's doing something to the twins! You're too late. Lord Dagon will reward me for securing the twins. You deal with Zyna! belong to Lord Dagon. Their power is for him alone. to sacrifice us to Mehrun's Dagon. Sombrin, how could you bring us to this... this monster? She wasn't like this. I, I didn't know. Destron, help me open a portal. Like Sombrin showed us on the hilltop. This wasn't how it was supposed to turn out. Come on. Let's go after them. Zyna, she never gave me any indication that she was going to betray us. That she was involved in our creation and wanted to sacrifice us to Mehrun's Dagon. At least the twin stone appeared to be in imminent danger of exploding. Let me take another look at Zyna's contracts. Yes, it's here. Zyna used a holy book to show Von Dacia how to create the Four Ambitions. Could it have been the Mysterium Xarxis? 
She was always loyal to Dagon. She never wanted to help us at all. Hopefully, they're either still locked in a vault or wandering free like I was. I hate to think that Vondasia captured them while we were busy elsewhere. I'm... I'm not sure what we should do next, my friend. It's beginning to seem hopeless. I hope you're right, but I can't see a way ahead from here. If all else fails, we'll destroy ourselves before we let Dagon win. We're the keys to unlock the barriers between here and the Deadlands. We can't allow ourselves to fall into his hands. Callie and Destron. They have no reason to trust me. Not anymore. But I'll still protect them. And somehow, I'll find a way to earn their trust again. Whatever Zyna did to prepare them to be sacrificed, it seems to have dampened their power. How long that will last, I have no idea. But until their power builds to uncontrollable levels again, they should be able to use it to help us. I'll try to train the twins as Zyna trained me. If all else fails, I can take them back to the Deadlands. The realm seems to naturally siphon off our energy and keep it at manageable levels. Not my first choice, but it will serve as a last resort. I'm sorry. I had no idea Zyna meant to betray us. She wanted to kill us, Sombrin. An apology isn't going to cut it. Destron, Zyna betrayed Sombrin too. Because he was stupid enough to trust her. I will make this right. I promise. Let's return to the temple. We shouldn't be discussing this in the street. Gideon is not the ground on which we conduct this fight. There is a better place to defend the ambitions. Without a proper introduction? You return at a grim moment, mercenary. While you were gone, word reached us that the Waking Flame is gathering an army. I fear it will soon march on Gideon. But Evely said you took the ambitions to learn about their powers. Did you succeed? We are all in danger. At least you kept the ambitions safe. I thank you for that. Concerning the cult, Evely and I have made plans. But first, I want you to have this. Compensation for the work you have done up to this point on Blackwood's behalf. The Order of the Waking Flame has cast a net around Gideon. Vondasia is gathering an army, including guards from the garrison who were loyal to him all along. He knows the ambitions were here, and that they have now returned. No, the city is no place for a battle. When foes surround you, it is wise to put your back spines to a tree. We will move the ambitions to Fort Redmain. The Imperials abandoned it years ago, but my Blackfin Legion has been restoring its defenses. No, I have another task for you. Summon what allies you can to Fort Redmain to help defend the ambitions. I sent my legion ahead, but I fear we will need more warriors. Before you go, tell the ambitions what we are doing and why. They trust you. Tell the ambitions we will defend them with our lives. Just not here, where so many civilians could be endangered. 
Let us use Fort Redmain as the tree against our backs. Evely will see the ambition safely to the fort. Talk to her before you go. I leave the specifics up to you. Consider who you have helped throughout Blackwood. Evely might have some ideas. Remember, this is not a mission for just any courier or messenger. The cult has made the roads of Blackwood especially dangerous. They are my brothers and sisters in arms, the finest Argonian warriors to ever emerge from Black Marsh. It started as a mercenary band and was tempered in the Akaviri and Alliance Wars. Now they protect Gideon, and they will protect the ambitions. Tell the ambitions no army of crazed cultists is going to sacrifice them on our watch. But try not to alarm them, which might be tricky. Hmm. After I send out the call for allies, I'll escort Sombrin and the twins to Fort Redmayne. Right. Anyone with an army that can help us. You head to Leowin. I'm sure Captain Rianne would be happy for the Ivory Brigade to lend a hand. Beyond that... What about anyone else you helped here in Blackwood? Anyone have any soldiers they can spare? If that's the case, just alert Captain Rianne after you talk to the Ambitions. Then head directly to Fort Redmain. But if you have the time, go help some people. The fate of the world's at stake. Someone may join up in exchange for a good deed. Tell Sombrin and the twins I'll be with them shortly. I have a few more details to work out with the governor. After that, go see Captain Rianne and then meet me at Fort Redmayne. But don't take too long. I'd rather you were there when the cult attacks. You went to the Deadlands? And you took the ambitions with you? What were you thinking? What did you expect was going to happen in the Deadlands? That's where Mayroon's Dagon keeps all his stuff. Well, at least everyone made it back. Now, we just need to keep them safe from Vandacia and the Order of the Waking Flame. walk outside the city just to admire the view? Something's going on, isn't it? Seems like every Blackfin legionnaire is in a hurry today. Let me guess. Fondacia's coming for us again. I know the place. It's an old Imperial garrison, isn't it? I passed by it during my travels after Varen's forces released me from my vault. A fort is more defensible than Gideon anyway. I see the logic. But aren't you coming with us? I swear to protect the twins in your absence. I took Zyna at her word, and it nearly cost Kalia and Destron their lives. I'll die before I put them in danger again.
over here. Rock Grove begs for your aid. Mercenary, you have news? That explains the reports I received from my scouts. Increased and flagrant waking flame activity in the countryside around Gideon. I take it Vondacia knows the ambitions are there? Governor Keshu is wise. Gideon isn't as defensible as Leowin. A battle inside the city limits will cause untold damage and deaths among the common folk. Very well, mercenary. The Ivory Brigade will stand with the Black Finn Legion. I'll rally the Ivory Brigade here in Leowin, and we'll meet you at Fort Redmain. We'll stop Vondacia and his cultists. We have to. The cultists seem to have moved away from Leowin. I don't think the Legates are in any immediate danger. But they're also no longer trying too hard to hide their identity. They're gathering in great numbers and setting up a perimeter around Gideon. Hear ye, card sharps and collectors! Test your wits and courage in a brand new card game, Tales of Tribute!
You play the army you're dealt, right? Or march with the army you have? I'm terrible at metaphors. A solid fort at our backs, brave soldiers at our side. Now we just need to wait for Vandacia and his cultists to show up. If we're being totally honest, I'm as nervous as the last leaf on the tree on the final day of fall. I'm a walk in the woods, loose an arrow at your back, fade into the trees kind of adventurer. An all-out war? That's not my style. Right. No guarantees in war. Still, it makes me feel better to know I'll have you fighting with me. And the Legionnaires and Brigadines, of course. Anyway, let's get to it. Talk to Governor Keshu and see where she thinks will do the most good. Like a storm drawing near, Vandacia's forces come. Time to take our places. I will command the outer defenses. Captain Rian and his brigadines will protect the gate. We will do our best to keep the cultists from getting past us and into the fort. I want you inside the fort near the guardhouse. That's where we'll place the ambitions for safekeeping. It will be up to you to deal with any cultists that get past us, until we can send soldiers to assist you. And remember, they have portal magic. I expect a two-pronged assault. The bulk of Vandacia's forces will attack the gate, while a smaller group uses portals to get inside. Portal magic is difficult. They could never move an entire army that way. Hence, we must defend from all directions. Brigadines, take your positions! The enemy could arrive at any time! Evely, take the ambitions to the guardhouse! Blackfin Legion, to me! Any sign of Vandacia's forces, Captain Rianne? I just received word. The Waking Flame has arrived. And they have portal mages with them. Evely, take the ambitions to the guardhouse. I'll protect them. You stay here and defend the courtyard. Brigadine archers, support the mercenary! Portals, cut down the cultists! <laughs> My archers are ready! Give us a target! We're about to lose! Lead the enemy to our target! Give the order and we'll release a volley!
little help in here. Hold the courtyard, Lieutenant. Mercenary, go check on the ambitions. Portals, just as we feared. At least they can't transport overwhelming forces in that manner. Go check on the guardhouse. Make sure Evely and the ambitions are secure. Positive. With the added brigadines the lieutenant brought us, we'll be able to hold the courtyard. It's the ambitions that concern me now. Get to the guardhouse and stay with them. Enemies could emerge from portals at any moment. My scouts tell me we closed the gate just in time. It appears the Waking Flame used magic to conceal their approach. The Black Fin Legion is holding them back, but you should make sure the ambitions are safe. I need to make sure we hold the battlements. Deal with any other portals that open, and see what support we can provide to Keshu and her Legionnaires. Now go, mercenary. I hear more fighting inside. Good, you're here. A little help, please. They made their choices. So be it.
Clear your mind and break the spell! Still no sign of the ambitions? Tangled roots, what a mess! Well, I ran into a lot of Daedra, but no ambitions. Sombrin must be trying to stay one step ahead of Vandacia's forces. Let's split up. You check the inner bailey, and I'll backtrack to make sure we didn't miss anyone in here. Portals open all around us, and Daedra poured in without warning. Sombrin grabbed Kalia and Destron and blasted their way out of the fight. When you arrived, my cousins and I were doing our best to cover their retreat. I'm not sure, but they ran west. The inner Bailey's in that direction. I wouldn't be surprised if Sombrin plans to keep moving. Vandacia will have a hard time finding the ambitions if they don't stand still. Hmm. And so will we. That's awkward. Over here, mercenary! Vandicia's forces... they're everywhere! Sombrin, I sense more of them. They're coming! All of you, under the shield! Our steel. Time to move. Stay close. There's more coming. All of you, under the shield. Monster! Because of you, our parents are dead! They were the chosen of Merun's Dagon. Rewarded beyond their station. I'm going to kill you, Vandacia! Who shall I sacrifice first? Perhaps the sister. You leave Kalia alone, you bastard! Destron! You are an ambition, boy. Let me help you fulfill your purpose. Destron! No! Lord Dagon, I return to you the power of this ambition. Let the realms burn so you may walk among us. Sky! And Merun's Dagon! How is he here? This is my opposition. 
position. How easily I shall crush them. Into the keep! Quickly! The worlds are merging, Sombrin. There is no escape. When you tire of running, I will be waiting in the courtyard. I hate you! Just leave us alone! Talia, you can't unleash your power like that. You could lose control. What does it matter? You saw what he did to Destron. He's going to do the same to us. Broken branches? What happened here? Fondacia sacrificed Destron, allowing Mehrunes Dagon to drag us into his realm. Evely, I need the book you're carrying. You know about that? It's part of Dagon. Just like Kalia and me. I sensed it the moment I met you. I think I can use it to weaken Vondacia. Give us a fighting chance. All right. What are you going to do with it? Take the fight to Vondacia in the courtyard. He won't expect that. Meanwhile, I need time to prepare. Go fight the super powerful Daedric priest? How? Just keep him busy. Then, with the help of this book, I'll take care of the rest. All right. Sombra needs us to buy him some time. Let's get to the courtyard. I can't believe it. He killed my brother. He killed Destron. Listen. Sacrifice me. Let Sombrin take my energy. Then you can kill Vondacia and save the fort. But... But my brother and my parents... Vondacia has to pay for that. You... You were supposed to protect us. You were supposed to save Destron. Then let me help. Sombrin has been holding me back. I don't care if I lose control, so long as I take Vandacia with me. Find him. Keep him busy. I'll make sure he pays for Destron. I can't let Destron's death be for nothing. With this book, I think I can help us defeat Vondacia and once again separate the realms. I can't explain how being an ambition works. I don't really know myself. But I can sense things that are like me, that have the same taint of Dagon upon them. This book practically reeks of it. I think this is the Mysterium Xarxis. Zyna's contracts mentioned it. The rites it describes allowed Vondacia to imbue us with a portion of Dagon's energy. I think he took a little for himself along the way, which is why he's so powerful. I want to try to take that energy away from him. I'm not sure we left Blackwood. The two realms are merging around this fort. We could be on Nern, or in the Deadlands, or maybe someplace in between. If I can weaken Vondacia and you can destroy him, that might break the connection and set us free. I can't believe we lost Destron. I should have been there. Maybe together we could have saved him. Yes, I'd probably do the same if someone threatened my brother. Have you seen the sky outside? One ambition gave Vandacia enough energy to merge the entire fort with the Deadlands. What could he do with another ambition or two? Right. Should it concern us that he can read the book and it was all gibberish to me? Maybe the whole reason I found it and carried it all this time was so I could give it to Sombrin now. Maybe he's meant to use it to stop Dagon. I hope that's true. Choosing to remain still. 
The day is ours! Run, little maggots. Flee from the god of destruction. <laughs> <laughs> Kalia, just like I showed you. You're going to pay Vandacia. Mercenary, help us drain his power. Master's tone! 
defeat Van Dacia together.
fairy tale. But sometimes villains get what they deserve anyway. You defeated my high priest, mortals. That was unexpected. And before he completed emerging, that is unfortunate. Though this realm slips from my grasp, your fate is inevitable. You will join me or die on missions. It is why you were created. We did it! We stopped Von Dacia from merging the realms and opening the way for Mayrune's Dagon. But my brother... Destron is still dead. I failed Destron. But I won't fail you. All right. Without Van Dacia or his master, the cult doesn't stand a chance. <sighs> At least the sky looks normal again. I... I need to get out of this place. This way, Kalia. Come with me. I can't believe it! We defeated Vandacia, saved Sombrin and Kalia, and sent Dagon running with his tail between his legs. Does he have a tail? Anyway, we won! Destron would be proud of his sister. She fought bravely through the entire battle. Yeah, I guess Varro Lupus was right. We did need that strange book. In fact, I think I was meant to give it to Sombrin. I couldn't read a word of it, but he cast spells from it like it belonged to him. Sombrin did good, that's for certain. And honestly, I'm glad to be rid of that book. Sombrin seems to know how to handle it safely. I think it would be dangerous in the wrong hands. And I for one don't want any more bad dreams or waking visions. Now I can add facing down a Daedric Prince to my already impressive list of accomplishments. Food connoisseur, master assassin, consummate Vosa saddle player, and now this. I suppose I should thank you for getting me mixed up in this. Nope. Vandacia made this personal, but I try not to make a habit of killing people for free. It's bad for business. You do what you have to. Me? I'm going to find a nice mammoth stick with a side of vegetables smothered in scuttled cheese sauce. Hey, I never claimed to be a hero. And despite our success today, I don't want to face Daedric threats on a regular basis. Then again, who knows what tomorrow will bring? Seeing you in action, I'm sure you'll turn up on a contract eventually.
sorry about Destron. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. I'm still alive. I can't believe I survived all that, but Destron didn't. It's not fair. None of this is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. Easy to say. Hard to do. Still. So many people fought to protect me today. Even though my heart is broken, for their sakes I'll find a way. Destron would want me to. I hope so. Not just for my sake, but for the other ambition, whoever they are. Without Destron, they and Sombran are the only family I have left. I'll try to be there for them. I really will. For now, we're heading back to the temple if you need us. I've been alone my entire life. First in my vault, and then in my wanderings. I finally found a real family, and I let one of them get taken from me. I promise you, I won't allow that to happen again. For now, but I don't think it's over. There's another ambition to find, and I can't imagine Mehrunes Dagon and his followers leaving us alone after all the time and planning that went into creating us. I think we'll head back to the temple for now. I, uh, I'm not sure. It belongs to Evely, not me. I'd like to study it, see if there's some way to free the ambitions and change our destiny. But I know it's also dangerous. Let me think about it a little more. Then I'll talk with Evely. Daedra spin great lies from small truth when it suits them. I know that now. It was Zaina's last lesson to me. We won't join him and I won't let him kill us. We just need to come up with a way to keep any of that from happening. Yes. I wonder who he is, or she. Are they still trapped inside a vault? Or did they find a way to escape like I did? I hate to think of them alone and unprotected. But maybe it's better if they remain hidden. Right. I almost forgot about that. I need to figure out how to keep Kalia from being consumed by her ever-increasing power. And them, too, once we find them. I suppose I have a lot to consider, and not a lot of time to do it. You made the right call bringing the ambitions here. Can you imagine what would have happened to Gideon if Mayrune's Dagon appeared over the egg and hammer? We didn't just save Sombran and Kalia, we saved Gideon. Maybe all of Blackwood. That seems to be the long and short of it. I'm sorry we couldn't stop Vandacia from murdering Destron, but at least we took care of that rotten tree stump in the end. Despite all that, I feel pretty good. It's not every day I get to save Tamriel. That would be too much to hope for. I'm sure some of them slipped away. It will take a while for them to find a leader as powerful as Vandacia, but I expect them to show up again at some point. Not by myself, I didn't. You helped. What started as an historic mystery turned into a tale of murder, living Daedric weapons, and the end of the world. How do we follow that? Oh, I know. With flagons of rot meth and lots of roast paws on a stick. What now? Can't we just rest for a while and bask in the glory? I know, there's another ambition out there. And we need to keep Sombran and Kalia safe. But still... Oh! Kesho asked me to give this to you. A reward for defending Blackwood. I have a feeling you hate this sort of thing, but we need to head back to Gideon. 
Governor Keshu insists on throwing us a victory celebration. I wonder if there will be cake. I could really, really go for a big, gooey piece of cake. Oh, the best kind. I hear Governor Keshu really knows how to throw a party. Food and drink, music and dancing. And she wants everyone to be there. Sure. The gardens behind the governor's mansion are big enough to entertain an entire army. Hey, before you join us, can you check on Sombran and Kalia? Invite them to the party? They went back to the Temple of Debella in Gideon. I'll meet you in Gideon after you collect Sombran and Kalia from the temple. I think we have earned a little relaxation and a slice or two of cake after everything we've accomplished here. Absolutely. I think I'm really cut out for it. You get to travel, meet interesting people, see ancient places, and you get to solve all sorts of riddles and mysteries. And sometimes people throw you a celebration party too. A party with cake! I'm from Grotwood. Have you met my people? It's all roasted this and roasted that, and even raw this and raw that too. You don't get to enjoy many pastries under Green Pact rules, you know. Knowing that you helped people and seeing how much they appreciate it more than makes up for the dark times. You walk into town and people say, Hey, it's Everly! Soon the little kids around here will all have pigtails in their hair. Count on it! As soon as my legionnaires make one more sweep of the area, we'll be returning to Gideon. You should join us there. A victory such as this deserves accolades. Let's hit the trail.
What is it? There are brilliant minds who will give me a medal for that. I am grateful. Hello? If you're looking for our guests, they're long gone. Those guests to our temple, Kalia and Sombren and poor Destron. Everyone in town is talking about your deeds in Blackwood. You helped stop that traitorous Vendacia and his cult. Thank you for that. I did say that, didn't I? I suppose that even the charms of the Lady of Love can be too much for some folk. Not everyone can stand to bask in Debella's glory for too long at a time. But they were good people. I liked them all. I heard them talking about a ruin north of Gideon. I know that particular place well. Let me mark its location on your map. When you can spare a moment, come back and enjoy one of our ceremonies. All should open their hearts to the secrets of love. I just came by to... Hey, where are Callie and Sombrin? I came by to find out what was keeping you in the ambitions. Where are they? What happened to Callie and Sombrin? A ruin? I wonder why they went there. Haven't those two had enough adventures after all they've been through? We should go find the ambitions or they'll miss the party. Did the priest say which ruin in particular? Lead on, then. The party's going to start soon, and we don't want to be late. I, for one, want to get a nice piece of cake. Or maybe a slice of pie? Oh, broken branches, I'll just have both. What do you want? How much longer, Sombrin? This place makes me feel uneasy. Not long now. I'm almost done. Oh, it seems we have company. I told Sombrin we should have talked to you before coming out here, but he was so insistent. He wanted to try something with the book, away from other people, just in case. Sombrin thinks my only chance is if we return to the Deadlands. The nature of the realm naturally draws off my power, making it easier to control. Sombrin doesn't think so. He says that's the last place they'd look for us. I'm still attuned to the realm from the trial in the Ashen Forest. 
Sombrin believes he'll have enough time to teach me if I'm not in danger of imminently exploding. Worse? I suppose that depends on your perspective. It has been growing in intensity again, back at the same level as when we first left the vault. Sombrin is worried I don't have much time. That's why he's being so insistent. I'm actually glad you found us. I didn't want to leave without an explanation. But I'm afraid that Callie doesn't have a lot of time. Callie's power is recharging faster than I anticipated. It will soon reach the point where I won't be able to help her. Then she'll either release it and destroy everything around her, or it will consume her. Either way, people die, including Callie. Use the Mysterium Zarxis to open a portal to the Deadlands? It's the only place I can think of where Callie will be safe. The realm naturally siphons off a portion of our power. That will give me time to teach Kalia to control it on her own. It's a big place. Zaina taught me how to avoid notice there. And it's the last place Dagon's followers will think to look for us. As soon as Kalia can control her power, we'll come back. I promise. Thank you, my friend. For everything. I'll return Poor Kalia. I hope Sombrin's right and he can help her. But taking refuge? Poor Kalia. I hope Sombrin's right and he can help her. But taking refuge in the Deadlands? That's like the sausage leaping out of the pan because it thinks the fire will be safer. As for me, I never want to visit the Deadlands again. Hey, it wasn't my book. I was just keeping it safe for... Well, as crazy as it sounds, I think I was meant to give it to Sombrin. He certainly did more with it than I ever could. And I'm not about to miss the bad dreams and the waking visions. We go to the party! It's taking place in the gardens behind the governor's mansion. To think, this all started because I was curious about a coded journal I found in Emperor Leovic's old retreat. We figured out the secret, and now we celebrate. I'll see you at the party. Last one there doesn't get any cake. Cities are as alive, fickle, and uncertain as people. Some are good, some are bad. Some give you gifts, others rob you blind. That sounds delicious, assassin. You must leave me a copy of the recipe. Welcome to the celebration, mercenary. There are many here who wish to thank you and share a drink or two. But where are Sombrin and Kalia? I expected you to bring them with you. Choosing exile to spare others from danger is a noble decision. 
I wish them well, even as I worry about Sombrin and Kalia out there on their own. Everyone else has gathered. Eat, drink, talk to your friends. In time, I shall address the crowd. Anyone you like, they have all come to show you their appreciation. And do not leave too swiftly. I intend to boast of your accomplishments soon. I see Evely has arrived. Perhaps you should begin with her. So this is what it's like being the hero everyone looks up to? Most of the stories I've read end with a hero riding off into the sunset before anyone can properly thank them. But I feel like we ought to stay for just a little while, don't you? I don't know about that, but I certainly feel more experienced. And I have you to thank. Well, you and Captain Rianne and Governor Keshu and poor Farrell Lupus. Can you believe this all started because I couldn't leave Emperor Leovic's secret alone? That's right, I almost forgot. And we should be ready to help Sombrin and Kalia when they return. I don't believe that Mayrun's Dagon and his followers are just going to leave them alone. I really thought the ambitions were actual weapons, though. Here, your share of the last of our compensation from Leowin. And a little something from me. I learned so much at your side. If you ever need any help, just send word and I'll come running. Oh, look! I think Governor Keshu's ready to speak. Welcome, people of Blackwood and honored friends. We have weathered a terrible storm. So now, we celebrate. Many had a hand in this victory, including those who gave their lives for our cause. But I want to honor the two heroes beside me. Without them, all would have been lost. So stand tall and raise your cups to the sky. Remember those who fell, and praise the deeds of those who lived. To victory! <laughs> what an adventure this has been, right? I'm really building up a collection of stories. I think I'll stick around the area for a while. Visit with my brother, catch up with my cousins before they return to Valenwood. Maybe help round up any remaining cultists still hiding in the wilderness. After that, who knows? I do hate leaving a story half finished. One time I lost a book I was reading and it drove me crazy. But yes, at some point we should find the fourth ambition and make sure none of them wind up sacrificed to Mayrun's Dagon. We defeated the traitor Vandasia's plot and saved Blackwood, and we couldn't have accomplished any of that without the help of you and Evely. Hold your head high, friend. This day is yours. We must continue to remain vigilant. As long as the war rages to the north, there is always a danger it will spill into our territory. Beyond that, I plan to continue the work I started, there is still so much to be done. The work to build a place where Saxleel and Dryskins can learn from each other in peace. Where all people can prosper while maintaining their own cultures. And I want to continue to study the ancient Argonians, to learn what they can teach us. Leowin has stood with Gideon more times than I can count, we will continue to work together to keep Blackwood secure. Captain Rianne and I were even discussing joint patrols. Imagine, brigadines and legionnaires walking side by side. It's inspiring. The work to build a place where Saxleel and Dryskins can learn from... So... Any chance I could talk you into enlisting in the Ivory Brigade? 
No? I didn't think so. I want to thank you for helping us with all this. I hate to imagine what would have become of Blackwood if not for you and Everly. I'm in your debt. I wanted you to know how appreciative I am of what you've done for us. Not only did you reveal Vandacia for the traitor he was, you took him down and saved Blackwood. Countess Cairo and the Chamber of Legates, thank you. You're always welcome here. Plans? The same as they were before this trouble started. Work with Gideon to secure our borders and keep the war from impacting Blackwood directly. Make sure our communities stay safe and prosper. If not for you, none of that would even be possible. Yeah. <laughs> You're not wearing that dashing outfit I sold you? If today's celebration is not the perfect occasion to dress up, I don't know what is. Perhaps you should visit my shop again to freshen up your wardrobe, hmm? Why? Shouldn't a leading Leowin business person attend a celebration for all of Blackwood? Besides, after I let word slip that you and Everly had patronized my shop, business has been booming. Everyone just has to know which outfit you selected. It seems like you've been rather busy. I heard you would be here today, so I thought I'd stop by. I finally paid off my debt to Last Tull thanks to you. I'm free. Never thought I'd be able to say that again. Home, I think. It turns out there were some wealthy people in Leowin willing to pay to keep their relatives' involvement with the Cult of the Unmaker from coming to light. I made out like a bandit. Now I can pay off my family's debts, too. <laughs> Councillor Lovidicus' suggestion is wise. If not Governor Keshu, someone in Gideon should know where to find the Ojel Bark. If it's actually a place, that is. Just make sure you watch out for my sister. Everly is good, but she's still learning. I decided to stop by for the celebration, try a bit of the local fair before slipping back into the shadows. I know you're going to miss me, but I have a feeling we'll meet again. People like you usually wind up on a contract eventually. You mean after helping you clean up this massive debacle? Oh, the usual, I guess. Try some more of the local cuisine. Collect my next contract. Complete my next contract. What can I say? I'm a creature of habit.
Would you care to help a friend receive a blessing? Want to prove yourself? So many new faces in the city. Are you here about the notice? We can use the help. If you need work and aren't concerned about risks, then we should talk. As a representative of Leowin, I can assure you that this is all above board. Oh no, not me personally. I work for Leowin's Chamber of Legates. These days, I'm more of an administrator. Have been since the time of the Longhouse Emperors. Speak to Dedum Joss or Britus Selenus. They hire adventurers for dangerous jobs on a daily basis. Curiosity with a dash of prudence. Good qualities for an adventurer. Usually that means you'll live longer. All right. What do you want to know? Dedum Joss represents business interests in Leowin that are willing to pay for an adventurer's help. These involve acquiring items or gathering components from specific locations. A single adventurer can usually handle these tasks. Terrible monsters lurk in the wilds, threatening the good folk of Blackwood. They're too much for the Leowin militia, so... Britta Salanus is recruiting heroes to help. These foes are tough. You will need a group of adventurers to defeat them. If you prefer to work alone, see Dedum Joss. He's got odd tasks, but they pay well. If you're interested in group tasks, talk to Britta Salanus. Group work is dangerous. Bring friends. Here's a modest advance to show you that we're serious about these efforts. Remember, see Deetum Joss for jobs you can handle on your own, or Britta Salanus for jobs that require groups of heroes. You will be paid handsomely for every task you complete. That's right. The Legates don't want to leave these problems to fester, and someone has to organize things. Back in the days of the Longhouse Emperors, I took up a sword and handled things myself. Nowadays, I do the paperwork and recruit help. You know, the Reachman Emperors. They ruled the Empire for decades. Old Morakar kept mercenaries like me busy, but I suppose their days come and gone. I kept my job here because I knew where we kept the supplies, and... <laughs> hid some bodies. They're the ruling body of Leowin. When things fell apart in Cyrodiil, local officials stepped up. Although I wouldn't call Councillor Leviticus a local official. He used to sit on the Elder Council. Strange times we live in, eh?
Hear ye, card sharps and collectors. Test your wits and courage in a brand new Please, card game, Tales of Thank Tribute. You.
pet the dog. It's harmless. Oh, Tertia, you idiot. No wonder he hasn't... Is there something you want? I'd like to be left alone right now. Body? Ring? Oh, Riemann on high, what's this about? Aloysius wrote this? And he's dead? This makes no sense. Howling? Chicken coops? It, it was just a mangy mutt. I don't even think it was rabid, let alone... Oh no, Aloysius. You poor fool. He wasn't cursed. He was hallucinating. The toad that Argonian used to ease his pain must have been too strong for him. Aloysius convinced himself he was a werewolf, and he... He... This is the second worst proposal I've ever had. I was once kidnapped by a crazed Sulzon warlord and offered the heads of my neighbors as a dowry. I'd rather not talk about it. I've had more than a dozen failed engagements in my life. If anyone here is cursed, it's me. But it's not all bad news. Aloysius didn't run off and leave me like half the others. He even gave his life to protect me. I've never had anyone love me that much. <laughs> Is it wrong that makes me happy? Take this, for delivering my betrothed's last wishes. It was kind of you. I wonder if the Temple of Mara would marry us posthumously. It was his dying wish, after all. Maybe I should employ a priest of Arke for the ceremony, so he can pass on without regrets? Well, why not? I've had absolutely no luck with the living, and it's what he wanted. I'd rather die a widow than an old maid. It's not like this is how I dreamed of getting married, but after being jilted so many times, I may as well marry a man who can't change his mind. You may not get it, but for your sake, I hope you never have to. Pico, over here. Rockgrove begs for your aid. I open my claws in humility, Wanderer. Please, stay to hear my story. Have you heard of the Sulzon tribe? Vicious and unrelenting, they wander to the swamps, attacking any they find. Now, they've fallen upon my home in Rockgrove. A horde of those impure Limpthins raided the old city and seized the Zanmir. They captured so many of my kin, or returned them to darkness. Their purpose hides from us. But our stone talker claims he recognized their leader, Basse. With a stiff tail and bared abdomen, I beg for your aid. Please, gather a force of your strongest allies. 
Travel to Rock Grove and drive out the Sulzan. Defend what is left of my tribe, and they will surely reward you. My gratitude fills every pond in the marshes. Perhaps with your aid, what remains of my home can be salvaged. Rock Grove lies southeast of here, or you may take my cart. Speak to Immaka when you arrive. She can offer you the necessary guidance. We heard rumors of Sulzan crawling through the marsh, but thought perhaps they might spare us. Foolish. The attack was swift and ruthless. Our warriors held them off, while some escaped and rallied at the city entrance. Their goals hide among the worms they call friends. I know little of Sulzan desires, and had hoped never to learn. Stories drift to me about brutal sacrifices, bloodshed for the glory of chaos. But who can know the truth? One of our village guards, though now she may be our sole remaining defender. She protected us as we ran from the initial attack. After we found safe haven, she sent me to call for aid. Dust on scales, the sinew and veins of our tribe. He serves as conduit between the Hist and Rock Grove Zonmir. He knows a great deal about the old city's secrets. You should seek out his guidance.
Well, we can't wait any longer. We should begin the experiment. With no porters, no assistance. This endeavor's been a farce from the start, Revis. Now it's a doomed one. Well, here's a turn of luck. It's me, Revis. You helped me out of a scrape in Nysis some time back, remember? Quamamine, tonal resonator, uh, devoured bard, good times. Anyway, here we go again. You, me, and an experiment going poorly. House Telvani is funding a practical test of my latest invention, the Phantasmal Sensor. It exercises spirits, ghosts, and other spectral beings near instantaneously. The unquiet dead claim countless lives each season, but no longer. The porters and assistants I contracted with have been waylaid in Narsis, some manner of food poisoning. I'm desperate for an extra set of eyes and hands to help with labor and preparations. Nothing dangerous, I assure you. Oh, I'm so relieved you agreed to help. Before you arrived, I feared my overseers at House Telvani really might... <clears throat> no matter. Tiris and I already set up a small field laboratory in the ruined Veyond. Meet us inside and we'll get started. Uh, certainly. It's a wedding of Barrelzar's theories on the interactions of tonal and spectral forces with a resonance housing of my own design. Activating it should render any ghosts in proximity completely mute. A clever bit of engineering, I suppose. What? No, no, I'm extremely excited about it. My superiors in Telnaga called it a product of minor interest. Believe me when I say that's as robust an endorsement as I'm ever likely to earn. If the Telvani Council thinks it's worthwhile, so do I. Tiris is a junior Oathman of House Telvani. At this point in his education, he's obliged to accompany a spellwright like myself on a few field excursions. Sort of an apprenticeship. Honestly, in his case, it's just a formality. Tiris is an incredible talent, of the sort that only appears once in a generation. What's more, his family is extremely well-connected. He lives the Telvani Creed effortlessly. I wager he'll be Arch Magister one day. Really putting me on the spot, aren't you? There are aspects of Telvani culture I find abhorrent. The practice of slavery being chief among them. We do what we can. When the only alternative is exile, it's complicated. When you're on a mission to quiet down restless ghosts, you go where the restless ghosts are. Angry spirits pile up in these alien ruins like weevils in a hollow log. Feck only knows why. I've never taken much interest in alien history. In Morrowind? Huh. I wouldn't think of it. Silencing an ancestor is blasphemous, even if some of them deserve it. My Aunt Cernsey can't let a visitation go by without complaining about her urn. We know you wanted purple. Get over it already, right? Taking assistance from random passers-by. The Magisters of the House will most certainly have opinions on this.
Come to think of it, Revis, a crumbling ruin is an apt place for your final experiment with House Telvani. Finally, we can get started. There's a lot riding on this experiment's success. So yes, let's all stay focused and diligent, and also very, very careful. I need you to paint some stabilizing runes around the area to reinforce the sensor's magics. They're not all that elaborate, I promise, but do be mindful. I'm not leaving anything to chance this time. Here are the materials in a template. I infuse the paint with ground soul gems to reinforce the rune's potency. At great personal expense, I might add. Right, Tyrus? There's no price too high for success. Try not to use it all, all right? I have a few more calibrations to attend to. As for Tyrus, he'll probably, you know, observe. For educational purposes. You can speak with him if you have any other questions. Set guide you, my friend. Remember, precision is of the utmost importance, so no loafing or dawdling, you! Uh, I'm sorry. We're supposed to use harsh declaratives like that to motivate people. Are you...? Yeah, I can tell you're motivated. Great. That's great. The housing I created for the Phantasmal Sensor should contain the energies it releases well enough. I employed a fascinating helical boring technique invented by the dwarves of Arkingthand. I have all sorts of ideas for... Sorry. That can wait. Right, sorry. The runes provide a stabilizing aura to prevent any real spectacular tonal reactions or spectral anomalies. I triple-checked every aspect of the experiment, but a mage can never be too careful. Especially if that mage is me. Difficulties? Ha! <laughs> no. Uh, certainly not. I just place great emphasis on safety. Sure, there have been a few bumps along the way, but like the old wizards say, in the mountains of magical praxis, one never climbs in vain. Soul gem infused runes slathered on alien walls. The poor condition of the stone combined with imprecise template virtually guarantees a lack of efficacy. What is Revis, an amateur? What am I saying? Of course he is. Ah, finally, someone else makes an astute observation. Congratulations, you've just become the second smartest person in the room. The runes Revis wants painted will have, at most, a negligible impact. They're essentially just expensive vandalism. Ugh, don't be thick. I have nothing to learn from the likes of Revis Demnevani. This is a mere formality. When I ascend to the Council, I will make weeding out hedge mages like Revis my first priority. Oh, yes. Revis knows where he stands with the Telvani Council. On a precipice. And after today's nonsense, he will finally fall off.
fight? Good. Victory is cruel. Defeat is worse. Welcome back. The runes are in place, right? I'm anxious to begin the experiment. Excellent. By the three, can I just tell you how refreshing it is to hear a voice of support? Thank you. Now, the next step is a bit more complicated. I need you to assist me with a phantasmal sensor's kindling sequence. These magical pylons provide the key. Fair warning, they can be a bit unruly. But the fundamentals are sound. Spectral energy will pass between them freely, but sometimes the crystals dislodge. If that happens, I need you to reattune them. Just pay attention to the energies flowing between them. If no spectral motes pass through one of the pylons, you'll know that's the one that needs fixing. I should warn you, if you try to attune a functional pylon, you might feel a mild shock. It's nice to have a willing pair of hands to assist me. Tyrus seems well acquainted with instruments like these. He could make a real contribution if he wasn't so set on observing all the time. I wish I could convince him to help. Ah oh, well. Let's begin. Like I said before, pay careful attention to the flow of energy. Find the pylon that isn't properly attuned. Good. Now here comes the next sequence. Now the last sequence. Just a moment more and... What? Why isn't it... Good grief! Damn it all! I triple-checked the pylons last night. I field-tested the runes. I've read everything Baralzar's ever written aside from his fetching diary, and it still doesn't work. Still! Why won't it work? It needs to work! No. No! You follow my instructions to the letter, and I practically killed myself proving out the theories in my laboratory back home. Literally. My eyebrows only recently grew back. It can't just be bad luck. I must have missed something. Something in Veyond. Some arcane anomaly that disrupts the function of pylons. Of course, the ruin I choose to work in suffers from some heretofore unseen pylon scrambling hocus pocus. Just another day in the life of Revis Demnavani. Well, we need to find the source of the disturbance. Take Tyrus and explore the lower chambers. It shouldn't take him long to identify the culprit. Just make sure to keep him safe. If anything happens to him, my Kwama is well and truly cooked. Right. I'll stay here and inspect the instruments. Again. If I didn't find any flaws the first three times, I doubt I'll find any now. But who knows? Maybe Tyrus is right. Maybe this is just a huge waste of time. What do I think? What does that matter? The Telvani Council detests my work on Duematonal mechanics. They want nothing to do with my study of rare eggs. The Phantasmal Sensor is the only thing I've ever created that won their approval. Really that important? 
Well, of course it is. I'm a member of House Telvani for Vex's sake. If the Council drums me out, what would I do? Who would I share my theories with? No, once that door closes, it closes forever. It's unthinkable. Absolutely. Yes. Maybe. I don't know, but I have to try. Would I rather be poking around in a dwarven ruin? Unraveling the mysteries of tonal architecture? Yes, but no one ever said arcane practice always leads to excitement. Well, let's get this farce underway. Maps of Veyond didn't depict this tunnel. Vex head. Be on your guard. They made their choices, so be it. Trolls! Hideous savage beast! Keep that brute away from me! There, in the distance. More alien masonry. Finally, no more knocking around the dirt like some clumsy surprise farmer. The day is ours! Taste our skill! There's a strange aura on the other side of this door. Can you feel it? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you can't. Finally. Now then, these Vala stones are clouded. Some manner of arcane erosion. They must be the source of Revis's trouble. Destroying them in this state could generate an explosive burst of magicka. And draining their power is no small feat. Unless, of course, you happen to be me. Smash away, hero, and let's get out of this place. Tyrus, the interference. I think it may come from clouded... Vala stones? Indeed. The help and I already dealt with them. You're welcome. Oh, well, thank you. I... Wait, does anyone else feel that? Intruders? Get out! Get out! A spirit? Stand back, both of you. It's time for a true test of the phantasmal sensor. Uh, get it away from me! B back, you creature! I mean it! Uh, Wait, Tyrus! No! Ah! A 
Oblivion, take me, he's dead! Tyrus is dead! This is a catastrophe! What are we gonna do? I tried to use the Phantasmal Sensor to quiet that alien spectre, but Tyrus panicked and started to banish it with his own magic. His banishing spell mixed with the sensor's power and whoosh! Snuffed out like a candle! I'm doomed! Just vanished. Yeah, sure, just vanished. To the afterlife! This is classic Revis, you know. I'm a pox. I'll just need a moment to think about what I'm gonna tell the house about Tyrus and the sensor, wherever it flew off to. What is happening to me? Oh, Tyrus. Even now I can hear him in my mind, haunting me. I... I can't... Help me! Use the sensor! not gone after all. Please forgive me, Sarah. While I was wallowing in self-pity, you were out here trying to clean up my mess. And by the three, Tyrus still lives, or exists at any rate. What happened when you found him? Along with the clouded Vala stones. Interesting. The sensor might have prompted some kind of animus inversion. Uh, the specifics can wait. Whatever happened, he's still aware of his surroundings. He might be able to fix this. We? No, no, no. I've done enough damage. I'll come along, offer scholarly advice and such. But you're the only person I trust to see this through. The first step is finding Tyrus. His soul seems bound to the ruin and these stones. The clouded Vala stones are sort of thickening the magical fabric of this place. A soul like Tyrus's would cause ripples. Allow me to make a small modification to the sensor. There. If you use it now, it should illuminate Tyrus's path. I've proven beyond shadow of a doubt that I can't be trusted with that thing. For anyone who is not me, using the sensor is quite simple. Activate it, and a moat of spectral energy should coast toward Tyrus. Just follow the moat.
Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Best to focus on navigating the ruin. I seriously doubt that Bayon's shown us all its nasty surprises. and more clouded Vala stones. By the three, were the aliens selling them wholesale? Uh, I'll probably regret this, but I'll try to attune the stones. You push them out of position. Maybe that will set him free. No! Not enough! I know that did not look like a success, but I think I know what's happening. These clouded Vala stones. The aliens wouldn't have carved imperfect stones in this quantity by accident. There's intention here. They're meant to attract spectral energy like moths to a flame. That's why we keep finding Tyrus among them. Well, it doesn't just yet, but we're definitely on to something. The sensor can banish the stones, and my attunement spell can stabilize them long enough to dislodge them safely. We, uh, I mean you, are one step closer to fixing this. You? What do you do now? Keep tracking Tyrus. I'll try to puzzle out a way to use the sensor and attunement spell to restore Tyrus's corporeal form. We have to move quickly, though. If we don't reach him soon, critical animus decay might set in. That's because it is bad. Let's pick up the pace, all right? Easy. Over there, it's Tyrus. It's so close. I think I know what's going on. Tyrus is trying to resist the pull of the clouded Vala stones, but his strength is waning. Luckily, he's running into these smaller stone clusters, sort of like falling out of a tree and hitting all the branches on the way down. I'm wagering there is a greater load of this clouded glass somewhere in the ruin. A stockpile or something that dwarfs these other Vala stones in size, potency, or both. Tyrus should eventually find himself there. I can't imagine it will be pleasant, but with enough of the clouded glass in one place, 
we might be able to create a large enough resonance to restore Tyrus's corporeal form. You using the phantasmal sensor, and me using the attunement spell. I have to. Without my attunement spell, the sensor could banish Tyrus for good. I can't hide from this forever. I am a mage. Hapless and clumsy, perhaps, but a mage all the same. I owe it to Tyrus, to you, and to myself to try. This plan will work, right? Of course it will work. Just follow that moat. I am. It might be a bit morbid, but all this dashing around and puzzle solving, it's why I love being a wizard. I'd nearly forgotten that with Tyrus and House Telvanni pushing me around. We all have to follow our bliss, right? Mine's in old ruins. Mercy. Tyrus is fading faster. Quickly, just smash these stones and we'll hope for the best. There. Now, use the sensor. We have to find the central load. It's not a cluster of glass. It's an entire well. All right. Let's go over the plan. We were looking for a pile of clouded glass, and instead, we found a limitless font of unstable magicka. Shame we have to destroy it. But let's be honest. I would have found a way to accidentally destroy it before long. Are you ready to save Tyrus? First, we need to replicate the original event. Aim the phantasmal sensor at him and unleash its power. While you're doing that, I'll cast the attunement spell. Weaving the two together should dislodge his animus and restore his corporeal form. Much less confident than you'd like. If it's any consolation, most Magisters aren't certain of a hypothesis until they test it. Our test just happens to have the potential for 
cataclysmic results. Discharging spells and jangling magic senses in front of an unstable well could prove explosive, but nothing is certain. Magic is more art than science. At least that's what I tell myself in situations like this. Seven in ten? Give or take. You've faced worse odds before, though. Right? Come on, hero. Let's do some heroing. We did it! Tyrus, are you alright? Revis! I... I... I am alive. Oh, thank you. A.M.'s mercy, I thought I was dead. I never should have cast that. But the ghost was there and I just... just panicked. Oh, dear. Uh, there, there, Tyrus. Why don't we head back to camp, alright? Writing the Magister straight away, Revis. You will receive accolades aplenty. Oh, that's a uh, very generous, Tyrus. Thank you. Well, this is unexpected. I'd resolved to spend the rest of my life in exile, but now Tyrus is singing my praises. Do you think he hit his head or something? I guess anyone can have a change of heart when they have a brush with fate like this. Hopefully, Tyrus's testimonial will earn me some latitude with House Telvanni. Not enough to rise in rank, mind you, but enough to keep them off my back for a while. None of this would have been possible without you. Thank you, Sarah. This is unexpected. Hopefully, Tyrus... Safe travels, my friend. And if you ever find yourself in Nisus, feel free to drop by. As soon as I can, yes. The sensor was always a means to an end. Tyrus's letter should give me the boost I need to continue my real work. Rare eggs, dwarven machines, vegetable conjuring. All the bizarre obsessions that House Telvanni scorned. No, no. I'm far too clumsy to evade the Telvani Council's contempt for long. But we have to treasure the time we have, right? I'm sure I'll make some really worthy discoveries before they start nosing around in my work again. <laughs>
Let's hit the trail.
Cities are as alive, fickle, and uncertain as people. Some are good, some are bad. Some give you gifts, others rob you blind. Better not be any...
This one. Don't, um... I love cities. The rude people, the noise, the chaos. Is it strange that I find it comfortable?
So if that's north, that means... Wait, that's not right. Oh, more was mercy. A little help, anyone? Are you from around here? Sorry, I'm not familiar with Gideon and... Wait, are you here because of my flyers? Thank Rupka. Call me Sara. I'm here on a thrilling, inspirational journey. And I could really use a sturdy companion. I'm an author. Aspiring, really. I've penned a few romance novels, but they all lack... What's the word? Authenticity, yes. So, I resolved to get out into the world and find my muse. Now, here's the exciting part. I found it in Castle Gia Vess. Yes! Well, not exactly. A tragic affair played out there years ago, and love-struck spirits still haunt the castle. I acquired a magic lantern that allows me to speak to the ghosts. But, you know, ghosts. I need you to ward off the angrier spirits. Thank you for agreeing to accompany me. With your help, my next romance novel will be a masterpiece. Here, take the lantern. Now, fair warning, I've never actually used it, but I heard a ghostly woman wanders the city gardens. We can test it there. Well, I can tell you it's alien in origin. It's, you know, it's quite lovely, and it lets you talk to ghosts. Oh, that's easy. You just sort of jiggle it, or something. Look, I'm an impulse buyer, but I'm certain it will work. The orc I bought it from is a very reputable dealer. The ghost won't be able to resist its glow. You'll see. Yes. Well, I fancy myself one at any rate. My novels receive mixed reviews, but romance is a tough genre, you know? All those stuffy critics want his highbrow, elf in a parlor broods over losing his father's fortune type stuff. What a snooze. Because I'm a romantic, you silly. I mean, sure, I've never been in a really serious relationship, but let's be honest, tales of people settling into stable marriages and living happy, fulfilling lives don't sell. People want passion, danger. Oh yes, maybe too much. Castle Gia Vest has a long, tragic history. You've read Carlo Vock Townway's 2920 series, right? If not, you absolutely must. If I could write something half as satisfying, it would be a dream come true. Only the basics. My great-great-grandmother lived in Gideon for a time before immigrating back to Sentinel, and she brought back all kinds of stories, some joyful but most tragic. I just wish I could have met her before she passed to the far shores. Oh, you know, star-crossed lovers, murder, betrayal, that sort of thing. But like I said before, I'm done with those tired old cliches. I want facts. That's why we're going straight to the source. My great-great-grandmother may have embellished a bit. What storyteller doesn't? But every tale she told had some seed of truth to it. And after speaking to the people here in Gideon, I'm certain I'm onto something. You'll see. Just you wait. Did you hear about the battle at Fort Redmayne? The Black Finn Legion and the Ivory Brigade won the day. You made it! Thanks All to right, those mercenaries this is the place where Leo people see the spirit. Go on and try out the lantern. So, here we are. The city gardens. Now, I guess it's time to, uh... Time to rouse the spirit, eh? I'm ready. Are you ready? If you're not, we can wait a while. In fact, maybe we should come back tomorrow. Start fresh, you know? Nervous? <laughs> Just look at me. I'm steady as a leaf. Uh, st steady as a rock, I mean. Even so, I prefer that you be the one to use the lantern. It's these damn Red Guard taboos. Undead spirits and creatures really put us off our appetite. Yes, 
absolutely. No one ever said writing the world's greatest romance novel would be easy. Goosebumps or no, I'm going to unravel this tale and put it to good use. Now then, let's get on with it before I lose my nerve. Perhaps they're near that overturned slab? Who intrudes upon my grief? Giovas is lost. My son is lost. All that remains is sorrow. Tava's feathers! You, I was right! <laughs> you can see me? It matters little. The miseries of Castle Giovas bind me here. Bind all of us here. We are cursed. Our gardens wither. Our once great walls crumble. And my gentle son feels nothing but heartache. I am Duchess Estella of Castle Giovese. As for the curse, it is the work of a vile trollop named Elizinda. Arke scorn her soul. My darling boy, Mathen was infatuated with her. And how did she repay his affection? By murdering him in cold blood. I cannot bear to speak of it any more. My poor Mathen. I sense his presence sometimes. He's bound to the place where he died. An old cottage northeast of Giovess. Place where he and Elizinda twisted. Help him. Help my son succeed where his mother failed. It worked! I told you it would work! Tall Papa's breeches, what a tale! A ghostly duchess, lusty young nobles, betrayal and murder. This story's got it all. Whew. Is it getting hot out here or is it just me? Yes, tied to a cottage nearby. I can almost picture it. Rustic, secluded, tossel quilts, embers smoldering on the hearth. Gives me the prickles. Almost makes you forget someone likely died there. Something she said does trouble me a bit. The Duchess said the lover's name was Alizinda. That was my great-great-grandmother's name. It can't be a coincidence, can it? She lived in Gideon for a time before moving back to Alakir. Do you think... Do you think my ancestor murdered Mathen? This is the cottage the Duchess mentioned, I think. Not all that romantic, is it? Let's look around. Nothing but creaky floorboards and old weeds for me. I knew I should have brought my spectacles. What did you find? 
May I? Her anguish just jumps off the page, doesn't it? So, Mathen intended to marry someone else and Alazinda killed him in a fit of passion. Can you imagine loving someone so deeply that you end up murdering them? Gods, that's romantic. Sort of. It's a ring of Mara, the sort of ring used in a pledge of marriage. Mathen might have intended to give it to this mysterious fiancé or... I'll hang on to the ring. Let's use the lantern. Maybe Mathen can shed some light on this. Alicinda, my love. Is it you? So this is Mathen? Gracious! Grandmother Alicinda clearly knew how to pick them. This light. It offers some respite from my sorrows. You have my thanks. I am Mathen Galanus, heir to the Duchy of Geoves. What brings you to this place? Curse? Is heartache not curse enough? My great love, Alizinda, poisoned me on the very night I meant to propose to her. Someone deceived her. Told her I meant to marry another. She killed me, yes. But it was an act of jealous grief, not a witchcraft. I... I do not know. I've learned that certain objects hold a grip on the soul. Things we treasured in life. In my darkest moments, I sometimes feel drawn to the chapel where they laid my body to rest. I see harsh light glinting off my golden armor. Maybe. These long, gray years make it difficult to think. Seek out the chapel. You will find it to the west, amidst the ruins of the castle. If my armor keeps me in this sorry state, I beg you to find it. Without love, there is nothing for me here. Forgive my impertinence, but you are the very image of my lost love, Alizinda. How could this be? Oh my goodness. I, um, I, I believe I'm her descendant, brave Sir Duke, uh, Baron, whatever. My name's Yasara, by the way. What were we talking about again? You share her spirit, Lady Yasara. At last, fate grants me a kindness. We must help him! That poor soul! I'll catch up to you at the chapel, alright? I need to jot down some notes.
No remorse! Ah! Don't think. Move! Sheath your weapons. The battle is won. Not a scrap of golden armor in sight. Let's have a look around. Leave me alone. Just leave me alone. What's that you've got there? Not a golden helm by any chance. A magical incantation. The handwriting is different from Alizinda's journal. That means she can't be responsible for the curse. I knew my ancestor wasn't a sorceress. A murderer, maybe, but not a sorceress. Of course, this all begs the question. Yes, and more importantly, why? The person who cast the spell clearly had an axe to grind. Maybe it was a court wizard or some jilted witch. My novel's less romance and mystery at this point. Let's use the lantern again. Maybe the culprit's here. What are you doing here? Why aren't you caring for my boy? Did you find my dear Mappin? Can't I trust you to locate a simple cottage? How is that possible? It had to be Elizinda. When Mappin died, the Duchy's light died with him. That Red Guard wench cast us into darkness. If I could just have brought him back, I could have... Yes, Harke, forgive me. I wept over his body in this very chapel for three days without sleep or nourishment. My grief was ocean deep. He was my only boy. And so I cast a simple spell. I tried to draw him back with promises of glory. I failed. I cast the spell over his armor and sword, but it went awry. I wrote everything down. You can find my notes in my private study beneath the eastern wall. If you find his helm, breastplate, and shield too, you might be able to set things right. Necromancy? How could she? You. Oh, I see you well enough, Red Guard. You think I don't notice the family resemblance? You stay away from my boy! Tava's feathers! Bit touchy, isn't she? Let's make our way to this private study. Carefully. Thank <laughs> you. 
own mother toying with dark magic in this very room. What a plot twist. You found something. You found Duchess Estella's notes that quickly? Think Rooped Guy can rely on your eyes. Can barely see a thing in this place. What do they say? Really? Oh, I think I spotted some on the way across the castle grounds. I knew that herbalism workshop would come in handy someday. If we do manage to find the armor, be careful pulling it out of the tangle. Heart's Bane's quite deadly. I saw a clump of Heart's Bane on the way here. Come on! This way, I think. There! That's Heart's Bane, right? You found his helm? We're off to a great start. Unless... Sorry, sorry. I feel like we've assembled most of the clues to this mystery, but I just can't shake the feeling that we're missing something here. Well, Duchess Estella got them into the situation, right? She cast the ugly spell that cursed poor Mathin, and now we're gathering up the items she used to make this mistake in the first place? It can't be that simple. What are we missing? Maybe, maybe not. She wasn't a professional necromancer. Maybe she missed something too. Remember what Mathin told us? Certain objects take hold of the soul. If that's the case, isn't it odd that we found him in the cottage instead of the chapel? Only one way to find out. Let's use the lantern again. I'm still carrying the ring. If he followed us here, maybe we're on to something. Lady Isara. Not expected to see you again. Why do you summon me? Where are we? It's been so long since I walked the grounds of the castle, I scarcely recognize it. Whatever the place, it is good to speak to someone again. And to see the fair image of my lost love. Spell? Some ill-conceived plot to resurrect me, I presume. Mother never could suppress her passion for the occult. Now we both pay the price. But even so, I feel something else now. Some other force that nags at my soul. Something fairer. Softer. My ring of Mara? I had not thought to see it again. I see it clearly now, though. At rest near the heart of the fair Lady Yasara. The course is clear, friend. Gather my armor and rid me of the curse. In the meantime, I will bask in Yasara's glow. Lady Yasara. Bear not only Elizinda's ring, but her spirit as well. Had I a heart, it would pound like a drum at the sight of you. I, uh, thank you, Mathin. I'm sorry for what happened to you. My friend and I will fix it, I promise. Having you beside me is all I need. Come, let me sweep you away. 
Find my armor and break the curse. Your friend will be safe with me in the meantime. Oh my! What is... What just happened? Oh. Mathen! What did you do? That's it. Are you hurt? The day will be ours!
Intruders everywhere! Damn it, why can't I remember? Attack! You summon me again? Did you find the armor? There's psychic energy here. No. Where is your lecherous friend? Just like her ancestor, ensnaring her betters, meddling in family affairs. Huh. Mathen should be thanking me for sparing him the pain. Mathen truly meant to marry Elizinda, a woman with no pedigree, no means, and no great talent. She was a no one. I couldn't bear the idea of him throwing his future, and that of our duchy, away over some childish romance. So I spread a rumor. I only meant to split them apart. It was for his own good. Oh, typical of low-bred paupers, she overreacted. Mathen died by her hand, not mine. <laughs> None of this matters. What matters is breaking the curse. I need one last object. The Sword of Giovess. It is in the mausoleum, beneath the Great Bridge, guarded by Calvis Vannon, first Duke of Giovess. Retrieve the sword and bring everything you found to Tavia's tower. If all goes as it should, we can reverse the spell and set both of us free. I don't want that woman lingering near my son any more than you do. Find the sword and bring it to the tower.
my darling boy. We can finally end this curse. And now I part with the Lady Yasara as well? Is there nothing you won't take from me? Place the regalia, adventurer. It is well past time we left. Farewell, dear lady. I wish we had more time. I am sorry for absconding with dear Lady Yasara. I found myself conflicted, torn between two intentions. One in the cursed armor, and another in the Ring of Mara. You sundered Mother's curse, but it seems my soul remains tied to the Ring. Trapped, perhaps. The foul burden of necromancy no longer weighs me down. But my connection to the ring is no less intense. It's passionate. Fiery. It's like all my unfulfilled dreams and desires remain bound to that band. And to Lady Yasara. Perhaps part of me still yearns for the warmth of Aetherius. But now, as I behold the beautiful Lady Yasara, I'm given pause. She is so like my beloved Alicinda, with a heart as warm as the sands she walked as a child. I must speak with her. Lady Yasara, light of my afterlife, that ring you carry is the key to my heart. I leave my fate in your hands. My hands? Methan, what are you saying? If you choose to wear the ring, I will remain by your side, an attentive and loving guardian. Are you serious? Tall Papa, preserve me. Destroy the ring, and I will pass to Aetherius. The choice, my lady, is yours. Did I just get a proposal from a ghost? Up until now, the only man who ever wooed me was a stable hand in Bergama. I know I should recoil at this. It's profane, blasphemous, right? But gods, he's cute. And the way he speaks, it's like a dream. Ugh! How could he lay something like this at my feet? I can barely decide which boots to wear most days. When he abducted, I mean, swept me away, he told me his heart was torn to pieces. He said I was the only balm. He said I was his second chance. I don't know. Aside from the whole ghostly murder victim thing, this is what my heart always yearned for. It's why I write romance novels. The thought that I could bring him love and joy is intoxicating. Still, he deserves peace and rest, right? I want you to stay, Mathen. I really do. But it wouldn't be fair to you or Alizinda. Our friend will destroy the ring. I understand. Yours is a loving heart, Yasara. I pray you find someone worthy to share it with. Goodbye, Mathen. Oh, isn't this always the way? You find the man of your dreams, but it turns out he's the lost soul of a man your ancestor poisoned in a fit of passion 200 years ago. Just my luck. You're right, of course. I'm desperate for some grand romance, but it's no more real than my stories if I act selfishly. Ugh. Let's focus on the good things, right? A curse broken, a writer inspired, and it's all you're doing. Thank you, my friend. Gods, he was gorgeous. I'll find someone, eventually. But I doubt they'll have a chest like that. 
Are you joking? Of course I'm going to write about this. Tragedy, lies, murder, necromancy, intrigue, true love. This will be a bestseller, guaranteed. More importantly, it will help me remember Mathen. <laughs> no, I have crown blood on my mother's side. The idea that a beloved ancestor who accomplished so much in Sentinel played a role in some salacious and deadly affair, it would not go over well at all. Better to keep that to myself. I did. At least, I think I did. I've never been one of those women who thinks about marriage and children. That's why I have my novels, right? To revel in the fun part of love. The only part I've ever really been interested in. Maybe. I guess we'll never find out, will we? One thing's for sure, love is much more complicated than I ever gave it credit for. That shouldn't really come as a surprise to someone who writes about it professionally, but here we are. <laughs> no, I have crown blood on my mother's side. The idea that a beloved ancestor who accomplished so much in Sentinel played a role in some salacious and deadly affair, it would not go over well at all. Better to keep that to myself. Oblivion, take you! Experience the thaumaturgical prowess of a master!
claw that spills the jub bile must be the one to sop it, dry skin. Heed the words and tend to this matter. Riddles? Really? Not helpful, priest. Not helpful at all. A familiar face. Thank the stars. I seem to remember you providing assistance the last time Stibbins made a mess of things. Or was it the time before? No matter. You're here now, and I am more than willing to compensate you for your time. Ah, oh, the kind my manservant Stibbins excels at, I assure you. I was studying the local Zanmir, and once again assumed that Stibbins would prove to be at least somewhat helpful. Instead, the clumsy oaf managed to break an ancient Argonian relic. The kind that comes with a terrible curse, and has the locals all in a tither. Niswo Somars is very cross with me. She insists I return to the Zanmir and set things right. And Stibbins isn't any help. Not in his current state. Will you assist me? Removing curses is never an easy endeavor. And with Stibbins in his current state, well, you should see for yourself. The priest graciously provided a hut where I could store the results of my manservant's latest debacle. We can start there. I hardly have the words to do it justice. The hut isn't far away. Meet me there and you can see for yourself what a terrible mess my manservant has made of things this time. As an adventurer and treasure hunter, ancient structures such as this are my bread and butter. These Argonian pyramids exist as historical curiosities, a glimpse into a long-ago age. All reports indicated that this location was safe and intact. Most assuredly, safe means few dangers to deal with, and intact... Well, intact... What exactly are you implying, hmm? The fact that we share a certain degree of familiarity doesn't give you cause to be rude. Still, I see your point. Let's just say that where Stibbins is concerned, every day includes a modicum of trouble. So much to do. Laura. To think, I only had a single Stibbins to deal with when the day began. Oh, you see what I'm dealing with? How can I return to the Zanmir and set things right when I have my hands full simply keeping all these Stibbinses under control? No, that would be ridiculous. My Stibbins, the real Stibbins, is still mucking about in the Zanmir. That's where I left him after he triggered this curse. I went to get help when one of these duplicates followed me to the shrine. Obviously. They just keep coming from the Zanmir. It's some sort of side effect of the curse. The priest of the shrine insists that an outsider caused this, so an outsider needs to fix it. Now we... Oh, bother!
There were seven Stibbinses last time I checked, but now there are only six. One of the duplicates is missing. They don't listen any better than the real Stibbins. Will you find it and bring it back here? I'll try to keep the rest contained. Thankfully, these duplicates lack even Stibbins' pitiful amount of drive and coordination. It shouldn't have wandered very far. Uh, once you find it, you need to induce it to return. Uh, try mentioning my name. They seem attracted to me for some odd reason. Don't we all? I'll tell you what I can, but much of what's happening is a mystery to me as well. Probably because I haven't had my afternoon tea yet. Stupid manservant. I'm only certain about what they are not. They aren't illusions, and they aren't exact copies of Stibbins. They could be constructs of some kind. They don't eat, drink, or sleep. But a construct of Stibbins? And a poor copy at that. <laughs> Whatever for. I have no special insight into the minds of these things. About the only thing they seem the least bit interested in is... Well, me. <laughs> and no, I have absolutely no idea why that may be. Please. I'm sure Stibbins is just dithering about somewhere in the Zonmere without a care in the world. Any excuse to get out of a day's work. <laughs> he is by far the laziest, most infuriating manservant in all of Tamriel. So far, there are the six you see here, and the one I need you to locate. Each of these emerged from the Zonmir after an interval of time. I expect that if we do nothing, more will appear. <laughs> but trust me, one Stibbins is more than enough. Hello, what's this?
find anything? And you see I'm busy. Moran! Must... Must... Must find... Master... Master... Must... Be... Free... Attack! you Stibbinses. Attention! Yes, Laura. Oh, 
Clarice, what hardships you must endure. Finally, one Stibbins is bad enough, but a gaggle of them? It's like trying to herd cats. But where's the duplicate that slipped away? Did you find it? Goo? That makes no sense. Are you quite certain? No matter. I've had enough of this nonsense. I managed to get these duplicates under a modicum of control, but they seem to be rejecting my commands. Like some outside force has agitated them. A master? Other than me? That's it! Whatever curse Stibbins contracted, whatever these duplicates are, and whoever this master is, they have raised the ire of Lady Clarice Laurent. Come on, we're going. Back to the shrine. Niswo Samars knows more about this than she's let on. If she won't talk to me in anything other than riddles and proverbs, maybe she'll talk to you. We need to make her tell us how to fix this. Just so we're clear, I need you to talk to the priest. She's become rather cross with me and refuses to tell me anything of substance. Let's see if you have better luck with her than I did. They'll be fine. How much trouble can six Stibbinses get into? Unless they start exploding too. But that's a chance we'll have to take. Now, come on. If we don't break the curse, gods only know how many more duplicates I'll have to deal with. We're off! Stibbins is! Stay here! Understand? Stay! Yes, Soran! Stibbo, stay! I'm rather busy right now. Look here! A stranger's loss might be our gain. Again, dry skin, the claw that spills the jub bile. Save the platitudes and talk to my associate priest. Hmm, very well. She may have more hair than scales, but the dry skin is clever. You have not violated any of our customs, so we are not bound by strictures with you. We may talk of the Zanmir and the curse that has befallen the shiny headed, scaleless one. The legends say that a dry skin sorcerer entered the Zanmir long ago, when my people were foolish enough to live in such places. He sought a path to immortality. He unleashed dark magic that seeped into the swamp and nearly destroyed all life. The shamans of the region banded together. They managed to seal the sorcerer away, deep in the Zanmir. But then this dry skin and her shiny-headed slave arrived. They damaged the seal. Now the sorcerer seeks to completely break it and escape. The shiny-headed one is the sorcerer's prisoner. He serves as the template for the sorcerer to make more servants. Servants that will stop at nothing to break the seal. Curiously, the long-haired dry skin seems to distract them from their duty. You and the long-haired dry skin must set things right. I do not know how, for we have no interest in the place of stone. You and the long hair must figure this out. Go quickly, and know that, succeed or fail, Sithis will have us all in time. Legends say the sorcerer came from a distant land, that he enjoyed poking at roots that are better left buried. Beyond that, we have done our best to forget him. The secrets that he sought are dangerous, both for those with scales and those without. There are many of them, are there not? Let the duplicates fend for each other, while you and the Longhair return the Zonmir to how it was before she arrived. From what I have seen, I expect you will run into more of the duplicates once inside. 
Legends say the sorcerer came from a distant land, that he enjoyed poking at roots that are better left buried. Beyond that, we have done our best to forget him. The secrets that he sought are dangerous, both for those with scales and those without. With the seal in place, the Zonmir was just an empty pile of stone. Now that a portion of the sorcerer's power is free, I fear his malign influence has corrupted the once vacant halls. I suggest you be on your guard and ready to defend yourself. A sorcerer? Now that's something I can work with. I'll meet you in the Zonmir. If you insist on following me, then step lively, Stibbenses. Oh, I told those duplicates to wait in the hut, but did they listen? And that door back there, it was open when we came through the first time. The broken seal lies in that direction. I suppose it's good the duplicates followed after me. The duplicates are the key, as it were. I did a thorough study of this hall. One of the side alcoves contains a floor plate. A switch, I believe. When the doors were open, the switch wasn't important. Now that the defenses have been engaged... Oh, I'm certain of it. Just get a duplicate to stand on the floor plate, and the doors will swing open. A confident command should be enough to get a duplicate to obey you. Just keep the command simple. Tell them to follow you, or wait. Yes, they activated as soon as the seal was broken. Though whether they're the Zodmiers or the Sorcerers, I have yet to determine. Oh, and be aware that the duplicates are afraid of water. You'll need to figure out how to entice them across. Have you seen the prank the locals play on one another? They get a friend to stand within a circle of flowers, then they kick a nearby vine tongue. The vine tongue reflexively grabs anything inside the circle. Perhaps we can use that here. Command a duplicate to wait in that nearby circle of flowers by the water's edge. Then go and give that vine tongue across the way a good swift kick. With any luck, the vine tongue will reach out and drag the duplicate to the other side. And people wonder why I consider myself the smartest person in the room. Once across, command the duplicate to follow you to the floor plate, the one with the blue fire. Then tell him to wait there. Once he's on the plate, the door should open. Here comes Divo. Oh, I'm waiting. Ah! Stipple, follow. Stibbo, stand here. Oh, wait for Stibbo.
must give a weight. Well, that did something, but not what I was hoping for. Nothing is ever simple when it comes to stibbons. Why should I have expected anything different from these pale imitations? Even if the floor plate didn't open the main door, it does seem to have unlocked something. Look how the blue fire blazes! This switch unlocked the door closest to it. I need you to proceed into that section of the Zonmere and find the floor plate that opens the main passage. While you seek the switch that unlocks the main door, I'll study these carvings. I recognize the iconography. If I can translate it, maybe we can learn more about the sorcerer and the curse we're facing. Then take a duplicate with you, just in case. I have more than enough to spare, and you'll need one if you come across another floor switch. Just look for the blue fire. Otherwise, don't be concerned for my safety. Years of adventuring have honed my skills to a razor's edge. Stibbo, I'm coming! Here. Stibbo, stay close. Oh, wait for Stibbo. I am not afraid of you. So be it. Who dares walk the halls of the sorcerer Rectavius? Stibbo, no follow. Ha! Stibbo, stay close. You seek to stop my escape. Fool! You shall serve alongside the one who calls himself Stibbons. Stop 
for choosing to remain still. Stibbo, I'm waiting. Here comes Stibbo. No follow. Courage brings victory. Follow. Stibbo, here. Stibbo, I'm coming. Stibbo, stand here. Wait for Stippo. Whatever you did in the south wing didn't unlock the main doors, but it did open the door to the north wing. I suppose I'll have to send you and the duplicates there next. Whatever you did in the south wing caused the ancient mechanisms in this Zonmir to stir, but instead of unlocking the main doors, I heard the definite click of a lock sliding open by the door to the north wing. Did you find anything else in there?
A sorcerer Rectavius? Yes, that's the name mentioned in the carvings. Actually, the entire tale is quite fascinating, if I'm understanding it correctly. The ancient gel language is nearly impossible for anyone who isn't Argodian to comprehend. Only a rough translation, mind you. To cheat death, the sorcerer transferred his mind into... Well, the literal translation is death mud. What we who know such things call a voroplasm. Not how I would choose to spend eternity, but I detest goo. Unclear. When all else fails, I err on the side of excessive violence. I still have a section of the carving to translate, however, and I want to figure out what this Rectavius wants with Stibbons. In the meantime, I have another task for you. Enter the now accessible North Wing and look for more floor plates. One of them must open the main doors. And take the remaining duplicates with you. Goodness knows Stibbons excels at standing in one place. Is it any wonder the duplicates do too? Such as? We know he's talented. It takes a great deal of magicka applied with precision to transfer one's essence into an alien form. He's also quite insane. What's the point of living forever if you're nothing but a ball of ooze? Here Stibble comes Stibble. Stibble. Our steel. Here. Water for Stibbo. Stibbo, wait. Stibbo, stay close. Stibbo, stand here. Stibbo, no follow.
Dibbo, follow. Stibbo, I'm waiting. I'm coming. Stibbo, stay close. Still, you persist, and you use my own puppets against me. Such audacity will not go unpunished. Wait Stibble, for Stibble. I'm coming. What are you doing? Stop it right now, and perhaps I'll let you live. Oh, wait Here for Stibble. Stibble. Stibbo, stand here. Stibbo, hate wet. Ah! Stibbo, wait. Stibbo, follow. Stibbo, stay close. Stibbo, I'm waiting. Stibbo, follow.
Stibo, no follow. Stibo, I'm coming. Stibo, stand here. Here comes Stibo. Got it! Stibo, wait! Stibo, stay close! Stibo, stay here. Wait for Stibo. No follow. Oh, there you are. We need to talk. Whatever you and the duplicates did, it worked. The main doors unlocked with an audible click. Before we rush in and attempt to deal with the sorcerer, we should discuss our options. I discovered something unsettling in the ancient carvings. According to my very rough translation, we can't simply repair the seal and lock away the sorcerer again. The Argonians employed ancient rituals that I know nothing about. I doubt the local priest knows them either. This all happened so long ago. I only see one option. We're going to need to slay the sorcerer, or destroy the blob of goo he occupies. And I'd like to accomplish that without killing my manservant. Hmm. That reminds me. I think I understand the purpose of the duplicates now. It's ingenious. As a ball of slime, the sorcerer can't break the seal or free himself. 
The Argonians made sure you needed hands for that. So he grabbed Stibbons and used him as a model for his mindless servants. Instant hands, as it were. We need to get Stibbons away from Rectavius and cut off the source of the duplicates. Then we need to destroy the voroplasm that contains the sorcerer's essence. That should break the curse. I expect we'll find them both beyond the main doors. Based on the information contained in the carvings and some logical assumptions, I believe the sorcerer needs hands to finish breaking the seal. Hands he gave up when he opted for gooey immortality. The Stibbons duplicates fill that purpose. Hmm. Interesting question. We've seen that most of the duplicates swarmed around me for some unimaginable reason. And you ran into a few corrupted versions. It appears that no matter what form Stibbons takes, he never quite seems to get the job done. How revolting. We must be getting closer to the sorcerer's lair. So much muck! Stibbon's first task upon rescue will be a deep scrub of my boots. on that door. There's Stibbins! Inside that... thing! The Sorcerer's Shield! We need to destroy it! That weakened the shield! Keep at it! There while I keep the voroplasm in place. No! It cannot end like this! Stick! Tell me you're unharmed. Not here. Let's return to the first hall. As you say, milady. My lady, I, I must apologize. I seem to have mucked everything up again. Yes, but I've grown accustomed to your antics. Besides, I had a very capable assistant.
Well, that was an unusual adventure. Puts things in perspective. After all, nothing drives home the realization that one manservant is more than enough, like an abundance of stipends. <sighs> I shudder to think about all that goo, though. I would say so. Of course, it will take time before the sorcerer's magic fully dissipates. And I'm no expert on voroplasms. I suppose he could pull himself back together, eventually. Here, take this. I insist. Unlike Stibbins, you earned it. Well done, Lady Laurent. I sense the curse has been broken. Even now, I feel the last vestiges of the sorcerer slipping away. Except for what remains in the shiny-headed one, of course. What? That's ridiculous. I'm fine. My lady safely extracted me from the... blob of sorcerer. The sorcerer's goo lingers, like nose slime on a hatchling's claw. Ah, oh, goo! Shoo shoo! Stibbins, I won't tolerate muck in my manor house. Something wonderful about wandering a city's streets with no destination. I don't have to go, you know. I can help clean things up around here. I know how to keep a low profile. This isn't up for debate. You're going. Hear ye, card sharps and collectors. Test your wits and courage in a brand new card game. Tales of
House Halalu maintains this fine financial institution. Your gold and precious goods won't find a safer home anywhere in Tamriel. I give you my word on that. Right here. Robbery and Got what you need.
Wayfair. If you seek to enter this vault, I have a request. Several, in fact. I know how tiresome the pleas of strangers can be, and I have a low opinion of charity work. I offer good pay for a dire situation. Interested in aiding the Fighters Guild? You've seen these vaults, yes? We call them Doom Vaults. There's some artifice of the Flame Father, Mehrunes Dagon. Our Hull Steward bid my comrade, Morgane, and I explore this one. We expected to face cultists. What we found was a war. A host of scuttling Mephala spawn invaded the vault. I don't know how, but I do know why. They seek to take something from Dagon, a blasphemous device. We can't let either faction possess it, whatever it is. So, we destroy it. Will you help? Thank you, Wayfarer. I would fight at your side, but I fear one of those beasts poisoned me. I would only get in the way. My ally, Morgane, carried a Sending Stone. If you can find her body, we can use the stone to communicate. Onsi guide you. Hmm. It will take more than the prick of a spider kith's blade to fell Kud Af Hadaja. Once this work is done, I'll seek out a healer in Gideon. But not before. Very little. It's a weapon, maybe? Or a device for summoning Daedric beasts? We heard spider kith whispering about it. About how powerful it is and how it might aid Mephala in future schemes. They mentioned taking it back to the Skane in pieces. I don't think so. We found strange tools littered about. The kind of thing you'd find near a building site. Once you get inside, we can get a better sense of what exactly is going on, and how far they've gotten. It's difficult to explain. Morgane and I expected to find Daedric halls and chambers, but there's much more. Vast caverns that look like they were pulled from Tamriel itself. And... I can't say for certain, but I think we entered another realm. Yes, a canyon of fire and stone. If I didn't know any better, I'd say we entered the realm of Dagon himself. 
This Doom Vault is... It's a place between places. I can't explain it. You'll see what I mean when you go inside. Killed by Daedra. We tried to learn all we could about the device, but traveled too far into the vault. A spider Daedra discovered us as we tried to escape. I smashed the beast's head in, but not before a horde of spiders sucked Morgane bone dry. Yes, and that's what we call them, anyway. They're magic trinkets that let us speak at a distance. We found a pair of them in an Aldmer crypt back on Somerset Isle. I don't much care for magic, personally, but these stones are too useful to pass up. Like I said, I'm no mage, but if you grip one of the stones in your palm, you can see the person who holds the other. What's more, you can see what's around them. If you find Morgane's stone, I can help you investigate the vault. There you are. I'm glad you managed to make that stone work. Search the vault for any sign of this machine. If you find anything, use the stone to contact me. Onsi guide you, comrade. deeper in the ruins. You've picked up the trail for sure. Keep looking.
Dagon beasts dragged something out of here in a hurry. Keep going. The machine must be nearby. Olivian, take you! Kind of profane forge? No. I can't let them finish building this thing. Hurry! Ah! <laughs> 
Welcome back, comrade. Did you... Did you destroy the machine? Good. Good. I couldn't leave until I knew. You did well, comrade. Better than Morgane and I, at any rate. You would have liked her, I think. <laughs> Here's your pay. The Fighters Guild and all of Blackwood, thank you for your efforts. I think I'll just sit here for a bit longer. I'd say we earned a sit-down. Hey, comrade? I'm fine, Wayfarer. Fine. Just a little winded is all. I'll make my way to Gideon soon. Hmm. Yes, I'm sure. Take care of yourself, comrade. And if anyone asks you what happened here, you tell them that Morgane and Kud Af Hadaja did their duty. Do that for me, all right? I couldn't say. Dagon wants to kill us all, right? Grandi Bramia used to... <clears throat> used to tell me stories about great red siegecraft dragged by giants with lava for blood. Never thought Mafala had an interest in conquest. <laughs> but who knows? Huh. No one ever makes just one of anything. I hope this was the last of these machines, but you... <clears throat> You need to keep your eyes fixed on this. Don't forget what you saw in there. Morgane and I are... were new to Blackwood. This was the only one we encountered. But people in Leowen insisted there are more. Some craft of the Longhouse Emperors. If more exist, I hope you do the same to them.
uncertainty, fear, death. The will of Sithis cannot be ignored. You look quite capable. Might I be able to recruit you to help me? This place was once an honorable tomb for fallen members of the Dark Brotherhood. But now it houses a perversion of death. The cycle, which devours all, has been corrupted here. I belong to the clutch of Niswo. I came to this place to perform last rites for three well-respected shadow scales entombed here. But I was chased out by a necromancer called Tuma Mazath, who seeks to disturb their remains for selfish purposes. Yes, when I arrived here, he had already raised many shadow scale bodies to fight for him. In order to spare the three I came to perform last rites upon from this fate, I must destroy their skeletons. Will you help? I can pay you for your services. The remains of these renowned shadow scales deserve the peaceful emptiness of the void. Destruction must pass before creation and change can begin anew. Hurry. We must find the remains inside the cave and destroy them. While it is true that the souls of these shadow scales returned to the Hist long ago, their remains still deserve peace. Their bones need not become puppets to a madman drunk on power. Burning them is the only way to prevent that. They were closer to Sithis than most, each powerful in their own right, buried here to honor their path and life. Which is why I came here to begin with. But when Tuma Mazath disinterred them for his own gain, he dishonored their remains. We have also been called Nothing Speakers. We are a fellowship that honors Sithis and the truths of the Void. We all speak different words, but our purpose follows those lessons. One must first apprentice under a mentor, before joining our ranks. Each Niswo is different. I choose to honor Sithis by ensuring that the unavoidable truths, such as fear, death, darkness, and change, are not compromised. While it is true that the souls of these shadow scales returned to the Hist long ago, their remains still deserve peace. Their bones need not become puppets to a madman drunk on power. Burning them is the only way to prevent that. They were closer to Sithis than most, each powerful in their own right, buried here to honor their path and life. Which is why I came here to begin with. But when Tuma Mazath disinterred them for his own gain... Time is a force of change. We should hurry. Tuma Mazath already uncovered the remains. Quickly, destroy them. The peace of destruction. Oh! 
Sheath your weapons. The battle is won. find the emptiness of the void. No remorse! That's it. Are you hurt? This shadow scale is missing. I think I know why. That is created must eventually be destroyed and then renewed. The cycle is unbroken.
successfully destroyed almost all of the remains, but the shadow scale with the missing skull is cause for concern. I believe those remains once belonged to Ajum Shay. A shadow scale who was said to have plucked out his own eye and sealed a powerful necromantic gem within the socket. It granted him the power to see lost spirits. Tuma Mazath must have taken it in order to conduct his ritual. If I am correct, we must locate Tuma Mazath's ritual site. If he used the skull and the gem inside to power his ritual, it should be nearby. We must make sure to destroy the skull and finish our work. Let us hurry before the chance is lost. I am not certain, but I believe Tuma Mazath either knew about the gem previously, or sensed its power when he unearthed Ajam Shay's remains. The necromantic properties of such a gem would likely be a great strengthening agent to any ritual. A ritual of this magnitude would take time to prepare. Tuma Mazath would need to find a place to ready the necessary components and use the skull as a focal point. Should we find the ritual site, the skull will most certainly be there. Be ours!
The Shadow Scales remains are destroyed, and we are triumphant. Thank you, Valiant Traveler. I could not have finished this task without your help. Indeed, your actions ensured those remains can no longer be exploited. I am sure were their spirits still present, they would thank you for your efforts. Allow me to extend a more tangible gratitude. Here, before we part, allow me to offer you some wisdom. Remember, as you journey through life, all things must pass in order to begin again. Knowing this simple fact eases pain and suffering. Learn to let go, and what was lost will be reborn. I will carry on, as is my purpose as a Niswo. I cannot say for sure where this responsibility will take me next, but change is the only thing that is guaranteed. Whatever path I walk next will be different from the one I walk now. And to you as well. I cannot say where my responsibilities will take me, but I do hope that one day they bring me to you again. It has been a great pleasure. Sithis the Changer is honored today, and the cycle continues.
I admit it's quite a story, but I know the difference between a tall tale and a large problem. I'll help however I can. I shudder to think what your elven circus would consider far-fetched. I'm not so sure I believe it myself. Greetings, traveler. If you've come to witness the marvels and mysteries of our troupe, I hope you haven't traveled far. Our performance is postponed indefinitely. On account of drama, ironically enough. There's a more sinister mischief in Farmer's Nook than the sort the House of Reveries trades in. Uh, I hear of townsfolk disappearing, only to turn up and act oddly. We only set camp recently, but the locals fear we've somehow caused their plight. None. That farmer, Hesef, said his sister was among the afflicted, and she died recently. At least he thought she died, but she left no corpse. I must clear the troop's name. With the locals wary as they are, though, I need help. And I can pay. Hesef mentioned that two of his neighbors also had loved ones vanish, Braden DeVoe and Jahuz. Speak with them. They may be more open with a less grandiose traveler. You might also speak with Hesef directly, if you wish. Any other day, I'd claim to be the lost princess of Piandania and regale you with tales of my exploits, but now's not the time for such frivolities. My fellows and I are entertainers from the House of Reveries, here to perform across all of Tamriel. I've been greatly disappointed with how often I've gotten that question since we departed from Somerset. There's not a soul in the Isles who hasn't heard of the Manor of Masks and its famed performers. But Tamriel will know it soon enough. Theater, conservatory, circus, salon, temple! The House of Reveries wears as many guises as we do. It is the ancestral home of all the performing arts in Somerset. And the world, if you believe some of the Sapiarchs. Sleepy little towns like Farmer's Nook are the most in need of an escape from the mundane. We came to offer them some mirth and mystery, but it appears we've been upstaged. Well, our troop won't be outdone so easily. We have a reputation to uphold. Help, of course. I've devoted my life to liberating people from their troubles, however briefly. And if I can't do that from a stage, then I will take my talents where they are most needed. I may seem a simple thespian to you, but I have had other roles in this life before I found my calling. While I may not count adventurer among them, I'm certain that I am far better prepared to unravel this mystery than these unfortunate folk. So, working with the Mummers. They may seem strange, but you're safer resting at their camp than at the inn. Not to say Braden runs a poor establishment, mind. There's just strangeness afoot in our little village. Uh, 
folk have been going missing of late, including my sister, Seal. Never for long, a few days. Just enough to plant to worry before they wander back as if nothing happened. But something did. They come back different. Like... everything's unfamiliar. Uh, weren't her memory. She could recall details down to where she last left the salt, but acted like she'd never tasted it. She'd bring up things I'd long forgotten as if they'd happened yesterday. Started dredging up old hurts we'd put past us long ago. Can't say. Felt like she wanted to relive the past, good and bad. Don't know what would have brought that on. We lead quiet lives now. Happy lives, I thought. Uh, led, I suppose. She's gone now. If it was even her in the first place. Seal led me to our old swimming hole. Hadn't been there in decades. She dove right in like we did as kids. I... I looked away before she struck the water. She hit hard. When I screwed up the courage to look, just inky black water. She was gone. That's right. Even with that ink in the pool, I could tell her body weren't there. I searched around the swimming hole, too. Nothing. Not so much as a wet footprint or even more of that vile ink, like she'd vanished. A lot from our childhood, mostly. If our parents were around, they were deep in the skooma, so Seal and I had to look out for each other. Not so much anymore. The years have been peaceful here. I suppose we'd grown distant before she vanished. No, no. Maybe. We'd sit down for meals together and tend the farm together, but there's not much to talk about in Farmer's Nook. Another field planted, another day gone by. Was she trying to tell me something? What was she trying to say? We were all a bit shaken by what happened with Igmund, but things were getting back to normal. Until Seal went out to collect logs and didn't return. I begged the others to help me search for her, but they feared they'd vanish too. Truth is, I didn't make it far myself. I thought I heard things in those woods. Even during the day, it felt like something was watching. When she showed up at the house again, I nearly fainted. I should have been relieved, but I felt haunted. Can a ghost take your hand? Make a meal? If she slept, I never saw it. I barely slept myself. Oh, the staring was the worst. Felt like she was always watching, smiling. When she'd blink, it was like one eye was a hair shy of the other. It gave me chills. Careful! You... you might have scared the mayor! Who are you? What do you want? You've come about Bugtail. I knew someone would, but my neighbors have kept their distance since he returned. I cannot blame them. I scarcely wish to take him back myself. Not after Igman and Seal. But I couldn't bring myself to turn him away. Yes. Or rather, I fear I will share his fate. Bugtail rode out to deliver a horse despite my protest. The gelding returned. He did not. Before I would have been the first to go looking, but I dreaded he'd return. Like the others. And he did. Dead. Or gone. For now. Even the horses could tell something was wrong with him. I fought with this one's reins as he groomed her, but she started and kicked Bugtail. Ink sprayed everywhere. <sighs> when I cleared my eyes, 
It was all that remained. I do not wish to speak of what has happened here, but I will. How many more will vanish and return to haunt us if no one tries to stop it? What is it you wish to know, stranger? In the far-off land of elsewhere, I was taken by sea elf privateers and sold into imperial slavery. Bugtail had been a slave for many years when I arrived, like many Khajiit after Queen Eurexia invaded elsewhere. We bonded because we spoke so little. You may think me a spinner of tall tales, but I swear I speak no lies. Bugtail and I were languishing under the hot sun, digging new metal for the Imperial Queen, when a dragon swooped out of the sky and scorched the land. In the chaos, we ran. I will never forget the sound of those Eurexian soldiers screaming. Truthfully, I do not know what scared me more seeing that giant fire-belching beast, or my quiet friend standing at my door like a phantom. I would not have suspected anything amiss had I not known of what happened to Igman and Seal. There was nothing sinister in his look or manner. If anything, he regarded me more warmly than he had in years. Normally, he could go days without a word. He seemed to want to reminisce about our more adventurous days before we escaped to Farmer's Nook and settled down to raise horses. <laughs> they were livelier times, but I would not trade them for what I have now. We're out of meat and no hot meals. If those are luxuries to which you're accustomed, you can keep on moving and find another inn. What are you, some sort of adventurer? Yeah. Yeah, you look the part. Sorry I was short with you. Since Igman passed, I've had to work twice as hard and twice as long to run the inn. It's done my manor no favors. Damned fool. He wanted to build a bonfire and drink the night away like we used to. Haven't seen Igman down mead like that since we were barely men. He lost his legs and tumbled into the fire. Nothing but cinders left by the time I doused the blaze. Not so much of a scrap of clothing. Just black, tarry ashes. Never seen anything throw such a thick black smoke. But it didn't smell like you'd expect. Hair and burned flesh. More like old hay or musty linens. It wasn't natural. I want to know what happened to my brother. Whether he's alive or truly dead. Even if the truth says he really did die in that fire, at least I can put my doubts to rest. What do you wish to know? That's right. He'd gone to get supplies from Gideon. What should have been a couple of days turned into more than a week. I'd begun to fear that he'd been robbed and left for dead on the road, but... he wandered back into town like nothing had happened. He 
Said he got lost. As if he hadn't walked that road a thousand times. I'd have accused him of gambling our money away on toad races, but he had every piece of gold he left with. How do you spend a week lost in the wood and not look worse for wear? <laughs> like he didn't have a care in the world. He seemed to be enjoying even the usual drudgery. Never thought I'd miss his belly aching over the chores, but he just didn't seem himself. No. Things were as they usually are in Farmer's Nook. Uneventful. It's exciting times when our little inn sees more than a couple travelers in a month. Ever since Igman got lost, things have been nothing but trouble. Two others disappeared since Sigmund, and all three were acting strange before they met on timely ends, if that's even what you could call it. No one wanders from the village now. Some folk are sleeping in my inn just to stick close. That's right. He'd gone to get supplies from Gideon. What should have been a couple of days turned into more... Wait a moment, stranger. I need to speak with you. So you're the one's been asking questions about the people who've gone missing, then come back wrong? I don't like involving strangers in our affairs, but my daughter's gone. Not the first time, or even the fourth, that Annie's has run off, but... Well, you've heard what befell the others. I'm worried she's in real danger. A few days ago, I, I punished her for neglecting her chores again. She must have snuck out in the night. I couldn't find hide nor hair of her in the morning. She hasn't been home since. <laughs> She's a stubborn one. But normally she'd have come back by now. I just want to know she's all right. I hate asking a stranger to do this, but no one else has the spine to leave the nook right now. And I can't go traipsing after that rapscallion like I used to. Will you find Annie's and bring her back to me? Our house is just over there, on the west side of town. There may be something among Annie's things that points to where she ran off to, but my nerves are too frayed to see it. I'm at my wit's end. She doesn't want to live here in Farmer's Nook, I can tell you that. That girl's been trying to get out of here since she was old enough to walk. She's still convinced she's going to travel to Abba's Landing and join some pirate crew. It's not like I raised her to embrace a life of piracy. It's those books her father got her when she was young. Filled her head with ridiculous tales of far-off lands, adventures, and riches. I sailed in my younger days. It's not so glamorous. Sailing is days of rope burns and sunburns. It's being tossed about the cabin while a storm rolls your ship. It's bad food, stale water, and wondering if you'll ever make it home. And that's not the life she's dreaming, and though she won't listen. Tutors like to tell me that words and stories are a form of magic. If you put them together properly, you can weave entire worlds.
Well, any luck, stranger? Oh, we don't have much, I know. Anise never fails to remind me. Have you found anything that might lead to my daughter? That's just some old handbill Anise had been hanging on to. Months old. Some vessel seeking fresh faced deckhands that's long since pulled up anchor. I pitched it to the hearth after our last argument. Probably why she left, but not where. When Anise was little, we couldn't keep her away from it. She'd grab it when we weren't looking and batter the walls and stairs, pretending it was her pirate sword. And drove my husband crazy. I've made do for so long I never bothered to replace it. What's that doing out? Anissa's plan for a fort. My husband built it for her when she was about six. Oh, must be a moldering wreck by now. Uh, unless... If she hasn't run off to join that elf circus, she might be there. It was east of here, in the hills. Ah, you're off to find this Annie girl, then. Tell me what you've learned. I wasn't able to overhear everything. You've been gone for some time. You managed to persuade the locals to share their stories with you, yes? Did their firelight tales share any common themes? Restless phantoms returning to say their last goodbyes before being spirited away once more? This really is beginning to sound like a ghost story. It's all a little too coincidental, don't you think? There has to be a common cause. You and Hesef have been our only visitors at the camp. If Anis has only recently gone missing, there may still be a chance for us to find her before she becomes the latest victim in this ghost story. Do you have any leads? Seeking out a more comforting time, no doubt. Let's hope she hasn't escaped into the arms of a monster. I'll follow your lead. My expertise in stage combat won't do us much good, but I have a few other talents and tricks up my sleeve. A list of departures. Annie's had a mind to travel.
Seems our pirate raided the pantry before she left. She planned to be gone a while. I wonder what adventures this tiny sword has seen. I believe I have thrust to the heart of the matter. Hear me out. Getting into character, you could say. Preparing for a part is all about understanding my role. How they think, how they feel, anything and everything about who they are. I have always had a good head for details and it serves me well as an actress. She's young. Or at least young at heart. She's unhappy with her life, but she feels trapped. She has a dream to follow, but she's too scared to go it alone. Only now, she's found help. One place to sleep, yet two mugs on the crate, both unfinished. And of course, two sets of footprints heading south, into the marsh, dancing all the way. The only way forward is to follow in their steps. Shall we dance too? I don't know who Annie's met out here, but the clues suggest that she wasn't in danger. Yet. We shouldn't dawdle. That might very well be the case, though I have to wonder why she'd leave her pack behind if she had no intention to return. I don't like meddling in someone's family affairs, but let's confirm she's all right before we jump to any conclusions. Someone she trusted enough to share a drink with. There's little doubt in my mind that she left with them voluntarily. The question is, was this person really who they appeared to be? We won't know the answer to that until we catch up with them. lead to this ruin. Did Annie's come here seeking adventure? We should look around. Despite the smell, I don't think that's a funerary urn. The ashes are too fresh. There are bits of paper in this brazier, but most of these books are too soggy for Tinder. This book is well-worn, but hardly old. Given the subject matter, I'd wager it belonged to Annie's. Well, this is troubling. I believe Annie's came here and performed some sort of ritual, and not the sort conjured from an overactive imagination. Whoever she followed here convinced her to make an offering to this place. I'm certain that well-worn adventure book was a dear possession to Annie's. She wouldn't have torn pages from it for a lark. She burned them in that brazier with her own blood for some ritual purpose. Not yet. 
but I was a mage of great talent in a past life. If there's any clue relating to what is occurring in Farmer's Nook, I'll find it. There's a good chance Anise will return to town, like the others. If she does, confront her about this. If Anis does return to Farmer's Nook, be careful confronting her. The last thing we want is for her to do something drastic and come to harm like those who came before her. Afraid my witty repartee won't be enough to keep me out of trouble? I'm hurt. Trust me when I say I know how to make a dramatic exit when I need to, but... If I don't return to town in a short while, assume the worst. Anise, everything all right? You. Your mother's looked all over for you. Where have you been? Ugh, I ran away again, all right? Just be glad I came back at all. What's the big deal? This is the seventh time I tried running away in three years. Why are they all gawping at me like they're afraid to blink? Do I know? No, I don't know you. Why do you care? And none of those people disappeared. They went after their dreams. I'm not the only one who has those, you know? Nobody wants to be stuck in farmer's nook for their whole life. They just didn't want anyone to miss them. It's why I'm here now. I didn't want the last time my mom saw me to be after another fight. But they have to let us go sometime. <laughs> what? No, no, it's not like they're buried in a crypt or anything. I'm just trying to say I'm not the only one who felt trapped here. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. I don't even know you. <clears throat> I hate to interrupt, but... 
May we have a word in private? So, that's Anis Favrad. What do you make of her? How apropos, considering that little library we found is a shrine to Hermaeus Mora. Though I'm still not sure how the Demon of Knowledge fits into this puzzle of ours. Why would Anis consort with it? Perhaps I should have made an offering of my own? It certainly looks that way. I didn't find anything relating to the ritual that was performed at that shrine, but some of those moldy tomes shed a little light on things. The Aeliads, who used to live out here, revered Mora as their principal prince. The shrine we found was simply one of many ruins. I discovered record of another ruin near to Farmer's Nook. If we're dealing with a cult, or some other servants of Mora, it would make the perfect hideaway. What do you say we go check it out? The ruin I spoke of is north of town, not too far. I'll have a word with the innkeeper and Hesef about keeping Anis occupied while we work, but if you wish to speak with anyone else before we head out, I'll wait here. We have reason to suspect that Anis is somehow involved in this mystery. Better to assume she is playing the role of the villain until we know more. Even if she's simply another victim of circumstance, it's safer for everyone that she stay put. Well, she certainly acts like a niece. I'll be keeping my eye on her all the same. Can't say for certain. She only just returned and I can't say the girl and I were all that close. I'd just assume the worst if it's all the same to you. I want to believe that this is really a niece, but just keep seeing my sister when I look at her. Please, you need to put an end to this. Can't live life looking over my shoulder like this. I... I can't say. Just a feeling in my gut. Gotta watch her a while yet to know for certain. If she's like Seal, the eyes will tell. Mark my word. Well, whatever the case, you needn't worry about Annie's for now. Thank you for caring, and good luck with getting to the bottom of all this nonsense. Looks right. After you, adventurers first. Stand back, your east. 
Schwab. You cannot board this vessel until you have satisfied me, the mighty Flicker! Look out, she's... Mighty Flicker? From the saga of Captain Wareshark? That I did not expect. Ha! Think you can sail with me, wee one? I've felled giants like trees! I've slapped a dragon around until it got down and licked my hand. I've kicked Molag Ball in the arse once, and he begged me to do it again! Ha <laughs> ha! Answer me this. Why do we sail? Aye, what pirate lass hasn't appreciated a fine pile of gold? But no! What is booty without a crew to share it with? A thief can steal treasures, a bandit can take riches. Think, ye wee one, why do we sail the high seas? Sure, I, the were shark is a fine captain, a pirate's pirate. There's no privateer with more daring do than Captain Were shark. But do we sail to walk in his shadow, to tell his tales? No, we make our own. Now think, ye swab, and answer me again. And there you have it. What worth is booty if it isn't earned? What is a battle if you don't cut a bloody swath through your enemies? We sail for honor, for glory! Now brace yourself, wee one. You face the Argonian next! Will the sea swallow you like so many others? The high seas run deeper than any river, filled with the blood of enemies. A challenge awaits you, sailor. Are you prepared to give our journey your all? Or will you wilt like a mushroom in summer? Tell me, speak true, why do we sail? Erect the spine of respect. I have fought countless monsters alongside the Were Shark, yet none has ever bested me in battle, much to my regret. One day, I hope, I will meet that which can kill me. Now, face two scars and rejoice in Sithis. Text and join the Wear Sharks crew? <laughs> I doubt it. So, you've impressed the Big Bear and the Hard Turtle. So what? I walk in the shadow and sleep in the trees. I drink snake venom and piss honeyed mead. I'm the baddest, sharpest, meanest pirate on the high seas, but I don't sail alone. Why? That's right, we're family. Every one of us, from the captain himself to the lowliest swabber of decks, is one big, happy, fierce, terrifying family. No mere crew can hold a candor to us, because we're not a crew. We're blood. <laughs> Welcome aboard, kin. Your performance could have used more verve, but it seems the Guardians aren't judging on enthusiasm. Let's head inside.
Oriel above. It's Annie's and all the others. They appear to be alive. Let's try waking them. Mm, yes. Bring back tail more sweet rosy. Dare ye cross sabers with Red Anise? Huh. Oh, darling, that's lovely. Gold, so much gold. It's a dream. They're all dreaming. This is no normal sleep, but it's oddly benign for a curse. None of these people appear to be in distress. In fact, they seem to be dozing quite serenely. Some of them have been missing for weeks, yet they show no signs of poor health. Not from the spell they're under, no. Though why they were made to sleep and what our mystery stranger intends for them is still very much unknown. I believe so, but I'm not entirely certain we should. Right now, the spell isn't doing any harm, but tampering with it could change that. I'd like to get a better idea how Anis and the others came under this spell before I start striking it through. Now that you've rehearsed your role, let's cast you as a pirate in her fantasy. See if you can reach Anis within her dream and get her to wake up. When you're ready, place a hand on Anis's forehead and start counting sails. Look alive! The dead have come for us! Fight? Good. If you came to help, you have my thanks. But it's not needed. Looks like Prince Vogger is going down with his ship. Not that the ship is going down, I mean. It's just... You know what I mean. What did you... No, 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 no. I'm Red Anise, the Crimson Shrike, and I'll skewer any swab who says otherwise. Stow it, sailor. With Prince Vogger dead, we need to find his treasure. Check his cabin while I search the rest of the hold. This adventure isn't done until we've secured that treasure. Savvy? Have a look! Prince Vogger's treasure was a book. Didn't know old dead eyes could read. Well, let's get it back to Captain Wareshark. Maybe it'll help break the curse. Red Anise to you, Swabby. This book, this is... This is about Captain Wareshark and, and Flicka and the others. I don't understand. This... this is all a story. But where am I? 
Why aren't I in the book? I... I remember it now. I remember it all. Damn it, Cress. You said I could finally escape, and no one would come for me. They wouldn't even know I was gone. That was the deal. Cress said that they would make it so I could finally live out my dreams. I could have this life, and they would take my place. I'd finally be free of Farmer's Nook, and my mom wouldn't ever need to worry about my life of piracy. I know. It was too perfect. I knew it was too perfect. Dreams don't last. That's why they're dreams. Just a few more moments. It was just getting good. I just want to celebrate victory with the captain once before this is all over. Maybe steal a kiss before I go. I... please. I can tell you about Cress when we're back in the ruin. Just leave me with the dream a little longer. Good. It's been a while since I've worked any magic that didn't involve sleight of hand. Anis is still soundly asleep. Could you not get through to her in the dream? So, she stepped right into the story that's inspired her since she was little. That explains the ritual with that book. How better to keep her under the spell than to put her in a prison she wouldn't want to escape? Insidious. You're telling me this crest didn't take her place. They traded for it? And not just her, but everyone here. What does Cress have to gain from these bargains? To infiltrate the town? What could a sleepy village offer someone who can create dreams? The deal they made isn't so harmless as they might have believed. You've seen how frightened the villagers are. How many more need to vanish before Cress has whatever it is they want? They won't like it, but we should wake them and end this farce. Here we go. Pray that a rude awakening is the worst they have to suffer. It's ready. Wake Anis, and the curse will break. <sighs> Farewell, Captain. No! He promised... My gold! Uh, my sweet rose! All right, so we're awake. Dreams shattered. A life of brooms and boredom ahead. Happy now? Cress is... different. They looked like Bugtail when they approached me, but his clothes were covered in ink and he seemed unwell. He... they... confessed that they weren't who they appeared to be, but they needed my help. Cress didn't look suspicious to me, just sad, vulnerable. They said they screwed up again, that they couldn't be who they were trying to be. Cress knew I didn't want to stay in Farmer's Nook, so they offered to take my place. I think they were running away too, from a life they didn't want to go back to. You know how many times I tried to do that? But I could never just leave my mom behind, alone. I thought we'd all be happy this way. She would not. Mother? I'm 
sorry. If you wanted to be rid of me so bad, you could have sent a fake who did chores. So delicious. So moist and rich and warm. So much frosting. This one can just barely still taste them. The sweet rose. The most delicious, moist, warm, fragrant sweet rolls to ever leave a baker's oven. Bugdale ate them often. Bugdale had them all. Yes! What else would one dream about? Have you never known the ecstasy of sweet moon sugar cream melting upon your tongue? This one has not tasted true sugar since he left elsewhere. He has missed it so. So he could, if he were satisfied with iced rolls grown stale from weeks on the road. But when one offers the chance to have them at their freshest and most perfect, always and forever, why would Bugtail not take such a bargain? How could you do this? How could you wake me? Cress said I would live in that dream forever. It was a damned sight better than this. I had a castle, servants, suitors hanging off my every word. I had everything I ever wanted. You don't know what it's like for us, growing up. We had nothing. We still have nothing. Hasef? Hasef seems happy with his plow and his pigs. He's a grown man, and more capable than I am at fending for himself. He doesn't need me anymore. And Cress was supposed to keep him company. We barely speak anymore as it is. Dead? Oh, Hasef, I never wanted that. I... I suppose I need to talk to him. Like we used to. He deserves that much. Where are we? Some kind of tomb? Where's my treasure? Last I remember, I was in my treasure room. Wait. So this is real? The dream is gone? My treasure's gone? Why would you do that? Why would he think I'm dead? That's not what Cress promised. He said he'd just be me. He even agreed to do my chores. Was that all a bunch of hogwash? <laughs> Heck of a way to go. Wait, is Cress dead then? Damn it. I guess there's no hope making another deal. Much as I love a happy ending, we haven't quite reached the conclusion just yet. You should speak to Anis' mother about the imposter. We mustn't let Cress escape. It could be that the two spells were mingling. That's not something seen often. Or perhaps... Oh, thank you for finding my girl. I'd never imagined she'd have gone to such lengths to get away from here. I should have listened sooner. I followed you. I was glad to see Anise back in town. But I knew deep down that wasn't my girl, and watching her act apart made the worry in my gut so much worse. I had to see for myself. Back at the Happy Crow, I told Brayden he could put whatever she liked on my tab if it kept her occupied. If you wish to find the Freeloader, that's where she'll be. We will trust Miles to see these people safely back to town. You and I should find Cress at once. Try not to judge them too harshly for their grouchiness. It could be that the two spells were mingling. That's not something seen often. Or perhaps it's simply that this Cress person was also inspired by Anis's dream. Why indeed? 
It's easy to guess what motivated these people to pursue their wildest dreams. But the workings of this Cress's mind are inscrutable. What would you do if you were them? Would you leap at the chance to live a perfect fantasy? That's the rub, isn't it? Dreams are selfish things. To chase them, you risk leaving things behind. Maybe everything. We all have to decide what we're willing to sacrifice in pursuit. Not everyone possesses your sense of obligation. They have a look about them, one I've seen before. It's the look of a skooma addict, sick and desperate on the street, lost without their escape. With the help and support of those who love them, one can hope. Ultimately, it will be up to each of them to decide what's most important to them. Hey, you! Have you seen Anise? Have you seen Anise? She ran off. I knew I shouldn't have let Hasef watch her alone. Mile asked me to keep the girl occupied, so I kept her mug full and listened to her go on about her pirate stories. I was getting famished, so I asked Hasef to watch her while I made a stew. That was the last I saw her, until I heard Hasef calling. They were playing cards when she just bolted out of her chair like a snake bitter and ran out the door. He chased her, but Hesef's not much of a runner. Said Anise was headed east, out of town. Miles going to have my hide for this. Hold on, real Anise? Who was it we've been watching this whole time? I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. You, you're the one I don't know. Why are you here? I, I didn't run away again, I promise. Excuse me? You don't even know me. I, I am Anise. I can prove it. Ask me anything. Uh, uh um, I'm her twin sister. I can't be Anise anymore. I know. 
Maybe I could be someone else. What about you? Can I be you? Enough of this charade, Cress. Off with your false face. What are you- ah! You're a Daedra? Wait! Don't hurt me! I didn't do anything! I just gave them what they wanted! I just want to live. Like you. I'm so tired of watching. I don't want to go back. Don't make me go back! To the Unbound Library of the One Who Knows. To record what was observed. That is our purpose. To watch your lives and ink the details down. Day in, day out. Always the same. They know it too. The people here. That's why I offered an escape. I kept getting it wrong. Being a person. Despite all I knew, I kept making mistakes. Bad, painful mistakes I couldn't undo. So I had to try again. And again. Life is hard. But that makes it interesting. Please, let me stay. Don't send me back! Yes, please! I didn't mean to cause any trouble! I won't cause any more trouble! This is where the one who knows sent me. It is what I know. I thought I could live here and no one would treat me any differently. I could finally experience all the things I'd only observed. Friendship, love, family, mead. Mead was good. To know, as they must. Your tiny pupil suggests that is insufficient. The one who knows seeks all knowledge. We observe so that all becomes known. We are the one's eyes, and we are multitudes. Alone, I suppose I am. I had not considered that. I will no longer be a part of the One, but something separate. It's unsettling, but also exciting. I'll... well, I don't know what I'll do without a mortal form, but I'll think of something. I need a mortal pack to do anything more than create an illusion. I traded dreams because they are the neighbor of knowledge and within my reach. I don't have much else to offer a mortal in exchange. Correct. The terms are not important. Only the bargain matters. If I find someone willing to form a, a less troublesome pact, then maybe I could stay. The one who knows watches most. The one seeks not to change, but to observe. If the One sees me here, they will know what was once unknown. I would return to Apocrypha, and resume the catalog of all things until I've exhausted my knowledge, and the One who knows casts me into the world to observe again. That would not be, in mortal terms, for a very long time. So, this pitiable creature wants to escape its lot in life, too. Even Daedra dare to dream. I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't feel some sympathy for its plight. When a hopeful becomes a player in the House of Reveries, they cast off their old identity and assume their new role completely. Such a serious commitment attracts only those who most desire an escape from their prior circumstances. I'm no different. Misguided as Cress was, I don't believe they acted in malice. There aren't many stories of compassionate Daedra, but it seems at least some of them might be true. The question is, does this little Daedra story have to end in tragedy? It may fly in the face of common sense, but I think Cress might have the makings of a fine player. They're a bit unrefined, but taking on a new role seems to come naturally, and they'll never forget their lines. I could sponsor them to the house. I 
thought so. And my eye for talent is one of the best among the players. By the time Cress presents themselves before the Grand Maestro, I will have transformed them into a master thespian. I'll stake my reputation on it. All's well that ends well, as they say. This certainly wasn't the direction I expected this story to take, but a good mystery always keeps you guessing. You were a grand co-star. If we ever adapt Investigate a Veil for the stage, I'll be sure to call. I'd always planned to... All's well that... All right, Cress. I have a deal for you. You do? Does this mean I can stay? No, not in Farmer's Nook, anyway. Oh. Does it mean I don't have to go back to the library? Yes, and you will get to live a great many incredible lives. I can? What do you need me to do? Watch and learn. You're going to be my apprentice. Now, let's get you a mask. Now, if you're going to be a proper hopeful, I'm going to need you to take a form similar to one of my players. Can you do that? Oh, yes. With your help, that will be easy. How is it? You'll have no difficulty with brisk scene changes, certainly. Now, for a name that speaks to your soul, what about Dreamer? Dreamer? I like that very much!
Look at what the bog dogs dragged in. No offense, but you look like someone who could use some supplies. Take a look.
Ah, giant one! The Duke of Crows requests your help. Hail! Come closer. You stand before a projection of the Duke of the Black Feather Court. A grievous injustice has been done here, and I must implore you for aid. Implore! My flock has been tricked, lured here with foul magic and promises of shinies. A foolish mage wishes to open a connection to the Evergloom to join his featherless cult to our mistress Nocturnal. Pah! I speak to you through the magic of this place, but neither I nor the court can leave until we are freed. Please help us! Come with me inside and free us from the cult's clutches. Though I am very mighty, it is not within my power to save myself or my court. I need your assistance. The Black Feather Court will owe you a great boon if you take on this sacred duty. I shall inflict my vengeance on these cultists through you, Crow Friend. Such impropriety must be punished. Once the court is freed, we will feast on the squishy eyes of these peasants. Come, come! We must hurry! Foolish! Witless! They wish to reach the Lady of Shadows and call her attention to this place of mud and dirt. They intend to channel the power from my court to open a gate to her realm, but her power is not theirs to wield. Nocturnal, our mighty mistress. We are forever intertwined with her great forces. Each vassal of the court is imbued with darkness, shadows! The cultists easily siphon such power while the court is distracted. The Duke of Crows is the very definition of feathery cleverness. I use their own shinies against them. The magic inside them does more than fascinate and drain energy from the Black Feather Court. If you are as clever as I am. We're not so different from your featherless cords, crow friend. We gather, we plot, we have the fiercest knights and bravest vassals. We dispatch our foes with sharp talons and quick wit, and we are very cunning. We also happen to be crows. Of course. The Crow Mother taught us to speak. And since then, we have talked and called with the utmost elegance. I have the honor of being named the Duke, for I am the loudest of my loyal vassals. My feathers are also the most resplendent! It is the realm of our mistress, our home, our place of creation, the cradle of shadow, the darkest realm of the oblivion, home to only those worthy, worthy! The Black for the Court has dominion over the crow's wood within the Evergloom. It is our domain. The others are inside. I will show you. Gather here. Fight! Win! For the court! 
You see now, the great shinies that tricked the court into this miserable place. But they only show lies. Lies! When one crow looks upon it, they see a likeness that copies their every move. These are no treasures, just tricks! You have a name for these terrible things. <laughs> Featherless schemes! Nothing of the sort exists in the Evergloam. My regal beak belongs on no other face, only mine! Who knows what that other grackle is planning? Of course I, the Duke, know that now. I am quite clever, but I did not realize until I was already bewitched. The court is ensnared by these reflections. Perhaps if you destroy these loathsome shinies, it would break the hole? Yes, crow friend! Smash them to bits! A fine plan. Those featherless cultists will rue the day they tried to control the blood for the court. Rule! Their doom is nigh! Come! I will guide you through this wretched place!
Come and take us! is to speak with you. The tricky shinies have been destroyed, but what remains? It stands in the room where those peasant cultists attempt to open their gate. A few members of the court are still trapped there, including myself. You must disrupt their ritual to free us. The cultists drain my court's immense power while we are paralyzed. If my vassals and I were not so transfixed by the shinies, we could free ourselves. But until we remove the temptation, we cannot tear our gaze away! Smash! Smash! Destroy the mirror and my vassals will be free! No longer will we be cowed and bound to these featherless masters! These fools will feel the sharpness of our beaks, the cutting wind of our feathers. Go, my tall soldier! Go!
darkness and shadows will claim you. Magnificence! Free us, crow friend! Free us! <laughs> Victory! Triumph! Let us speak outside, my beakless warrior! Join us, crow friend. Behold, the Black Feather Court is free. Thank you, crow friend. You have done exceptionally well. You may have eyes of jelly, but your heart is as strong as a crow. Yes, yes. Thanks to you, crow friend. It is a triumphant day for the Blackfeather Court. I found a shiny in this place, but I no longer trust it. It must be gone. Gone! Take it as a tribute from the court. The Blackfeather Court will not forget this insult. The mistress does not want her favored servants used like puppets. If we see any more cultists, we will peck them to ribbons and feast on their eyes! Feast! I can tell you for sure that we will not fall for the same tricks again! We are too wise for that. A crow's memory is long. It is not easy to fool us twice. Still, perhaps we will leave this place just to be safe, but only because we desire it. Wherever the wind takes us, crow friend. Though after this harrowing experience, we may return to Crow's Wood. I long for our skirmishes with the bats. Our gallant knights could use a fierce battle to forget this insult. A victory! The same to you, my knight without feathers. The black for the court is much richer indeed to count you as a crow friend. Your loyalty is worth more than any shiny, no matter how big or bright it may be.
what happens here. <sighs> Again? <sighs> Look, I've got just as much right to stand here as anyone else. If those scantily clad Debellites want me to leave, you tell them to come out here and say it to my face. You're not one of their sanctified bullies? <sighs> That's a relief. Call me Farrick. I came to Gideon to clear my family's name. But the loose-robed fanatics in the Dibolosium want to run me off. Started with dirty looks. Now I'm getting threats. They think my Grana Cerise murdered their high priest decades ago. It's not true, and I mean to set the record straight. Might take a little snooping around, but the evidence is here. I know it. Want to lend a hand? Don't have much, but I can pay. Thanks for the help. Not easy for Jemaines to make friends around here. The Debellites use that manse in the center of town as their Dibolosium. Sort of a consecrated love nest. There's proof of Grana's innocence in Gideon. We'll find it there. Like I said, the victim was one of the Debellites' high priests, a woman named Rolaine. This was 60 years ago, mind. But my grandfather tells me the locals worshipped the ground she walked on. Thought she was a prophet, or something near to it. Aye. My Grana Cerise was Rolaine's flower bearer. Followed her everywhere she went. When a heap of treasure went missing and Rolaine vanished, Grana was the prime suspect. No one could prove it, of course, since they never found her. Like wood smoke in a windstorm, and without breathing a word to my Grandpa Lier. Way Grandpa tells it, neither of them would so much as visit the Lou without telling the other where they were headed. But the locals wouldn't listen. These damned zealots rallied half the city, gathered up torches and shovels and ran him and my father out of town with nothing but the clothes on their backs. Even outside of Gideon, the rumors followed him. We haven't had a moment's peace since. Bravo. Took an awful long time, what with the Three Banners War and all. But I made it, and I'm not leaving till I settle this once and for all. Might have happened yesterday for all these people care. Nobody holds a grudge like an Imperial. If your name is Jemaine, you're lower than dirt in their eyes. I just had a son a couple years back, and he's already catching it on the chin. He's two. An apology? <laughs> I'm not that naive. I'm a carpenter by trade. I'll settle for people not hiding my tools and splitting my sawhorses six times a month. It's about respect. To oblivion with the rest. I... Well, not exactly. For now I can say I have good reason to think there's more to the story. I'll know more once we look around their makeshift Temple of Debella. And I'll feel much better about doing that having you with me. What is it? So, this is the Divalosium. Just what I expected. Do you happen to know where we are? I've gotten lost. Just what I thought. <sighs> Look at this place. These Debellites fancy themselves free spirited bards blown by the wind. They've got enough gold to make Zenithar blush. Ugh, doesn't matter. This is where we'll find our answers. I don't know yet. I just know we have to look. Take this. 
It's a rare bit of magic called a memory stone. Grana Cerise gave it to Grandpa Lierre the night before she supposedly murdered Priestess Rolaine and fled. Maybe it'll show us something. Then you'll remember they hold their owner's memories inside them. I only learned about the stone's power a year ago, when a mage passed through Bravil and took an interest. He said memory stones only awaken in the place where the memory occurred. Aye, that's the hope. I know we face long odds on this. Magic stones and lost memories sound like storybook nonsense, but it's really all I've got to go on. How about we start our search on the ground floor? Stone flashed. Did you see it? Try to use it. Something's happening. Is that... It's a memory! Who is that? Boris Mercy! By the eight, what was that? A murder? Someone recorded a murder in that stone? Why would anyone do that? Wait, could this be related to the disappearances Grandpa Lierre told me about? Aye, way Grandpa Lierre tells it, in the weeks before Rolaine vanished, a handful of novitiates went missing. None of them were popular enough to raise an outcry. People said they must have just left trying to get out from under Rolaine's shadow. Grana Cerise helped all the novitiates, cleaning linens, tending the flowers, arranging sheet music. She knew everyone. These people probably would have pinned the disappearances on her, too. But the story took a dark turn after Rolaine's murder. The Debellites decided it must have been a conspiracy. The missing novitiates were all in on the plot. And now we see the truth of it. Can't be sure, but whoever murdered those novitiates might have murdered Rolaine too. We should keep investigating. Another flash. Try the stone now. Go on. Use the stone again. Not another one. Be preserve me. It's so real. Always more to do. It's our killer again. What's he doing? Gods, what is that? Magic? Did you see those gestures? Can you repeat them? Mara's mercy!
skeletons. Are those the murdered novitiates? I think I might... Ah, come on, Fairy. Keep it together. Find anything? What have you got there? A letter? Here, let me have a look at it. Oh, and can I have my stone back? I think I've had my fill of grisly memories for now. Clara, Ariel, Edgard. Yes, these were the novitiates. This should bring their families some closure, at least. It wasn't enough that the murderer killed the novitiates. She had to steal their souls, too? How would someone even do that? Huh. I've heard of soul gems before, but not black soul gems. I thought mages just used them on rabbits and goblins and such. These black ones can suck up the souls of men and myrrh? Oh, it preserve us. The ledger said the killer traded them, right? Never heard of them. But then again, honest carpenters like me don't do much business with soul-stealing wizards. It's all academic anyway. There's no way of knowing if the trade even took place. Unless that map you found contains a clue. Hmm. I never told you how Priestess Rolaine died, did I? She left to visit Leowin in her carriage, along with her flower-bearer Cerise, my grandmother. They never arrived. Maybe this map shows where they went. Let's see where it leads, eh? Grandpa said there'd been talk about how Grana Cerise and the other junior priestesses of Debella were greedy. When news came that Priestess Rolene had been murdered, none questioned they'd killed her. Instead, they'd burned Grandpa Lierre's home. I don't see how it could be anything else. Sadly, I imagine the angry people who burned down our home and chased Grandpa Lierre away are dead now. So they're beyond justice. Yet we can still clear my grandmother's name. We must, for Grandpa Lierre! You're asking me? I figured you'd know. Whoever they are, I guess they like souls? The ledger said that the killer was bringing black soul gems to trade for a reward of some sort. Maybe they're part of the Waking Flame cult the killer mentioned? So you do know about them. I figured. You seem to be taking this all so calmly. Like you've seen all this horror and worse. So, these Waking Flame folks are still around? If our killer was one of them, that means they've been in Gideon for decades. By the Eight, I hope not. I can't imagine how horrifying it would be to die, but not die. To be trapped forever in one of those black soul gems. Just thinking about it makes me feel like I want to vomit. I'm so glad I have you to protect me. Grandpa said there'd been talk about how Grana Cerise and the other junior priestesses of Debella were greedy. Doesn't seem like I'm getting much done here.
Let's hit the trail. If your mouth. Oblivion, take you! Look, they're in the water. Could that be it? See what you can find. I'm afraid to ask, but I've got to. What did you find? Let me see. Yes! I've seen that seal too many times. See the flowers encircling the face? It's a symbol of Dibella. This is a High Priestess's signet ring. It can't be a coincidence. That skeleton is Priestess Rolain. We found her! So Priestess Rolain was transporting those? Why? Did Grana Cerise know about it? They left town together and vanished together. My grandmother's skeleton isn't here, so... By the Eight, could Priestess Rolene be the killer? Do you think... No, it couldn't have been Grana. She wasn't in Gideon when the Novitiates were killed. The Priestess had access to the treasury. Had the ear of the people. It all makes sense, except how she died. We just... Wait! Look there! You should say hello, right? I, um... I'm right behind you. That's Grana Cerise, isn't it? She's been here in this cave all this time. Sorry for keeping you waiting. I'm sure uncovering murderous cults and meeting her grandmother's ghost is run-of-the-mill fodder for you. But for me, this is a bit much to take. I guess there was something to those dreams after all. I know. I should have told you from the start. But I didn't want to scare you off, thinking I was crazy or something. It started a month or so ago. A ghostly young woman rouses me from my bed every night and stares at me. Like she wants something. I know it is. She just stared us both in the face and guided us to her remains, right? But what now? She put an end to Rolaine's plot, but no one will believe me. The Germains will keep getting stepped on. They'll say I faked the whole thing. That... might actually work. 
Keshu the Black Finn and her Argonians couldn't give two croaks about Dibella and her flock. Keshu's war mage, fire from nowhere, knows local history. He might just listen. Grana Cerise gave us the proof. Let's use it. Cities are as no alive, sign. fickle, good. and uncertain Carry as people. On. Some are good. Sun's greetings, Biko. Your friend's eyes seem gray with worry. What troubles you both? Rolaine. Ah, yes, the prophet woman these smooth skins mourn. She's been dead for a very long time, but still they cry. It is very strange. But that is the Imperial way, I guess. What did you discover? Something to quiet their hearts, I hope. Well then, that is not what I expected you to say. If this is true, there will be a great wailing in the Divilosium. Disbelief also. They curse the woman Cerise Germain and all who hatch from her clutch. Your proof must be hard as stone. I can tell you speak the truth. In the name of Keshu, I claim the Breton Ferric Germain as my charge. I place my hand upon the hist and swear no harm will befall him here. And the truth of this will come to light no matter how grim. Thank the Eight for fire from nowhere. And for you. I never could have accomplished this without your help. I can't believe it's over. These zealots will finally know the truth. I guess I'll stay in Gideon until we put this matter to rest for good. I want to see these people's faces when they come to terms with what really happened. Then, it's back to Bravel in my woodshop. Sooner the better. Thanks, hero. For everything. If I didn't trust Keshu and her Argonians to protect me, I'd flee right now. I'm sure there are plenty of people in Gideon who will want me dead for what I know. But I'm staying. Grana Cerise was a hero, and I won't let her down. Relieved? Honestly, I started all this to get the people of Cyrodiil off my family's back, and to get a full night's sleep. Not exactly selfish, but not a righteous crusade either, you know? But now that I know what Grana went through... I... am sadder. But we sorted it, right? Spirits at rest, remains recovered, souls returned... I hope... This is as happy an ending as we could hope for, given the circumstances. It just makes me damn glad I'm a carpenter and not a full-time adventurer.
Stranger, I am in need of your help. I erect the spine of fear, formidable stranger. I need your help. The Sulzan captured me and my friends in order to use us for a cruel ritual. I managed to escape, but my friends remain inside. I intend to go back and rescue them. I overheard as I attempted to escape. The Sulzan possess a relic, the idol of Zulanat. They will use it to consume the spirits of my friends so that they may summon a spirit of destruction. I am no lymphinned hatchling, but I cannot stop this alone. I need you to come with me into this Zanmir and free my friends in order to interrupt the Sulzan's rituals. Then we must destroy the idol of Zulanat to prevent this atrocity from befalling another clan. I will pay you handsomely for your aid. As Mud is my mother, I know that with your help we can save my friends from this horrible fate. Let us head quickly inside. Keep your teeth sharp. The Sulzan are Naga who worship only chaos, nothing more. They fuel their madness with horrible rituals and sacrifices, hoping it will bring an end to the world. They are violent, callous, and insane. But I fear their true threat is all too real. They are like my people, but harsher. Crueler. Naga bear many similarities to the Saxlil, but they are often taller and their faces wider. They are drawn to war and violence. Both come easily to them, which is why this threat is so dire. Their rituals have the potential to summon an ancient spirit of destruction. If they cannot use my friends to do it, they will find someone else. I believe destroying the idol will stop them, but I must first ensure my friends are safe. I'm afraid not, Bikojel. All I know is that Zitze is one of the Sulzan's favorite shrines. Many of the Saxlil have lost their lives there due to the Sulzan's terrible rituals. Their blood wets the stones. I hope my friends will not join them. Ah, forgive me. These things come easily to the tongue. In my language, Biko Gel is something akin to friendly outsider, someone who is not quite a stranger. Saxlil essentially is the same as Argonian, though the latter is the imperial term. I do not know. I only heard of it in passing as I escaped. I imagine something like that comes from a time when my people worshipped stone and had little reverence for the hist. All I know is the Sulzan can use it to trap the spirits of the dead. to disrupt the rituals. Let us make haste.
Jayla, is that you? Get to safety, Koran. We will find the others. They must be performing more rituals further inside. The pain! I erect the spine of gratitude to you. Good. The Sultan will not have her. That's got it!
My egg brothers and sisters are safe thanks to you. There is one task left before us, if I have not yet reached the limits of your assistance. We need to destroy the idol of Zulonat to ensure the Sulzan do not summon the spirit of destruction. We must find where the Sulzan are keeping it first. It will likely be somewhere of great importance to them, and heavily guarded. I just pray we are not too late. There has been so much death already. From what we have seen thus far, it seems as though these terrible rituals tear the souls from the victim. I believe the Solzan found a way to transfer the stolen spirits into the idol in order to power it. It is dark magic, certainly. That I cannot know. I hope so. If it doesn't stop them completely, it will at least slow their schemes. Destroying the idol of Zulunat should at least protect others from being trapped here. That is enough for me. Let's go. We destroy the idol of Zulunat. No matter how much death they have wrought, the Sulzan will not be able to summon their dark spirit. We must find it and keep it from hurting anyone ever again. We must find where the Sulzan are keeping it first. It will likely be somewhere of great importance to them and heavily guarded. I just pray we are not too late. There has been so much death already. From what we have seen thus far, that...
Let us leave this place. Unworthy feelings to you, brave warrior. Not only did you rescue my tribe, but you became a storm that tore free the evil roots of the Sulzan here. With this, you have saved many more innocents. Yes, thanks to you, the Sulzan in this place will flounder without their idol, and my friends are now safely out of their reach. You saved us, and likely many more with your actions. Take this, Beagle Gel, with our thanks. What you have done for us, and others like us, will not be forgotten. We will rest here until the others regain their strength. Be welcome and wallow with us, if you wish. An excellent question. The grass bends to the wind, but we are not so yielding. We will take time to recover, but you helped ensure that we do not need to flee this place. If the Sulzan try to hunt us again in the future, we will be ready. On the whole, I cannot say. The group that inhabited Zitze, however, will fade into the shadows to rekindle the power you ripped from their claws. Their cruelty might not be at an end, but it is at least interrupted. Then we will be ready for them, Beak Ogel. We were caught unawares this time, like a swarm of gnats that does not sense the frog's sticky tongue. Next time, we will not let ourselves become prey. Your generosity will not be wasted.
Let's go! That's over with, I suppose. Taste our steel!
Oh, don't give me that look. You only have yourself to blame. Oh, you saw that. Probably think I'm talking to this pig. And, well, fair. Because that's what I'm doing. But I have a perfectly good explanation. You see, this pig is my brother, and I desperately need to give him a bath. Don't be fooled by his porkish appearance. Dietlo typically has the same perfect scales as I do, but today he decided to poke around these ruins and irked the local Nereid, sister of pools. I guess she felt becoming a pig was a fair punishment. My thought is, Sister of Pools might see Dietlo bathing in her waters and consider it an act of humility. Then maybe she'd turn him back. I can't return to those ruins by myself. Way too dangerous. I have some gold, if you're willing to help. I appreciate the help. You don't know how many people walk right on by when they see an Argonian talking to a pig. Not sure if bathing Dietlo will work, but... How else do you apologize to a water spirit? Let's go inside before he digs up more grubs. My stupid brother aspires to be a musician. He heard that the best frogs live in these ruins, and he couldn't wait to catch a few for his Vosa saddle. Who knew the Nereid was protective over a bunch of frogs? What's a Vosa saddle? Only the finest musical instrument ever devised. We Argonians love them. Frogs fill the instrument's many cavities, creating unique sounds through the attached horns. The happier the frogs, the better the music. I saw him transform with my own eyes. It was horrible. The scales turned into bristly hair. He grew a snout and little pig ears. Sister of Pools was just furious, especially after Dietlo frightened the frogs and they all hopped away. My brother left a note, told me what he planned to do and where he planned to do it. I arrived too late to stop him, but I was just in time to see the angry Nereid curse him and change him into a walking ham. I guess she didn't notice me. Not much, really. The place is filled with all kinds of wild and dangerous creatures, like Sister of Pools, the Nereid who cursed my stupid brother. Look, if you want to explore the ruins, go ahead. But could you help me restore Dietlo first? There are multiple pools scattered throughout the ruins. I suggest we bathe Deedlo in three different pools. That should show the Nereid he's sorry. You dare return, little pig, to frighten more of my beloved frogs? Very well. What happens next is on your head.
pool looks humble and inviting. Get in there and scrub my brother. Oh, great water spirit. See how my brother grovels. Can you remove his porkish nature now? Please? You call this humble? If a pig doesn't suit him, how about a fowl? I am not afraid of you. All right, Deeplo. This pool looks appropriately remorseful. Go ahead and soap him up, please. Oh, powerful Nereid, hear our sorrow. Make Dietlo no longer a chicken, please. Is that a look of remorse? I think not. But if a chicken isn't to your liking, how about a tiny lizard? Frightener muddies my pools and thinks that will earn my forgiveness. After he scared away my beloved croakers. Never. Wow, crispy cricket legs. I really thought this would work. My brother's doomed to remain a... Whatever that is. Wait a moment. Zeus! Dietlo's doomed unless... All Sister of Pools cares about are the frogs that were scared away. So maybe if Dietlo sings a soothing song at the frog pool, it will calm the frightened frogs and they'll return to the pool. If that happens, the Nereid is sure to forgive him. The frog pool. It's a bit farther into the ruins. It's where I saw a sister of pools change my brother into a pig. When we get there, splash some water on Dietlo until he starts singing. This has to work.
This is the place. Take my brother into the water and just splash some water on Deedlo. He always sings in the back. My beautiful frogs, they've come home. Such beautiful music. What a lovely gift. Sister of Fools forgives you, Dietlo. Be yourself once more. My frogs will sing your song for ages to come. And Dietlo is himself again. Let's get out of here before the Nereia changes her mind and turns him into a torch bug or something. get what they deserve anyway. No more frogs, brother. Time to find a different instrument, I think. Thank you for helping me get my brother back. I have to admit, he does have talent, but I need to get him to take up an instrument that requires fewer live animals. Our egg mother would be devastated if he came home as a bantam guar. Oh, right, of course. Deedlo would still be digging up grubs if not for you. You deserve this. Not many strangers would stop to help an Argonian who talks to pigs. Thanks again. You know, come to think of it, I missed out on a golden opportunity while my stupid brother was a pig. I've heard they can sniff out rare mushrooms with their snouts. I should have had him find me some before we changed him back. Oh well. Well, seeing how my brother actually does have some musical talent, maybe I'll serve as his agent. Get him some work in Gideon, or maybe even Leowin. But I think we'll start him off as a singer. I want to keep him away from frogs for a while.
Hold, Traveler. Border Watch isn't safe. Scout Iscaria, Ivory Brigade Border Watch Garrison. We're in desperate need of help. There's a situation at the fortress. Hostages involved. Report to Commander Axius if you want to assist us. He'll make it worth your while. He's camped outside the fort. Follow the road. It should be safe up to the fort. You'll find Commander Axius's camp outside Border Watch's walls. I just hope you're more help than the so-called professionals he sent in already. I only know it involves mercenaries threatening to kill innocent folk if we try to fight them. The commander doesn't want it to come to that, but we're running out of options. The fort is under the jurisdiction of Leowin's militia, the Ivory Brigade. It defends the main road between Leowin and Braville. We're all that keeps the Three Banners' war from spreading into Blackwood. We can't lose the fort. You just can't. <laughs> Not sure myself. Some shifty Argonian and a wide-eyed wood elf. They happened by and claimed they could rescue the hostages without any bloodshed. Haven't heard a thing since, for better or worse. Did my scouts send you, or did you slip past unannounced? Either might do. I'll be brief. I am, was, the commanding officer of Border Watch, the fortress up the road. It's been overtaken by a mercenary outfit that calls itself the Painted Eye. A combination of magic, guile, and well-laid plans. They lured most of my brigadines into chasing after an illusory enemy, while their main force infiltrated the keep and took those inside hostage. I'm doing all I can to keep those folks alive. More than I can name, and none that I can grant. I sent word to Leowin, but so far I've heard nothing. The Painted Eye will kill those hostages if we storm the fortress. I need someone who can get inside quietly. And free them. I'll pay for results. If you want to slip past the Painted Eye undetected, you'll have to get into Border Watch through its sewer. It drains into a ravine to the east. And you should know, you're not the first volunteer to try this. No idea what happened to the last. There was a pair of them, an Argonian and a Wood Elf. Said they were infiltration experts. Burglars more like, but... That's what I need. I didn't ask them too many questions. Couldn't afford to turn help away. Still can't. They've been gone a long time. Either they've abandoned the job or been found out. If they were captured, I'd expect the Painted Eye to react, but it's been quiet. Too quiet. For all I know, those two emptied the larder and took off for a picnic. Mercenaries, we thought. Only knew them from third-hand accounts in our intelligence briefings. If they were hired to cause this ruckus, we might have bribed them, but their demands read like a credo. They're making a statement here. Damn fanatics. 
pages worth, right there. They practically demanded I carve them out a sovereign kingdom with my table knife. They're mad if they think I can deliver even a fraction of what they're asking, but I have to humor them. There are lives on the line. Never take me alive, you bastards! Hang on. Who goes there? You better stay back, whoever you are! Or you'll have the distinct honor of Lady Twilight wearing your guts for garters! And your, your skin for stockings! And your bones! For bonnets? Oh, I haven't worked that out yet, but I'll have them. He did? Well, that was considerate. Hey! Are you saying he doesn't trust us to finish the job? Sure, things haven't gone according to plan, but they never do. Six and I always come through in the end. Seeks the Dark? He's my mentor. Shows me everything there is to know on the job. He's a bit on the grumpy side, but, but he'll be happy when history remembers him as the wise teacher of Lady Twilight, the Thieves' Guild's greatest legend. Oh, darn it. I wasn't supposed to say that. Forget I mentioned it. It's not important. What's important are hostages and how to get to them. No, I know exactly where I am. I'm just temporarily unsure of where I'm going. Six and I got separated when, well, he made a distraction so the painted eye wouldn't spot me. But I don't know where he ran off to. Can you help me find him? I think Six took off that way after the commotion started. I think. Well, we were in the area and heard about Border Watch's troubles. Six and I are no strangers to getting into fortresses, so we volunteered to save the hostages. The sewers were supposed to be lightly patrolled. Not exactly true. Six and I can slip by patrols. It's just these tight quarters don't leave a lot of options. It was going fine until we ducked into a niche filled with spiders. Just thousands of them scuttling around in that hole. I may have reacted a bit. 
I started stomping around like I was making wine until Seek smacked me on the head and sent me back the way we came. He went tearing off in the other direction, screaming like a banshee to draw the patrol away. It's quiet now, though. I'm working my way up the ranks of the Thieves' Guild. Well, to the first rank, really. Seeks was put in charge of my training by the Guildmaster until I'm ready to set out on my own. And once I am, the legend of Lady Twilight will begin in earnest. That's the name I'll be known by once I make it big. I just need one huge heist. Something that will grab the imaginations of people from here to Oridon. Then I'll be on the lips of every bard. Lady Twilight, the greatest thief in all of Tamriel. Think twice about hopping across stones in the murk. Sometimes they're crocodiles. Hold on. I don't think I've been this way yet. Let's check it out. I'll get the lock. Aerothal, I told you to run. I did, but then I ran into our friend here and... Hey, did you let yourself get caught so I could get away? <sighs> Unlike you, I know when to make an escape. You, come here. We need to talk. Well, things don't always go to plan on a job, but this is getting ridiculous. Let me guess. Commander Axius sent you in after us because we're missing and presumed dead. Correct? Then you know the deal. From what I've heard, the Painted Eyes separated the hostages into groups throughout Border Watch. Risky. But unfortunately, they've got the numbers to manage their occupation and guard their captives. Damn revolutionaries. We need to find the hostages. We need to get them out of the fortress. And we need to keep the Painted Eye from realizing what we're up to. That's three jobs, and three of us. If we work together, we'll get these people out. I'll leave finding the hostages to you. Erotho can lead them out through the sewers, and I'll be the distraction again. Start by checking the tower, southwest of the fortress. I overheard that they were holding a group of captives there. A painted eye patrol cornered me after I sent Erothal away from the fortress. I convinced them that I was just a dung shoveler for the garrison. Seems better to be a hostage than get gut stabbed. Thieves? Who told you that? Erothal. Ugh. Look, I didn't ask why you're here on the job we're being paid for. 
and the hostages certainly don't care who actually frees them. So let's just forget about the matter of occupational titles, shall we? There we go. One pick lock, courtesy of Lady Twilight. Next time, keep your eyes off the lock. Work by feel and watch your surroundings. Oh, good point. So, I get that I'm supposed to lead the hostages to safety, but what happens after they're all free? Then it's your turn to get clear of this place, like I told you before. And you'll listen this time. It's too dangerous with your amount of training. But what about... Not another word. You are. Get these chains off of us. Are you here to liberate Border Watch? I might know something that can help. When I heard these painted eyes talking about their demands, I thought we were doomed. Maybe a little flattered that they thought we were worth that much, but, but doomed nonetheless. Anyway, these so called revolutionaries are a chatty bunch. Once the Painted Eye took hold of the fortress and rounded us up, they sent demands to Commander Axius, right? Uh, political stuff. Uh, releasing prisoners across Tamriel, turning Canarthi's roost into a free port. Big, bold asks. I'm not surprised. You could be sitting on the ruby throne and still have problems doing everything they asked. But that's the point. I overheard some painted eyes saying the demands are a ruse. This group doesn't care about politics at all. That I don't know. But they're definitely trying to drag out negotiations for as long as possible. I'm just glad the commander was wise enough not to trust in dealing with them. Thank you for releasing us. If you're looking for more people to free, uh, try the Fortress Smithy. I saw the painted eyes herding a group in that direction before they chained me up. You're uh, certain it's safe to head to the cellars? Just don't wind up taking our place. I'm afraid I'm no good for a reimbursement rescue. <laughs> Eight, grace your path. were good chains you broke. I should know. I made them. But better broken than binding me. I don't hear a battle going on. So I'm guessing you didn't come with a battalion at your back. And once we're clear, the Brigadines storm the gates? Fair enough. But you better move quickly. Whatever these painted eye thugs are doing here, they're getting close. That's what some of my guards were saying at any rate. 
They're searching for something in the fortress. I don't know what they're expecting to find. I've worked this forge for years and I've never seen anything here worth all this trouble. The Painted Eye must know something about Border Watch I don't. That's just what I've been able to piece together from the snippets I've caught. It sounds like whatever they're looking for, it's big, but hard to find. The more I hear, the less it makes sense. I just want to be done with this mess. We'll head out soon. I've spent enough damn time in this smithy. If you're looking for other hostages, try the stables. I could hear Otten blubbering from all the way over here. Huh. I only took it easy on these mercs because I was surrounded. Now that there's an escape, I'm taking it. Any painted eye I can't avoid. We'll see what four straight years of hammering have done for my arm strength. Whoever you are, please help me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If oh, you're here. If you're here, have the painted eye gone? Are we safe? They do? Oh, they, they do. Then, 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 what are we supposed to do? If they catch us trying to escape, they'll probably drag us off like that scholar. And R.K. knows what tortures these radicals are putting him through. One of the other hostages said he was studying alien history. When the painted eye caught wind of that, they couldn't haul him off to the keep fast enough. Let's get out of here before they come back. Y you want me to what? By myself? No, 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 please, please, please. I I'm not a fighter. I I'm not even sneaky. I I'm just a stable hand. If you leave me, it's only a matter of time before the painted eye puts my hand on a spike. I'll do whatever you say. Just get me out of here. They split everyone up. I, I think they took some of the others to the guard tower and the smithy. I don't know where they rushed that poor scholar off to, though. Tell me that's the last of them. All this running is drying my scales. Think I had damn near every painted eye on my tail at one point. The good news is, I'm faster than a fireball. Barely. I already ordered Erithal back to Commander Axius's camp. Lead these folks out through the sewers and meet her there. An Aeliad. Ah, damn. So these painted eye bastards really are after it. Never is such a thing as coincidence. It's time I come clean. Aerithal and I didn't travel to Border Watch just to play heroes. We came to do a job for the Thieves Guild. That's mostly right. Somewhere beneath this fortress is an Aeliad ruin. One the garrison doesn't know about. Erithal and I were hired to steal a relic from it. A powerful one. 
and it looks like the painted eyes here for the same damn thing. Not sure. The Mur who hired us to steal the thing sure was afraid of it falling into the wrong hands, though. And I think these painted eye nutters qualify. At least with Aerithlo safely out of the way, we only have the relic to worry about. Aerithlo. If I turn around and you're standing behind me, then so help me. Seeks, how am I ever going to become a legend if I run at the first sign of trouble? Running is half the job. Not that you would know. Well, never running is what'll set Lady Twilight apart from the rest. Enough with the Lady <clears throat> Look. I'm going to need a moment to smack some sense into my pupil. Head into the keep and see if you can find the scholar. I'll be right after. We're going to review the lesson on following instructions. you treat esteemed scholars on the mainland? I am Teldundindo of Sunhold. The Teldundindo... Who are you? Finally! Someone besides these painted eyes. They threatened to break my left thumb if I didn't tell them what they wanted. That's my writing thumb. How did this ruin suddenly become common knowledge? It took me, Teldundindo of Sunhold, years to even learn about its existence. Fine. What do you need? Beneath Borderwatch's crypt, I believe. Specifically, beneath the tomb of the Keep's architect. Though I don't know which tomb is hers. Forgive me, but I told all of this to the Painted Eye. I had no choice. There was one thing I never volunteered to the Painted Eye, and they didn't know to ask. The crypt is locked tight. I instructed Commander Axius to lock it up so no one would disturb the location while I conducted my research. <laughs> Not that it matters now. Captain Axius put the key in his office, but who knows if the Painted Eye ransacked it yet. I'd hurry. I hope you appreciate the renowned Teldundindo giving you the honor of being the first to enter that ruin. It's only been the work of decades. Why wouldn't he? I am Teldundindo of Sunhold. When I say there is a discovery that will put a backwater like this on the map, the wise man listens. Thankfully... Commander Axius is smarter than his occupation would indicate. It's an appellation of necessity. Teldundindo was a popular name in the Somerset Isles for my generation. There were five other Teldundindos in my class at the College of Sapiarchs alone. I can't have my work confused for any lesser Teldundindos. Right, friend. 
You get the key. I'll keep tabs on the painted eye. Aerithel will lead the scholar to safety. And after that, she won't come back. Right? Understood. Lesson learned. All right, Mr. Scholar. The way to freedom is just a quick romp through the castle sewers. Sewer? I'm a distinguished fellow of the College of Sapiox. Do you expect me to muck about in filth? Oh, it'll be fine. You won't even smell it after a few minutes. Unless you're planning to keep those robes, because, whew, that is not going to wash out. over with, I suppose.
Over here. The Painted Eye are already inside. We need to keep after them. Let's get looking. The entrance is in one of the tombs, right? Continue the ritual. I've nearly gained control. I hear them. Up ahead. Let's get going. The relics got to be behind that barrier. We've got to stop whatever it is they're doing. Quickly! See that loony coming to stop us. Keep going. Nearly there. Gods, I hope that did it. One way to find out. Oh, come on. We smashed all the things. Fools! Nothing can disrupt this ritual while I possess the power of... Now, 
Let's get out of here. This whole place is coming down. I wouldn't come back, but I heard yelling echoing up from a grate, and I was worried, so I followed, and it was slippery, and... Thank you. If it weren't for you, we couldn't have stopped the Painted Eye. You mean it? It was a pretty dramatic entrance, wasn't it? Maybe I should practice. Don't push it. Can you believe it? We saved Border Watch! People here will be telling tales of our skullduggery and daring do for... for at least a week. This might really be the birth of Lady Twilight's legend. That's the big climax. I mean, I'd discourage any unflattering references to falling on my ass, but you can't pay for a debut like that. Well... I was helping the great Teldon Dindo tiptoe through the sewer when we come across this huge rat. That ninny started shrieking at a pitch so high, the rat must have thought it was a mating call, because it went tearing off after him. Sort of. So the rat had him cornered, but I killed it. Took some doing, like I said, big rat. After the commotion was over, I heard yelling coming up from a grate nearby. That spooked Teldon Dindo again. He ran off, so I decided to follow the voices. Well, that led to an aqueduct, which led to an eyeless slaughterfish nesting pool, which led to me running, slipping, and falling down to you. I don't know what you and Seeks were doing down there, but I'm sure it was important too. Now that this Border Watch gig is all settled, Sleex and I need to get back to the Guild before someone else snags an even bigger job. The Legend of Lady Twilight won't be born from resting on my laurels. Of course! I'm not going to become the greatest thief in all of Tamriel by sitting on my duff, will I? I mean, you saw what it did back there. That's an arse of action. Be a waste of great potential. I've had jobs go better. Uh, much, much, much better. But all things considered, this could have gone a lot worse for us. You mean the one Aerothal turned into a couch cushion? I don't expect the buyer is going to pay us for her sculpture of the two moons. The job's a wash. Yeah, yeah, I guess we did. I don't think we're going to stick around to collect, though. Commander Axius is going to have a lot of questions, and I don't want to give him an excuse to keep us here. Better Aerithel and I just get back to the Guild. Now I need to figure out how to tell the Guild that we didn't get the relic. They won't be happy. What do you mean? I have the relic right here. Oh, careful. Still got bits of Painted Eye Lady on it. What? When did you? When you were all, oh, look at the ceiling, it's coming down around us. This is why I should take the lead next time. Absolutely not. I've got a camp full of liberated hostages, and my scouts tell me there's a significant drop in painted eye activity within the fortress. But I want to hear it from someone who's seen things firsthand. What's the situation in Border Watch? Damn fine work! 
I'll get my troops together and we'll mop up the stragglers. So much for those experts. You did the work of both of them, and most of us for that matter. Border Watch is in your debt. This is all the payment I could muster. If there's a chance we can repay what you've done for us, my garrison is at your disposal. You have my word. Make our preparations to mop up the dregs of the Painted Eye and resume possession of Border Watch. Storming a fort is never easy, even if you know the layout like we do. After that, well, I expect I'll be asked to resign my commission. Because no one has use for a fort commander that loses his own bloody fortress. Well, at least we've gotten the people out safely. That's enough for me. I'll get their home back and then I'll lay the sword down. I gathered that much from debriefing the hostages. The painted eye was after something in that ruin. The one that High Elf Scholar was badgering me about. All the years I've commanded this fort, and I had no idea what was under my feet. Make our preparations to mop up the dregs of the painted eye and resume possession of Border Watch. Storming a fort is never easy, even if you know the layout like we do. After that, well, I expect I'll be asked.
cities are as alive. We simply must do something about the business, brother. These chambers are much too small for our lifestyle. I realize that, Scipion, but the Fangfrills have us by the throat. What am I to do? Scipion can say what he wants about this city, but you don't have strapping, smoldering-eyed strangers walk into your suites and chain and all. Alas, were I only in the mood for some distraction? Damnable Fangfurls. With the Empire gone, the Fangfurls gang controls all trade in Blackwood. They're run by Pungent Adder. Every fifth coin in the region ends up in his coffers. This makes business difficult for my brother and I. Perhaps we could enlist your help? If we had one of their business ledgers, I'd have an understanding of the Fangfurl's operations. Perhaps even find a weakness ripe for exploiting. If you could procure one of those ledgers for us, my brother and I would pay you handsomely. If you get us a ledger, I'm certain we can put it to good use. Rumor has it the Fangfurls have a bookkeeper, Lerar Droth, who lives in town. I'd wager you could find a ledger in his home. It's just around the corner, across from the bridge. I know his name is Lerar Droth, but the Fangfurls make him lead a quiet life to conceal his identity, I imagine. But all the muscle on their payroll visits him for late-night liaisons. Very clandestine, the whole thing. But not to my keen eyes. You can learn a great deal from a business ledger. Where money comes from, where it goes. And then all you need to do is apply a little pressure at a weak point. I don't know exactly what we'll find, but I do know whatever it is. I can exploit it. The Happy Averno Shipping Company was gifted to my brother and I by our dear departed uncle. Formerly, it was one of Blackwood's main trade enterprises. We thought with a little elbow grease, it might prove a profitable venture. We discovered our uncle's affairs were more... precariously poised than described, for one. Many of his charters and contracts were voided by the Three Banners War. The Fangfurls did the rest. They came for everything they could steal.
I love cities. The rude people, the noise, the chaos. Is it strange that I find it comfortable? Hear ye, card sharps and collectors! Test your wits and courage in a brand new card game, Tales of Tribute! Don't even think about it. I'll call the guard. Hear ye, card sharps and collectors! Test your wits and courage in a brand new card game, Tales of Tribute! I saw some rather unsavory ruffians skulking about. Fang furls, I'm sure. Oh, they wouldn't dare approach us directly. We're safe enough, Julius. All the same, I'd rather you not venture outside without me, brother. The Fang furls continue to sniff around our skirts. If we don't move quickly, there won't be a happy Averno shipping company left to save. Did you find the ledger my brother asked about? I'd like a look. Julius has no head for sums. Let's see. Ah, it seems the Fangfurls have their thumbs in some very dirty pies. I'm not one to talk, given where my hands have been. I have an idea. If we can draw out Pungent Adder himself, we can topple him and his gang. By gifting Pungent Adder some umbrage, looking at this ledger, I see two morsels dangling before us. Firstly, according to this, the Fangfurls use dead drops to issue and receive orders. If we steal those drops, we disrupt their operation. We sent Pungent Adder a more personal message. It seems he has a barrel of Oleander Coast Reserve waiting at the docks. Let's say we... Season it with something foul. Make it as pungent as the Adder himself? While you sabotage the dead drops and taint his wine, Julius and I will write a signed letter to make his blood boil. Then it's just a matter of combing the stinking depths of Leowin until we find someone that can put the letter in his hands. Hang on to them, I suppose. They might be useful to peruse after all is said and done. Find out who's worth trusting, and who's happily squirming in bed with Adder. Uh, the cask is at the docks, so I'm sure there will be something on hand. Pitch, bilge water, fish, anything will do. Just try not to get caught doing anything unseemly in public, hmm? No sense mixing business with pleasure. Hang on to them, I suppose. They might be useful to peruse after all is said and done.
You'll see more than horses come through here. Don't take nothing matters. We're all going to die. It's just you seem to be time. respectable but again. Be back. I think you got away with it this time.
place is a great area for harvesting. Good.
I kill for the Prince of Destruction. They smell mortals. Quick, send me into battle. Those were fang furls, weren't they? Yes! They grabbed the two brothers and dragged them out of here. Horrid. But it's none of our business. Right behind you, partner.
Hear ye, card sharps and collectors. Test your wits and courage in a brand new card game, Tales of Tribute. Did you hear about the battle at Fort Redmayne? The Black Finn Legion and the Ivory Brigade won the day. Thanks to those mercenaries from Leowin that I told you about. Yes, you are the smartest lizard in Gideon. But I heard Nibu's Dagon actually.
you hear about the battle at Fort Redmayne? The Blackfin Legion and the Ivory Brigade won the day. Thanks to those mercenaries from Leowin that I told you about. <laughs> yes, you are the smartest lizard in Gideon. But I've heard Nehru's Dagon actually appeared. See, I told you they'd come, Scipion. Not now, Julius. Our friend could be ambushed at any moment. from these bindings. Uh, thank the divines. Those fang furls have unpleasant knot work. Let's not linger here. Shall we meet back at our office? We made it back safely and burned our sodden silks. I still feel filthy. We're both going to need a long, hot bath after all this. But what's more important is that we stood up to the fang furls and won. Absolutely. Now that you've stripped the fang furls of their leader, the Empire will dismantle itself, which opens up a great deal of business opportunities. None of which would be possible without you. Take this with our deepest thanks.
The whole affair has left poor Skippy on so dreadfully dense. He collapsed from exhaustion as soon as we got back. He has such a fragile disposition. Don't worry about him. I won't let him out of my sight. Now that this matter is settled, Scipion and I can begin restoring the Happy Averno Trading Company. My first priority is to find us somewhere else to live. I don't mind close quarters, but the two of us are accustomed to a certain lifestyle. A few? But we don't want to merely restore it to its original profitable status. My brother and I always strive for more. We rely on our ingenuity for success. Our dear uncle was rather kind-hearted when it came to debts. We'll change that. Crumble before the might of Mayroon's day. How does this mortal realm give us problems? Champion has arrived!
You there. I have something for you. Greetings. I bear a message to you from the sly T1, spymaster in service to Keshu the Blackfin. Ahem. <clears throat> it reads, Meet me at the graveyard east of Gideon. Need your help. Urgent. T1 did not want to disclose too many details. This is a private matter, and he is always careful with information. I am sorry I cannot tell you more. I am but the messenger. He awaits you in the graveyard. He will tell you everything there. I erect the spine of gratitude. Do not let Tiwan's desire for discretion worry you. Please, go to the graveyard. Help him if you can. He is egg brother to me, along with Keshu, Basuruk, and Zosin. We grew up together in the village of Sikhat Yol. If you trust Keshu, you can trust Tiwan. But I should let him speak for himself once you meet with him. It is a quiet place where secrets can safely be spoken aloud. But as Spymaster, Tiwan could achieve the same secrecy in many places inside the city walls. It is curious, but that is between you and Tiwan. The graveyard lies to the east. I told you not to spook him. I was perfectly civil. Your brand of civility leaves much to be desired. <laughs> ah, good. You've arrived. Your punctuality is appreciated. I am Tiwan, spy master of the Black Finn Legion. I serve General Keshu in all matters of intrigue. Though the matter I need help with is of a more personal nature. I hope I am right in trusting you with it. Straight to it, then. One of our own has gone missing. Zosin, one of our closest companions and Keshu's principal ambassador. My informants tell me he was last seen speaking to a dark elf named Malin Drad. That's where you come in. Something's got him on edge. He won't talk to any of us. The members of the Blackfin Legion are easily recognizable in Gideon. I need someone he won't see coming. I want you to see if you can speak with him and learn what he and Zosin discussed. He's staying at the Egg and Hammer Inn. The method of information extraction is up to you, and I will see you rewarded. All I ask is that you be discreet. Too many prying eyes will ensure Zosin never opens up to us about whatever is going on. Once it was the name of General Keshu's army. Over time, it has come to be synonymous with those who follow her. 
Those of us that have been members of the Blackfin Legion since its inception have been close since we hatched from our eggs. Indeed, it includes Zosin, Vasuruk, Pikiril, and myself. We have followed Keshu the longest of anyone. Ah, I still remember when Keshu had to rescue Zosin during our rites of maturity after he fell into a patch of quicksand. He has grown distant lately, meeting in secret with other mages, disappearing for days at a time. There is something troubling him that he does not want his egg siblings to know about, but I believe he might have told Malin Drad. He is an odd one, but no villain. An accomplished mage and expert on the plains of oblivion. He put his conjuration skills to work in service of the Ebonheart Pact, though he has since retired to spend his days drinking and poring over old tomes. Like most arrogant mages, he enjoys making sure others are aware of his superiority. He's a talker. My mistake was not stopping Voss before she confronted him directly. He doesn't want trouble with the Blackfin Legion, so he's playing coy now. Voss Haruk, likely the finest warrior in Gideon, next to Keshu herself, and certainly the strongest of our ranks. She grew up with the rest of us in Seekhart Zol, and much like myself, has served the Blackfin for many years. Apologies. It's Keshu's nickname. Voss was actually the one to witness the event that started it. During one of our trials, Keshu emerged from the dark waters of the swamp to kill three Naga. Like a black fin on the prowl, Peak Iril wrote. No, I have not informed her. Yet. She is very busy, as you are no doubt aware. Her claws are full with the fallout from your encounter with those crazed Dagonists. I wish to keep her in the dark for a moment. She has enough to worry about. Thanks for your help. Word of advice, step lightly around the Dark Elf when you speak with him. He scares easy. I think he soiled his robes when I first asked him about Zosin. T1 says that's my fault, though I do not see how. I have great love for him, but we have always been opposites. When we were hatchlings, I was busy bloodying my scales, while he was mixing tinctures. He is brave, and he is often too clever for his own good. I worry for him. No clue, but Zosin is a master conjurer and a veteran of many battles. I have no doubt that whatever trouble he's gotten himself into, it will not get the better of him. Still, I believe he needs our help, whether he asks for it or not. Dance, my he has shoulders as broad Spin as and gels. swirl. Oh, oh, but don't singe the rug. 
I have dreams about Kaya's streets. Welcome, welcome. Another adventurer comes seeking the wisdom of Malindrad. Eh? What will it be this time? Conjuration training? Escort through the Greater Plains, perhaps? I am not drunk. I am retired. Do you know how long I served those ungrateful wretches of the Ebonheart Pact? And was my severance in accordance with my service? Ha! Ah, but that's all changed now. Someone finally saw my value. I'm set for life! The very same. To think some consider him my equal in conjuration. Ah! Ridiculous. A true expert knows you never fall in love with your own conjured servants. I tried to talk him out of it, but he just kept raising his offer. He wanted a special ritual stone. <laughs> I didn't have one, but I taught him the spells to make use of it. And we spoke of Doomvault Porsixit, a place that might contain such a relic. I told him to just summon a new servant. They're all the same. <laughs> As if a novice could understand the inner workings of a runic conduit intrinsically linked by its very nature to the chaotic creation of kin. Ha! Honestly, talking to you is making me sober. You're worse than a giant lizard woman. The damn fool? I told him to stick to flame Atronox. Sure, they can be nice to look at, but they're made of fire. He preferred to summon kin. Warriors from the Deadlands and beyond. Not my type, but who am I to judge when the coin is good? East out of Gideon, where the Blackwood turns to muck. It's hard to miss, but you should prepare yourself if you intend to enter. That's where Zosin was headed. Happy now? My day began too early. Tonight, I'll get some rest. You're back. Any luck? Tiwan went off to do a bit of investigating on his own, but he said he would return soon. Did you manage to get anything out of that idiot Malin Drod? Ugh. These vaults make my scales itch. There's a power to them. More tempting to mages than most, I suspect. Did Malin say what Zosin's after? Love. Oh, not this again. By seed and spleen, I would bet anything that he's trying to reach Zyria.
It's a long story. Back when the Blackfin Legion went to war against the Akaviri alongside the Ebonheart Pact, Zosin summoned an entire cohort of Dramora warriors to help turn the tide. Zeria was among them, more loyal to Zosin than all the rest. They fell for each other on the battlefield. Then Zeria died for him. Of course, that's what conjured servants do for their masters. But Zosin didn't see it that way. Not with her. Wait, here comes T1. Zosin hasn't contacted anyone else in the Legion. Tell me you have something. He's looking for Zeria. Ah, I should have guessed. Well, that explains why he didn't tell us anything. Zeria. It's been a few years since I've heard that name. I take it things went better for you with Malin Drog than they did for Voss. No surprise there. Tell me what you know. A ritual stone. I suppose that makes sense. I assume Voss told you that Zeria died fighting for Zosin some years back. When a Dramora dies, it reforms on its home plane. But it takes a considerable amount of time before it can be summoned again. My theory is that this ritual stone Zosin went to gather might be able to circumvent the amount of time it would take to summon Zeria. Look, you've already done what I asked, but I could use your help for just a little longer. I need you to enter Doom Vault Porsixid and find Zosin. Make sure he's safe. He's clever, but there's no telling what kind of horrors await him in there. Voss and I are needed here. Please, find our Egg Brother for us. Try to get him to listen to reason. He doesn't need to rush this. He should discuss it with Keshu and the rest of us. Conjuration is dangerous to begin with. A ritual of this kind? I'm not even sure Zosin knows what could happen if it goes tail up. It's dangerous, even for a seasoned mage like Zosin. Hostile Daedra roam the halls. And I've heard reports that the deeper you go, the stranger things get. Like it's a window into oblivion. Be careful. We're not asking you to die for us. Hello, what's this? Oblivion, take you!
to die here, would I go to the same place as you? An adventurer? What are you doing in this cursed place? Of course he did. I tried to spare him of this. I tried to spare all my egg siblings, but things have gone awry, as I might have expected. You know why I'm here, then. You know about Zyria. Yes. The Ganez Stone. And in my haste, I attempted to summon Zyria to my side immediately. A grave error. These vaults are pure chaos. No place for a stable conjuring. The spell backfired. Sapped me of my magicka and nearly killed me. Wait. The Kinez Stone also suffered from my impatience. Expended like it is now, it's useless. It needs to be recharged. Or this was all for nothing. Take it. <sighs> Find trees like this one that still hold energy. It won't take much, I promise. Find more of these trees marked by runes. The ones next to us have been spent. The energy consumed by my botched attempt at the summoning ritual. But there are more not far from here. The stone is already attuned. You just need to find the trees. It may seem strange. But trees grow even in the realms of oblivion. As on Nern, they are blooming pathways teeming with the energy of their parent plane. That force powers the stone. We'll need more of it if I'm to have any chance of saving Zyria. It is difficult to explain. 
Conjuration requires a focus of two distinct points. Where the entity currently is, and where you wish it to appear. I underestimated the instability of these vaults. The swirling chaos clouded my vision, and I failed. It's more complicated than that. The chaotic energy of Oblivion is bleeding through into Nern, but it's overlapping our reality without replacing what 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 is here. In all my studies, I've never seen anything quite like it. Find more of these trees marked by rune. I have enough magicka to shroud myself in sight. <laughs> Take us!
Many cautioned me when I revealed my love for Zyria. They said she was a demon, incapable of such emotions. That she would use my feelings to manipulate me. Though she is a Dramora, Zyria is different. Exiled from her clan, alone and hunted, simply because she is unique. I know I can protect Zyria as long as I am by her side, just like she once protected me. stop hunting her. We may be on the run for the rest of our lives, but at least we will be together.
Victory is cruel. Defeat is worse. That should be enough. I have my strength back. I will go to Tiwan. Meet me there. you back, brother. Would have preferred not to have to send someone after you. I know. I am grateful to you all, but I had to take this chance. I owe you a debt of gratitude, my newfound friend. Not only for pulling me out of that vault, but for being willing to help me recharge the stone. I won't soon forget it. It should come as no surprise that I intend to attempt to summon Zyria again. However, my egg siblings are divided on whether this is the wisest course of action. I must admit I can be rash where Zyria is concerned. You bore witness to that. Tiwan and I believe Zyria would make for a powerful ally in the battles ahead. Having her here now could save lives. On the other hand, Vas Haruk is right to caution that Zyria is an outcast kin. She cut ties with her clan, and they will hunt her. I do not know. Zyria is alone in the Deadlands, newly reformed and already running for her life. I want to believe I can keep her safe here even if it means we might attract more enemies to ourselves. What do you think I should do? Zyria is a powerful ally and friend, and yet an outcast Dramora will almost certainly draw some measure of unwanted attention towards the Blackfin Legion and Gideon. It is a difficult decision. Speak with Tiwan and Vasaruk. We must decide soon. A decision must be made. In this time of strife, do we remain overly cautious and refuse to act? 
Or should we recruit a powerful ally with intimate knowledge of Dagon's forces in the Deadlands? I am, and not only for Zosin's sake. There's a storm coming, friend. If a war with Oblivion itself is in our future, I am not sure our Imperial allies will be enough to help us drive them back. We're going to need all the help we can get. I am the Blackfin Spymaster. I win battles by being better informed than my enemies. Zyria may know something of Dagon's plans, and even if not, she knows the tactics and weaknesses of Daedric forces. I think it is well worth the risk. Of course Zosin wants to summon her. I should have known. But we must consider our course carefully. Having a Dremora in our midst could affect far more than just our own family. You have seen the dangers General Keshu and the rest of us face now. Vaults of Oblivion, cultists in service to Mehrunes Dagon, and tenuous alliances to meet them. Now is simply not the time to take unnecessary risks. Against any other foe, yes, she is of the Deadlands, the home plane of the very enemies we found on our doorstep. An outcast Dramora at our side may only serve to draw the full might of Dagon's armies down on our heads. Think on this. Zyria is a powerful ally and friend, and yet an outcast Dramora will almost certainly draw some measure of unwanted attention towards the Blackfin Legion and Gideon. It is a difficult decision. Speak with Tiwan and Vasaruk. We must decide soon. Were it not for you, I would never have retrieved the stone, and this choice would not be before us now. I will respect your decision. Which do you think is the wiser course? What is the saying among sea rods? Love is blind. Perhaps you are right. Just as I failed to see the wisdom in involving my egg siblings in retrieving the stone, I may not be able to see the value of patience now. Very well. I will not summon Zyria. You owe me no apology, friend. Had you not helped me retrieve the Ritual Stone, we would not be considering its use at all. Perhaps there is another way. I trust Vos Haruk's instincts. The two of you must be right about this. I'll admit, I tend to have a soft spot when it comes to Zosin. I am sure you are right. We may not have Zyria, but the Blackfin Legion is proud to call you an ally. Let's hope it's enough. Take this with my gratitude. You've more than earned it. I am sure you... I respect your wishes. But I'm sorry. I cannot lose this chance. I'm sorry, Tiwan Vasaruk. If I cannot bring Zyria here, then I will go to her. Zosin, wait! See, Tiwan? This is what happens when you fall in love.
Can't resist a passageway that leads to the unknown. Oh, hello. Can you come over here and help me? You look like a hardy soul, unconcerned with the prospect of death by trick, trap, or misadventure. How do you feel about helping a defenseless scholar from Gideon unearth a little history from Undertow Cavern? Oh, and can you swim? Have you heard of Phalevon the Magnificent? He was a famous Nibbanese Minotaur hunter, but his final resting place was lost to time. After years of searching, I think I finally found the site of Phalevon's mausoleum. I hope to recover proof that this is Phalevon's tomb. His armor, helm, and sword would do nicely. But I didn't get far before I found the cavern overrun with goblins and Minotaurs, and parts of it are flooded. I'll pay you well to help me. No one in Leowin realizes that Undertow Cavern is the final resting place of a great hero. Let me secure my belongings and I'll meet you inside. Time to grab the bull by the horns and wade right in! <laughs> I found accounts of Phalevon's burial in a shining mausoleum on a hill outside Leowin. He was laid to rest with his arms and armor, relics of his many victories. This is the place, but goblins infest the caverns, and minotaurs too. You would be, I suppose. Well, Phalevon the Magnificent had a golden helm. He wore armor of impervious mail. And he wielded a sword of exceptional sharpness. The stories say that Phalevon had the most beautiful mail, impervious to sword, arrow, and spear. We don't know much about armor of his era, but he was known as the Magnificent. I can only surmise his armor was quite splendid. Phalevon's sword was so sharp, it was said to be able to cut the air itself. No, that isn't right. I suppose any sword will cut air. Ah, that's it. This one could cut through armor-like air. That's what I was told. As I understand it, the helm was a gift from the Lord of Leowin in gratitude for Phalevon's many heroic deeds in Blackwood. The stories say it was fashioned in the shape of a roaring dragon's face. Well, it has been many hundreds of years. I suppose Phalevon's arms and armor might not be much to look at now, but in any condition they would be of immense historical value. I simply know it. I suppose goblins aren't much of a surprise. They infest many caves in this region, although I had hoped I wouldn't run into any. The Minotaurs I didn't expect. None have been seen so close to Leowin in centuries. That's the very question I was wondering about. Wherever they came from, these minotaurs seem very hostile. Enraged, even. I've heard all kinds of fighting inside. I think they're angry at the goblins. Do minotaurs and goblins get along? That's because it was swallowed by the earth. One night, 700 years ago, people living nearby heard a terrible sound. 
When they came to look in the morning, they found that the whole mausoleum had fallen into the caves underneath the hill. Because the caves beneath this hill were the site of Phalevon's last and greatest battle, the mausoleum was a monument to his victory, as well as his tomb. Until Undertow Cavern swallowed it up anyway. Just the sort of place goblins love. Darksome, dank, and foul. victory. His armor shone by the light of moons or sun. It's just too bad Minotaurs are enraged by shiny objects.
can do it! Imagine how many times this helm saved the heroic Phalevon's head! Except that last time, obviously. I can just picture this sword cleaving savage minotaurs. A pity it's still beyond use now. Hmm. The armor, helm, and sword are all badly damaged. Skeptics might say these could have belonged to anybody. We need to find Phalevon's Horn of Magnificence to settle the question for good. But where is the horn? Why isn't it here? The armor, helm, and sword are all badly damaged. Skeptics might say these could have belonged to anybody. We need to find Phalevon's Horn of Magnificence to settle the question for good. But where is the horn? Why isn't it here? Phalevon's Horn of Magnificence was his greatest treasure. My grandmother told me he made it from the horn of a Minotaur Lord. It had a brass cap inscribed with an intricate design. When Phalevon blew it, echoes rang from the hills for seven days. I am. Mostly. But yes, I have a personal stake in this. Phalevon is a distant ancestor. I grew up on stories of his battles, his magic horn. Oh, could this be about the horn? Grandmother told me the horn's note drove minotaurs mad with fear and rage. But sometimes the horn called minotaurs to battle even when no one sounded it. Maybe the minotaurs are here because of the Horn of Magnificence. Oh, I wondered about that too. House Vero mostly died out long ago, but they were certainly real enough. We can trace a relationship to Phalevon's line on my mother's side. There is truth to my grandmother's tales. I'm certain of it. No. No one outside my family remembers Phalevon. Almost all of the histories that recorded his deeds have been lost. Even his mausoleum vanished. But now I'm close to the proof that Phalevon really existed and was a great hero.
No remorse! horn just as the stories described it did this goblin sound the note we heard it looks like we can get out through here if you don't mind getting a little wet proof of Phalevon's legend. I'll be the talk of Gideon once I bring these trophies home. And yet, I wonder, did the goblins here cause their own troubles by meddling with Phalevon's horn? Or is it dangerous to just keep around? I want to take them back to Gideon and prove, once and for all, that my family's story is true. Fame, fortune, festivities await! But if these relics, especially the Horn of Magnificence, are dangerous, perhaps I shouldn't bring them home. You're right, of course. I will destroy the horn before its curse brings about a real tragedy. Patience, prudence, perspicacity. That's what I should learn from Phalevon. He pushed his luck once too often. We may be bruised, battered, and wet, but we are successful, even without Phalevon's Horn of Magnificence. The other relics have a great story to tell. Thank you. Oh, I shouldn't forget your pay. Come visit me and Gideon sometime. I must remember that the Horn of Magnificence is only one part of Phalevon's legacy. In this case, discretion is the better part of valor. We may be br- I hope to see you again sometime. Although I must confess, now that I've finally found evidence supporting the legend of Phalevon, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do next. I shall. Prudence is my watchword. Good luck with your future adventures. I've spent years chasing the ghost of a great hero, but it is an honor to have met one in person.
You'll see more than horses. Cities are as alive, fickle, and uns. Leowen seems safe.
thought I'd still be alive to see the end. Yet here we are. I don't know where I'll go, but I can't stay here. Bandits destroyed my home, cut down my family, and took everything I had. How can they do this? If they were Imperial rats, I'd understand. But fellow Argonians... Uh, there's not much left, I'm afraid. A warlord named Nazosa moved his people into the nearby ruins. They come every so often and demand our food and supplies. Then they beat us when there's nothing to hand over. Some try to fight back, but without our protectors, we're no match. We call them the Winds. The bandits killed one, and the others refused to leave their isolation and help us. Perhaps you could convince them? An outsider's voice may change their minds. No doubt the village will reward you if the winds see reason. You're the first bit of hope I've seen in a long while. I don't know if it'll work, but talking to the winds can't hurt. Go see Noozle, near the center of the village. He's overseeing the wounded from the last attack. He'll know what to do next. I must. I know it's shameful to abandon your tribe, but staying means too much pain. I see visions of my mate everywhere. Not real ones, just memories. Starting fresh, well, it won't wash away visions. But what else can I do? Stranger wandering. Attack! Mm, a stranger wandering through stone wastes. Have the scavengers arrived to pick the bones of our village? If that's why you came, well, there's not much left. We are already squeezed dry. Ah, uh, yes. She told me about her plans to leave us. Can't say I blame her. When that total zilnek of a warlord Nazosa moved his people into our ruins, shadows crept upon us. At one time, we had protectors to keep us safe, but no more. Those are them. The legendary Four Winds. They defended our village until... One day, they had some big argument. After that, they disbanded. Three moved to the outskirts of the village, and one stayed. She died during a raid by Nazosa's people. Oh, good, good. Slivers of bright sun might poke through this storm with your help. Let's start with Elosi, the sudden gust. She lives on the outskirts of town in a hut to the northwest. I should join you so that she doesn't kill you on sight. Of course. Makes sense you would want to know more. The Four Winds have always wandered this region, defending villages from bandits and such. Ever since our ancestors erected the first hut, four warriors with unique skills have roamed the marsh. No, no. When the wind dies, the title passes to another of their choosing. There is a big celebration with drinks and dancing. And a uh, little bonding, if you understand. We treasure the Four Winds. I do not know why they abandoned us. Well, I already mentioned Elosi, the sudden gust. She glides upon her prey better than the quietest hackwing. Then there is Myrta, the Zephyr Eternal. 
a practitioner of old Argonian magics. Not very sociable, so do not let him get to you. Otumi Ra, the unrelenting gale. Stronger than an ox and tougher than a hajmota. Fun at parties, too. A much nimbler dancer than you would expect. Then there was Satulsa, the steady breath. The only one to stay here and protect us. But no more. When those bandits first came to raid our village, she fought them off easily. We thought that was the end of it. But soon they returned, and something had changed. They cut her down like a rotted tree. We have not been free of them since. As a guess, I would say they are Lutilio, sharp-eyed people. A petty tribe who revel in preying on other Argonians. They build nothing, but have no problem leeching off others to survive. May their spirits never find dirt. Oh, he is a vicious, cackling hyena. The first time I saw him, I swear, his eyes were as black as a well. Quick with a blade, too. He made the first blow when Satul Sa fell. I will never forget his laugh as she pled. Like I said, a total Zilnek. Well, I used to be the local blacksmith. I do good work, nothing special. But it keeps the village doors from falling off and the tools sharp. Since Nazosa, though, all I can do is patch up the injured after a raid. There is nothing left to smith. Of course I have, Ogel. Do you think I can see the wreckage of my village and not feel a fire in my gut? But I am no warrior. I am a smith. It is good to know who you are, even if it brings limitations. I'll follow right along behind you. Doesn't look like she's home. Let's see if we can figure out where she went. Hmm. Nowhere to be seen. But all her belongings look like she was just here. You know, a less confident Argonian might start to take this personally. Not off the top of my head, but she can't be too far. It looks like she was just preparing a meal here, so... Perhaps she went looking for herbs? Let's search around. I think I know a spot. Ah, Elosi, we, we weren't doing anything. You bring a stranger into my home, Noozle? An outsider entering my home unbidden seeks death. You only live because the annoying blacksmith who joins you is familiar to me. But this pause is a temporary state. Speak then. What is so urgent that you would break into my home? Hmm, distressing news. 
It seems my great fear has come to pass. Where then is Satul Sa? She would never leave the villages undefended. Even once we decided our time was at an end, she insisted on staying. Dead? Satul Sa? She was the smartest and wisest of us all. This is impossible. And yet, since Nuzul brought you, it must be true. The consequences of my selfish choice meant the death of my dear friend. Such a bitter lesson. You shall have my aid, if you perform a simple task. When I retired, I buried my blades deep in the ground. Go north to the ruins. Retrieve them for me so that I may avenge Satsul Sa. Be warned, as I made certain they are well protected. My daggers represented a life I thought I left behind. If you are serious about my help, find them, bring them back, and I will become the Sudden Gust once more. You ask to hear a long tale, one that I do not wish to tell, and may not have the right to tell. Be satisfied with this. A tree is not merely its trunk or branches or roots. It is also its seed. And so a tree without seeds is nothing at all. Indeed, so it does. I may have failed it, but I cannot change the past. I can, however, change its future. With my weapons, I can fight this Nezosa and defend the stone wastes once more. We're off. Don't worry about me. I can keep up. of daggers in the ruins. They must be Elosis. So, you have skills. Even if you did let me sneak up on you. Let's speak. Your test is complete. And with barely a scale out of place, Impressive. Do you like my blades? The hilt is Kaguti bone, and Mirta himself enchanted them. Back when I could tolerate the withered toad. 
Of course I will. I was always going to. But I needed to see if you could fight by my side. Also, I wanted to finish my meal. I will meet you in the village center, unless you need something more from me. I see. You wish to bring us all back together. Well, a promise was made, and I will keep it. Go southeast to find the dingy hovel where Myrta resides. Look beneath the dirt and rock, and you'll find him. Just don't tell him I sent you. Fight? Good. That Myrta retreated to a cavern for solitude and study. Let's look near there and see if we can find any clues. I had heard that Myrta retreated to a cavern for solitude and study. Let's look near there and see if we can find any clues. These ruins, like nothing I've seen. Perhaps more in the ruins. These runes have the same derivation? Maybe if I replace... Wait. What? Who are you? Why are you interrupting me? Leave here immediately! Oh, you brought that dusty blacksmith from the village? You must need something. That sounds like a whole bunch of not my business. Can't you see I am busy with my studies here? I don't have time to involve myself in the toils of others. Satu Sa brought this on herself. Had she any sense of reason, she'd be alive. Was I not clear? 
Have Nixad stolen my tongue? I said, be gone! Whatever their troubles are, I'm sure it looks much worse to you than it really is. My work, however, could change history. Go! Ka ka ka! You're seeking help from that drunken lout? You'd be better off on your own than with him. But if it gets you out of my scales, you can find him on the southwest edge of the forest near the cliffside. I trust you'll be disappointed. So far, only half successful. Let's go find Otumi Rao's hut. This is his heart. Oblivion, take I'll you! Go ahead and see if I can find him. Shouted, Satulsa. No mud puddles for you, sir. Ah, Kayak. No response. I suppose Mirtau was right. This is the worst I have ever seen Otumi Rock yet. Maybe this is what happens when the life of the party no longer has something to celebrate. Let us see. Wait. I have an idea on how to snap him out of it. A briar that grows out this way might help. The seed is inedible and it smells... awful. Especially to Argonians. If we get a couple of those, the smell will overwhelm him and wake him up. If anything is going to work, that will. I seem to remember a field of waking seeds grows to the east of here. Gather a handful, then come back. I will keep an eye on this hero of legends in the meantime. I should warn you. Some creatures are attracted to the smell. Keep your scales moist. Come on! Get out of there!
That's the last of them. You're back. There's uh, no change here. Archaic. I can already smell them on you. I do not even need to ask. Put them right up to Otumi Rock. Archaic. I can already smell them on you. I do not even need to ask. Put them right up to Otumi Ra's nose. Let him get a big old whiff. Hopefully that snaps him right out. Well, the only plan I have next is gathering more seeds and shoving them right up his snout. He does not have a choice. Our village needs his help. Is awful. Oh, what? Who are you? Oh, what horrific stench of dead mules and fried dung have you thrust upon me? All I wish is a gentle slumber under the open skies and upon the mud. Does not a retired fighter for peace deserve such rest? Speak, brigand. No, my greatest friend, and I hoped one day my mate, if she would ever agree. Dead? How can I bear such enormous tragedy as this? Lay the facts under the stone, stranger. Who has earned my unyielding, roiling anger? A battle against murderers and thieves. These are the types of trials I live for. Or at least I used to. <clears throat> I imagine you and the blacksmith wish to join my struggle for freedom and revenge. Join me. I must celebrate, my friend, and test your mettle. Join me inside. We'll see what you're made of. my newest friend. By joining me, you choose to engage in the challenge of my choice. Only through completing this test of your endurance and stamina shall I know your worth as a warrior. Do you believe yourself prepared? Oh, yes. I can sense that raging fire in your stout heart. I suspect you have slain many a foe in your travels. But if we are to go into battle together, I must put a fire in your belly as well. And so, we're going to do a drinking contest. What else? Show me that you hold the same strong will that makes for the greatest of warriors. Oh, chum, we shall see if you can withstand the greatest of Argonian ales and wines. Plus, this should help numb the rodents gnawing in my head. <laughs> the drinks are in front of me. You may choose what we drink. Be warned, mixing Argonian spirits can fell the stoutest outsider. If you do not believe yourself up to the task, you may leave now. I will call you many rude names as you flee, though. Now choose a drink and get started. All right, I'll give this a try. For the village, right? I can keep this up until the void overtakes us all. Uh, I, I don't... I don't feel so good. <laughs> ah, good start. But let's see how you do with even more. Isn't it? I make that myself from whatever I find around the hut. Ha! 
Oh, I thought you'd fall to the ground like good news, Ola. The final one, and still you stand. A will made of true iron you must have. Come, let's speak. Impressive. Such strength, such power, such a stomach. I did not know they made outsiders who could stand against the might of Argonian ale. Would you like to continue? Not as part of the test, just for a wonderful time. Of course, I was always going to. This test was just to see if I would allow you to join me, or cut you down for waking me up. But you passed. Let us link arms and bring the fight to those who slew my dear Satulsa. Two of the three? Let me guess. Myrta refused. Do not be fooled. He has a good soul, but his mood is as legendary as my strength. Here, take my banner and place it on the cliff above my hut. He won't be able to stand knowing I'm going into a fight that he isn't. So don't worry. He'll be there. Have no fear for the blacksmith. Some waking seeds shall fix him up. Still standing, chum? Legs aren't wobbling from fear or drink? No, I don't suppose I need worry about that for someone with your epic fortitude. Voss, do you see? The villagers join us. Our arrival gives them hope. This is your work. Ho ho, more than enough. These people feel a deep fire in their bellies, but someone needed to fan it until the flames shoot out their mouths. We have done this very thing. And with the addition of three winds of stone wastes, we are unbeatable. You're right, he isn't here with us. But make no mistake, I spent many turns of the season at his side. He's brash and filled with bees, but you'll find few with stronger character. He'll be here if he isn't lurking around already. Ah, you arrive. And you manage to rouse Otumi Ra. An impressive act, especially for an outsider such as yourself. I feel grateful for your efforts in bringing us back together. Now, however, we shall see how you fare in a fight. Of course I am. How silly to even ask. The winds of stone wastes have stood up to much worse than a flimsy army and a paper mud crab such as this warlord Nezosa. This will be no trouble. That is true. Perhaps you are right that I should not underestimate the danger that might be present behind those walls. But by the same token, 
He should not have killed one of our own. If he sought to frighten the winds, he failed. Uh, it is good to see you. At least I think that is you. I could be having ale visions again. <sighs> anyway, you have done it. The winds have reunited, ready for battle. Because you convinced them. Well, two of them, at least. Well, as Otumi Ra carried me back to the village, we started discussing you, and how strong, courageous, and wise you are. And attractive, too. Did I mention that? We hoped you might join their assault on the ruins, help drive out Nazosa and his dry-scaled thugs. There needs to be a fourth wind. That's what the legend tells us. If you join them with this, they cannot fail. Plus, I will pay you more. Lead the charge when you are ready, outsider. The winds will be at your back. Once again, I fight by your side, Otumi Ra. My scales have itched for this moment. Let your blades sing their horrible song, Elosi. I delight in the tune. Under attack! Those dumb villagers think ah, they can take my us! friend! Up here! Hold I have line, need you of you! And protect those weapons! Oh, I can feel the power surging in me once again. Such a battle! Do you think you can help me with this thing? In my youth, I could topple three such pillars with a swift kick. But all things age, even me. Why does anyone want to push anything over? To smash stuff, of course. You outsiders ask such ridiculous questions. I want the catapults below in splinters. So yes, I can push this most of the way. I just need your extra shove to finish the task. Oh, I was hatched ready, you hilarious Deke Biko. Here we go! Crushing like none other! Now hurry, seek out Nazosa. Psst. Outsider. Over here. Quickly. Look, up above us. Prisoners from the village kept for sick entertainment. How many of them are thought dead, never to return home? I can release them, but I'll need your help. You see those pulleys up there? They control the cell doors. I can cut them, but someone needs to open the grate in front of them. Under the southwest tree, you'll find a crank. Turning it will open the grate. Then, I can free them. Ha. Huh. Don't worry. This I can manage. Just open the grate for me so I can work. Once you turn the crank, I can reach the other, and the cell should unlock. Free. 
I never thought to see the day. Thank you. Continue the fight. Remove these guests from our home. Finally, you show. Boss, I have need of you. Perhaps you are surprised to see me here ahead of you? Mirta has many secret abilities that baffle the unlearned. But you reached this far on your own, so... I am impressed. I would ask your assistance in my attempts to clean out our guests. Oh, please. You knew I would show the moment you placed that banner. Did you really think I'd let Otumi Ra revel in all the glory by himself? Rubbish. He knows that he's useless without me here. I think I know how Nazosa killed Satusa. Do you see these weapons? Some mammal liquor enchanted them. With these, a handful of lymph fins could fell the strongest of warriors. This is how they killed Satursa, and mean to kill the other winds. We destroy them, of course, but I need the binding word for the enchantment. I refuse to leave these weapons alone, so you need to retrieve it. There's a library of sorts just to the east. Search through the books in there, and you should find it. Look for a scroll that was recently manhandled by brutes. I should have come down here more often when I lived in the village. These tomes are out of date, certainly, but an interesting history. Well, I suppose we're in a battle and shouldn't delay. Did you find the binding word? Ah, astute. There is hope for you yet. I'll make sure these weapons trouble us no more. Now we can land the final blow, and the Warlord won't have a counter. Remove his symbol of authority. Walk into his chambers and pull down his banners. That way, his troops will know he is broken. If they don't outright turn on themselves, they'll likely steal what they can and flee. Hired hands are fickle. Now then... Let me see what I can do with these. We earned! We took everything else! Time to take your life! 
The day is ours! They did it! The bandits flee! The village belongs to us again. Sing for the winds. San, bless the winds. They freed us. Here you stand. The stranger who drifted through the mud to save us. And to think, I assumed you were a crow come to pick our bones. We can live in peace once again. And the legend of the winds will continue. Who can ever guess the wind's direction? But I choose to believe so. We reminded them of their strength when they worked together. I suppose you came for the promised reward. From my claws to my tail, I say this in earnest. You deserve this. I do not think we will have much trouble rebuilding. Plenty of supplies in the marsh. And of course, we have the best blacksmith who ever wallowed to craft our tools. <laughs> My spine feels electric from all this hope. Not quite used to it. After we rebuild the village and I know we are truly safe, I may start selling my wares in other towns. Go north to dry skin lands. I want to be like the winds, traveling around, taking in the sights, living a better life. What if we are wrong? Not even my strength can hold back an entire brigade. Just stay out of it, Hinjas. We have lost too many lives already. Yours need not be included. Ah, you look strong and capable. I could use your help. Tensions between my tribe and the Imperials who've set up camp nearby are close to a breaking point. While I often solve issues with my Wamasu-like strength, I fear it will not be enough here. Members of my tribe have gone missing. We captured an Imperial Lieutenant to question him about it, but everyone is so angry already. If my tribe executes him before we actually get to the bottom of this, it will only make things worse. 
What this situation needs is an outsider's perspective. My people are too enraged to think clearly, and the lieutenant will not talk to us anyway. We need someone outside the tribe to mediate. You would be compensated, of course. What do you say? I am sure our combined heroism will save my tribe from this plight. The Imperial Lieutenant is just ahead. While you speak with him, I will head to the Northern Swamps to continue investigating. Meet me there when you are finished. Ah, that was Olek, a member of the tribe and a good friend. He is adamant that the Imperials are responsible for our missing people, but does not think I should involve myself. His opinion is shared by many, sadly. My heroic deeds have caused a few mishaps of late. In addition, everyone is convinced of the Imperials' guilt. But an intelligent, seasoned adventurer such as myself is more skeptical. Mainly because we, uh, have no evidence. No idea. But hopefully speaking with the lieutenant will shed some light on that. If his people are innocent, then he might help guide us to the real enemy. And if they are not... Then I will strike them down with the power of a Grot Oak. The Imperials from Leowin have been expanding their territory eastward for some time. Now they creep like moss on the edges of what my tribe considers our land. At first, they were just a nuisance. We assumed the Swamp would deal with them in time. No, just the opposite. They wished to work with us to help expand their holdings and offered valuable goods in trade. But my tribe turned their tails at them. Too many times our people have been pushed from our homes with fake promises. The Imperials left us alone, but refused to leave the area. Eventually, tension turned to arguments. Shortly after, members of our tribe began to vanish. It was like flame to a dried tree. We told him just to stop trying to recruit strangers for this. He will not listen. Debella's sacred buttocks. Am I glad to see someone that's not part of this tribe? Maybe you can do something. I've tried telling these lizards that my soldiers have nothing to do with their disappearing people, but they won't listen. I'm an officer in Leowin's Ivory Brigade. We've been trying to expand trade routes out here, but we're not kidnapping people. My brigadines are missing too. I was pursuing a lead to find them when I got ambushed and thrown in this cage. I was investigating the great number of beasts that have started congregating by the water's edge. It's like they've taken over. Nothing about it seems natural. My theory is that those monsters are responsible for our missing people. They're vicious, and the sheer number of them all at once is undoubtedly lethal. But my commander's skeptical. He thinks the Argonians are retaliating for us getting too close to their territory. And if he gets wind of this, he'll respond in kind. Outsider, this Imperial speaks lies. Our people did not vanish until they arrived. I understand that Hinjas asked for your help, but he can be overzealous. We have the situation under control. Our prisoner feigns ignorance, but he does not tell the whole truth. This dry skin was found trespassing in our swamps to the north. Always excuses with these Imperials. First they show up claiming to seek trade, 
When we ask that they leave, they camp near our borders, and more arrive each day against our wishes. Suddenly, our people go missing. This is no coincidence. I wish I knew. There is a supposed peace between my people and the Imperials. Keshu the Blackfin ensures that. But that does not mean some do not still break rank, especially if they want to lay claim on a new land. But why not just attack us? Heemjoss is enthusiastic to a fault. He thinks himself a hero, but usually just ends up getting himself into more trouble. This is no different. If you insist on helping, then I suggest you drag him out of the northern swamps before he hurts himself. There you are. This is where our investigation begins. Let us look around. There are footprints ahead, toward the water. This is where I gallantly apprehended the lieutenant. We are on the right track. Let us continue. Day will be ours. Argonians and Imperials. It looks like they were fighting back to back, defending themselves. Their wounds are jagged too. Perhaps we will find survivors farther up this way. I think I understand. These totems, the dye was used to paint runes upon them, which must have activated their latent magic. But those runes are only known to this tribe. The Imperials could not have done this. It had to be one of our own. With these runes, whoever is responsible turned this totem and the others into very powerful lures. That explains the excess of creatures coming out of the swamp. 
They would be drawn out in droves by this kind of magic. I do not know. It is incredibly dangerous, even with someone as skillful as me protecting the tribe. These creatures do not discriminate who they hunt. We need to stop this. I am not sure. My brute strength and fortitude do not lend themselves easily to the inner workings of tribe magic. But perhaps fortitude is all we need. Let us try smashing it. You go first. I will save my strength in case we have need of it. Despite my yelping, I was not afraid, I assure you. There is no shame in being frightened, of course. If you are alarmed, do not worry. You are safe with me. Anyway, that was a great effort on your part. But perhaps hitting it is not enough. This is now beyond my capability. I believe the magic of these totems and the secret to destroying them would be known by the elder of my tribe, Naish Nurwal. I think we need to speak to her if we are to learn anything more. She should be back in the village. I will head there first and explain the situation, but I believe you should speak with her as well. Naish Nurwal, um, does not always take my counsel. I will meet you there. I will return and speak to Naish Nurwal. Meet me there when you can. Of Imperials and our own? Yes, fighting together, and their wounds were jagged, as if they were from mighty beasts. Himjas, if this is I appreciate story, your willingness to help, outsider. But you must understand. Himjas has a strong heart, but he often invents problems in order to test his heroism. This matter with the Imperials is likely simpler than he insists. What? This is a very serious accusation. The idea that one of our own caused so much pain, it is as hard to chew as thick bark. Is what Heem Joss said about the bodies true? Please, tell me all that you know. The creatures in the swamp are incredibly vicious, even in small doses. It's no wonder so many have fallen prey. It seems our prisoner was not lying to us. Those totems are ancient and very powerful. Meddling with them is quite dangerous. The one at the top of Zal Irisotl? I'm not surprised. Dismantling lures as powerful as this will require going inside the Zanmir. Unfortunately, as time abandons all Irisotl, its depths filled with nightmarish horrors. We have no choice but to venture inside the Zanmir. But we do not have enough people to do so safely. We have lost too many of our warriors. You are here as a mediator. Perhaps you could convince the Imperials to assist us in this matter. Good. Hopefully he will be willing to appeal to his superiors. Regardless, I will make sure he is freed. Take this. It is a ward that will unlock the main entrance of Zal Irisotl. I will gather as many warriors as I can, and meet you there. Gods, this can't be happening. 
I heard what was discussed. I can hardly believe it. They were so quick to pin the blame on us, and the whole time it was one of their own people? I suppose it doesn't matter now. We've all lost friends. What we need to do is fix this. The Ivory Brigade is far from petty. I'm sure there will be some who are unhappy about it, but even they will understand the need to work together in order to stop this. I'll speak with my commander if I'm free to go. I'm sure I can convince him. My apologies on behalf of my tribe, Lieutenant. Let us get you out of there. I will meet you at the ruins. The entrance to Zaw Irisatl should be along the bottom of the structure. Let us hurry. There, the door. It is quite dark in here. Why don't you lead? You relics, why will you not stop? Ninjas, I am sorry. I cannot disable the lures, no matter how hard I try. My touch causes them to fade, yet they return within seconds. When I take my axe to the stone, my blade only dulls. I blame the Imperials for our missing people. I was a fool. I was trying to protect my people. Too many times dry skins have come to our swamps in an attempt to claim them. These Imperials seemed no different. I hoped to frighten them. I activated the totems to try and chase them off. Yes, our people once used them as a means to gather food and resources. When the totem is active, creatures are drawn to its aura like a kotugava to blood. I did not know how dangerous this ancient magic truly was. I did not understand my actions were the cause of all this. Not until I heard about the bodies you and Heemjoss found. And once I realized, it was already too late. Yes, but it is impossible. Nothing I do works. The magic replenishes itself within mere moments. I am truly sorry. We should evacuate our people to Gideon before Hutan Zell is overrun. Help is here, my friend. Let us begin. Nahish Nurwul. And the Imperials? I'm sorry. This is my fault. The time for blame can come later. We're here to help. Olik's actions were foolish. These lures have lain dormant for a reason. The magic within them is dangerous. Still, the actions of the past cannot change the present. What is done cannot be undone. But we can ensure that no one else gets hurt. A ritual. 
To dismantle the lures, they must be touched above ground and below within a few moments of one another. It requires an act of unison. Perhaps it is a test from those that came before us. A lesson of sorts. Now it falls to us to learn it. The Imperials agreed to post their soldiers above ground. They're already in position and awaiting orders. Once you activate a lure below, its partner above the surface will flicker, signaling the Imperials to act. Do you understand? I will return above to coordinate our efforts. If something were to go wrong, I want to be able to help remedy it. You and Himjas must dismantle the lures down here and rejoin us when you are finished. Good luck to you, outsider. And thank you. Thank you. We will fix this, Olik. Do not worry. Come and take us! up above are succeeding as well. their choices. and run back to the village. Meet you there. You have my thanks, Lieutenant. 
as well as my tribe's friendship. Thank you. I assure you, we will do everything in our power to make sure this is the start of a prosperous friendship between our people. A great success. We are victorious and strong, and all mostly intact. The totems have fallen silent above ground. I assume you and Him Joss were also successful from below. The beast should move on now. I do not think they will trouble us any more than they did before all this. We will all be safe. In large part because of your efforts, we were able to find common ground and the desire to communicate. I have personally apologized for our responsibility for the bloodshed, and they have been gracious enough to accept my sincerity. Olik was trying to protect his people, and we understand that. But his actions cost lives on both sides, and for that he must be punished. It pains me, but it is necessary. Olik understands, and he will face his punishment bravely. You have my enduring gratitude, Traveler. Should your adventures ever bring you this way again, know that you may call us allies. I think Himjas was looking for you. Be sure to say your farewells to him before you continue your journey. The tribe will be telling stories of this for many years to come, I am sure. The mighty Himjas, with his faithful partner, slashing through horrors in the darkness of ancient ruins without a shred of fear. Thank you for your help, friend. The tribe will flourish now that we are no longer fighting with the Imperials. As for me, I will continue performing heroic deeds across the coast. Great heroes like us never stay in one place too long. Please, take this. Not only did you fight bravely, but you ensured a truce between my tribe and the Imperials. You saved many lives today. I will make sure no one leaves you out of the grand stories of our heroism. We did it, friend. We fearlessly pursued the truth, cut through our foes with Wamasu-like strength, bested our enemies, and came out victorious. And I did not get terribly injured. This is a great day. No, though I imagine some will be. I happen to understand what it is like to be impulsive and overconfident at times. I see why he did it. And in my heart, I know I can forgive him. Whether he can forgive himself, is a different matter. That I am not sure. But the fact that they put aside their grief and anger in order to help us in the ruins makes me believe that they understand better than I would have anticipated. I hope they forgive him, and that relations between us flourish. Hey! <laughs>
My orders are to observe the ruin, not help you mount a suicidal rescue mission. Then you can observe me kicking every fetching cultist's ass standing between me and my little brother. Who are you? Another of these useless Leowin layabouts? No, you're an adventurer like me. Don't tell me, Zigira roped you into this mess too. My little brother and I answered a job posting seeking adventurers to help explore a newly discovered ruin. Only once the expedition got underway and we were all split up, our employers turned on us. I barely got away. Free my little brother and the others before something terrible befalls them? I don't know if I can do this on my own, but I have to try. Can I count on your help? Or were all the questions just morbid curiosity? I can pay if I have to. There were five, in addition to me, who got duped into this. My brother, Liam, Eolof, a Nord warrior, Adia, a high elf researcher, Dejos, an Argonian scout, and Galor, a wood elf adventurer. Other than my brother, I don't know a lot about them. Not much. Zagira, the woman who hired us, was charming. I didn't buy a story that her expedition was for study, but she paid half our fee up front. I figured they were just treasure hunters looking for plunder. We had no idea they were a cult. About the time they said, don't kill her, we need her for the ritual. And while they were trying to subdue me. Probably saved my life, though. I fought twice as hard knowing they were taking it easy on me. No one else escaped that I know of. We didn't get far with our expedition before things went sour, but the ruin was in pretty bad shape. You'll need a grapple bow to get anywhere quickly. Fortunately, I have a spare. They're simple enough to use, if you've never tried one. All right, but remember, you already agreed to help me. It'd be rude to back out now. But seriously, I need your help. Please don't change your mind. It's Daedric, in origin. Our employer claimed it was recently uncovered, but I have a hard time believing no one noticed it until now. And despite its condition, it doesn't seem that old. Barely any overgrowth at all. None of it makes any sense. A hundred years old at most? I couldn't tell you who built it, or how it came to be demolished, though. I didn't get much time to study it before those fetching cultists tried to throw a sack over my head and drag me off. Just line up your sights with a suitable anchor point, release the bolt, and get ready to fly. Don't worry, they're pretty much designed to do all the work. The worst you'll have to worry about is underestimating the pull and spraining your neck. All right, but remember... the base camp, but be careful. I saw a lot more cultists during my escape than the ones who led me here. It wasn't like this before. We should hurry. The bridge is out, but that support looks sturdy enough for the grapple bow. The 
base camp should be... Eolov! What are those fetchers doing to him? That's Yolov. One of the other adventurers Zagira duped with the setup. They've got him strung up like a new life pony gua. Survey stones my ashy arse. That's a sacrifice if I've ever seen one. We've got to do something. Zagira had us escorting her scholars around the area to place those so called survey stones. Supposedly, they would get the layout of this place in an instant. Bunch of gua dung, clearly. It's sucking the life out of him. I damn well plan to try. It'll be dangerous, though. For Eolov, most of all. That ritual is already feeding off of him somehow. The sudden shock of destroying the stone might kill him. We could try weakening the ritual before ending it entirely. That array by Eolov seems to be the heart of the ritual, but the magic is being drawn to another focal point nearby. Destroying that might lighten the load on Eolov, and the backlash of ending the ritual by force. It's the best chance of saving him. We need to stop that ritual, the sooner the better, but Yolov's chances of surviving go up exponentially if we try picking it apart carefully, instead of smashing the central ray right at the start. The grapple bow should help us search around. I don't know it. I'm making an educated guess. Daedrology is my main field of study, though I tend to avoid getting caught up in their worship and rituals. Mostly, I'm fascinated why anyone would join these fetching cults in the first place. I took an interest in the anticipations of the Tribunal and my ancestors' worship of them before the Three rose to Godhood. Dark Elves aren't the only ones who revere Daedra alongside Divines, but now's not the time for a philosophical discussion. Endure, Nord! The foothold is nearly complete! That voice! Sekira! Eolov. Oh, that's what I was afraid would happen. The strain of snapping that connection to his soul was too much to take. If we aren't more careful, the others will meet the same fate. It was definitely a Daedric ritual, but not your typical sacrifice. Offerings to the princes are usually quick and brutal. This was much more purposeful. I don't know what they were trying to accomplish, but they were using Eolov's soul to power it. The Swits didn't tell us much of their plans before stabbing us in the back, but I've got a rough idea where they were taking the other stones. If we head out the other side of these corridors, we should be on the right path. Be ours. That's it. Well, I'll be. Ardi actually made a break for it. She's the last one I'd have expected to escape. Two left feet, that one. Much as I'd like to believe she made it out, somehow I doubt it. 
Honestly, I'm impressed she made it this far, but my gut tells me she's still here. I, I think we should keep looking for the rest of those sacrificial stones. Whoever's still bound up in the cult's rituals is in the greatest danger. It's getting to the point that I hardly recognize this place. It's like the sky is on fire and everything's scorched. Did the cult come here just to destroy this place? That hardly makes any sense, but Daedra Warship too often doesn't. It's possible this is all just a side effect of the ritual, not its intent. Who knows, maybe their magic isn't just feeding on the souls of those they've captured, but everything here. All the more reason to stop them, quickly. Lava? And look, those trees! The shifting is more drastic here. We need to free Ardia from that ritual before it drains her soul completely, even if it kills her. Still, we should look for focal crystals nearby that are drawing power from her. Destroying them is the only way to save her life and her soul. I mean, stopping the ritual prematurely might kill her, but there are fates worse than death. If her soul is drained entirely from her body, it won't be left to the mercy of the Divines. It'll probably wind up in the clutches of Oblivion.
find peace, at least. Let's get out of here. Damn it, Ardia! If only you'd managed to escape. At least we were able to end the ritual before it consumed her soul. May she rest with her kind. I can't be certain, but Dejo, Scarlor, and my little brother Liam are still missing. We have to assume they've been captured and bound like the other two. We need to stop these rituals, and not just for their sakes. I have a theory about the purpose of these rituals. The changes to the land, the sky, the blasted heat. I think this place is being overtaken by another plane. If I had to guess, I'd say it's becoming the Deadlands. I think this ruin isn't actually part of Nern. More like a piece of our world bottled up, and the cult is trying to fill the bottle from another source. Soul-shriven. I've read accounts of this happening, but I've never seen it myself. This ravaged body is all that's left of Galor. His soul, gone somewhere far worse. This is what will happen to the others. To my little brother! Right. You're right. This isn't the time to lose it. There's still hope for the others. Galor couldn't have wandered far like this. There must be another ritual site nearby. Let's go. Your weapons. The battle is won. must keep me near and I'll make you watch your brother waste away you can make it back to your tree 
trees, Dejos. We need to keep moving. Dejos and I were not close. Truth told, I think she merely tolerated me and my brother. Not that I can blame her. I hope she finds some rest with her trees. Liam, hang in there, little brother. We'll find you. We seem to be getting close to the heart of the cult's plot. Other than the ruins, the terrain here is unrecognizable from where we came from. I'd wager that's where we'll find him. And Zagira. No, I don't care about that hooded viper. I just want my little brother back. But if she stands in our way, I'll gladly kick her fetching ass back to oblivion. Come on, Liam needs me. Liam back and maybe I won't fetch and kill you. locked us out. We aren't getting that gate open by force, but I bet that mechanism plays some part in getting it open. I think that mechanism must be connected to the gate, but that can't be the only thing stopping us, or Zagira wouldn't be so confident. We should look around. There might be more of these Daedric objects involved in the barrier. Sealed. Let's find Liam. Sakira, if you think a little lava is going to stop me, you've got another thing coming. Allow you to escape that easily. 
I would let you just save. You think that little toy will save you? You can't stop. I will. Life isn't a fairy tale. Sometimes villains get what they deserve anyway. It helped. There's still something drawing power from the ritual. Let's keep looking. Only one by the look of it. Going to save Liam and stop Segura's plot here and now. Let's find the ritual's focal points and weaken it so we can set him free. I don't know. He's my little brother. I have to try. If it comes to it, end the ritual prematurely. I'd rather send Liam into the arms of Mother Morrowind than let Oblivion have him. Just try. Please. I thought I'd never see you again. You can inform your worthless legates that we stopped the cultists. No thanks to you. Just be grateful your little dispute didn't land you afoul of the law. Cease your meddlesome trespassing while you're ahead, and get a real job. We did it! My little brother is safe and that backstabbing viper Zagira's plans are in shambles. Oh, I almost wish I could see what Dagon does to her for her failure, but my imagination's probably better than his anyway. We leave this useless swit to his report and count to Zora's lucky stars. My little brother is alive and well, thanks to you. That's more than I could ask. We owe you. If you ever need anything, and I mean anything, you can count on me. I should get word that we're safe to our parents as soon as possible. I, I hope to see you again soon. And Liam, straight to Leowin, you hear? I just want a moment to catch my breath and thank your friend here, Mother.
The Divines were in a good mood when they made this place. My Lady Nocturnal, I beg you. Ungrateful child. Bear the consequence of your failure with grace. You mortal, I command you to speak with me. Another mortal? Have you come to the Shrine of Nocturnal to grovel at my feet like that worthless acolyte? Or will you betray my hospitality as well? Yes, a faithless weakling named Melona Brolis. When thieves came to my property, she spoke to them as friends and asked them to stop, as if that would stay their hands. The Shade Sickle, a powerful instrument of my will. For her inability to protect it, Melona will never sleep again. I wonder how long she can last. Perhaps you have the metal to return my sickle. With it, you would reap great reward. I will bear witness. Do not fail me. Now, speak to my acolyte and find the cowardly fools who dared to steal from me. Your doubts do you credit, mortal. But in your heart, you know the truth. Your shadow grows long and dark. The shades of Evergloam dance at the edge of your sight. I am Erdra. I am Nocturnal. If I repent fervently enough, Nocturnal may show me mercy. I was here, honoring the mistress as I do every night, when Giovanni and Darin, some people I knew growing up in Leowen, stepped out of the shadows. They took my lady's relic. I, I tried to stop them, but I... I just couldn't. No. Darin had a sword to my throat. I've never seen her so desperate. I don't know what's become of the sickle, but Giovanni has a room in Leowin, around the corner from the bank. He might still be there. They said they were going to meet after delivering the sickle to Tuma Mazaf. Maybe you could follow Giovanni to this meeting? Tuma Mazath is a powerful necromancer. My friends are in more trouble than I am. Please help them. I'll pay you. If you can find Giovanni in Leowin, Follow him to his meeting with Darin. And also, I know it's a lot to ask, but could you try to get them to abandon all this? The thieving and conspiring? It's not worth it. I just want them to be safe. Giovanni is a kind person, and Darin is... abrasive, but she stood up for all of us when we were little. I know them. They aren't bad people. And if I'm right about Tuma Mazath, no one deserves the fate he has in store for them. He used to visit the shrine once a fortnight. Always just said he was paying his respects. I had no idea what he was plotting, what he was capable of. If he pairs the power of the sickle with his necromancy, I'm not sure what will happen.
there are many people in Leowin who need help. I have a job for you, if you are interested. So, did you finish your Shh. dangerous job, Gartuna Mazeth? Be very grateful if you let me be. Stealing from Nocturnal and working with Tuma Mazeth doesn't seem worth the risk. The sickle we took from Nocturnal is just what the Necromancer needs to complete his ritual in Bloodrun Cave. Of course it's worth it. Just stay here until we receive further instructions. Who are you? What did you hear? Who told you that? Malona? I won't apologize for what happened the last time I saw her, and you can tell her that yourself. What do you want? Who have you been talking to? Malona? She went crazy after she found religion. Judging us when she worships Nocturnal? Psst. Never could appreciate irony.
I am not afraid of you. Victory is cruel. Defeat is worse. See? something wonderful about wandering a city's streets with no destination. Here ye, card sharps and collectors! 
Test your wits and courage in a brand new card game, Tales of Tribute. You return to me at last. The faithless wanderer succeeds where my servants fail. Once again, the fruits of devotion prove inferior to the benefits of skill. Claim your reward from Malona, mortal. You find favor in the shadows. So, did you just return the Shade Sickle? Is my lady appeased? Oh, thank goodness that's over. Now that Nocturnal has the Sickle, maybe she'll show me mercy. What about the Necromancer Tuma Mazath? Hmm, I didn't think he would willingly part with a relic. Good. 
The sickle should never be used in a necromancer's ritual. I'll make sure it's well hidden next time. No thief will ever claim it again. Speaking of which, are my friends all right? I see. I wish this experience would be enough to let them see how dangerous their chosen path was. Still, they're adults and they can make their own decisions. I just wish they'd decided on a life that was less likely to get them killed. Maybe. I hope so. Whether my friends and I will ever be able to move past all this, that's another matter. Here's your reward. Without your help, well, there's no telling what my lady is capable of. Thank you, and may the shadows guide you. I can't thank you enough. Nocturnal is wise and powerful, but in her realm of Evergloom, forgiveness is in very short supply. Of course. The failure was mine. I earned whatever rebuke my lady had planned for me. Faith isn't a matter of convenience, my friend. My lady is unfathomable, powerful, eternal. I will follow her wisdom, whatever the cost.
Zizitze. I whispered a prayer to the shadow of Atakota, and now you stand before me, an agent of change who appears in my hour of need. Yes, this will do. I have a task for you. Before me are the bones of Aniswo, a priest of Sithis, who died searching for a special tome. I seek to whisper the proper words to Fairy Neshte's soul through the void and back to the Hist, but that cannot happen until the tome is found. I need you to venture inside the Zitze stone nest and locate the Night Wielder's tome. I will mark your map with the place Neshte thought it most likely to be. Bring the tome to me so Neshte may find his path. You will not go unrewarded. I would retrieve the tome myself, but I fear the Solzan who inhabits Zitze and killed Neshte will try to disturb his remains. I must stay here and guard them. Strike the Sulzan down if they threaten you. Claim the tome and return. A tribe that has lost their way. They worship violence and chaos above all. Their callousness brings unwanted strife and bloodshed to the marshes. They are dangerous, particularly to outsiders. The Niswo and the Zulzan may both embrace impermanence, but they do so in drastically different ways. Likely the Tome is something that should remain the protection of the clutch of Niswo. Perhaps they killed him, so they might keep it. I have never seen it for myself. It is said to be a tome of shadow magic written by a dry-skinned man by the name of Azra Nightwielder. I have reason to believe it is highly dangerous, though I have heard the runes within cannot be read by mortal eyes. The Niswo see with more than eyes. Perhaps this shadow mage does as well. I know little of him, besides the fact that Dry Skins credit the name with the creation of shadow magic. An absurd notion, but many think discovery the same as invention. The two are bound. Niswo Neshte's soul cannot properly pass until the mission he pursued so fervently in life is resolved. His sense of purpose was so strong, it carries on. If we finish his work, his death need not have been in vain. I am Vovaste, an apprentice. All priests must first take on the role of Vovaste before becoming a Niswo themselves. Niswo Neshte was my mentor. So you see why this matter is very important to me. Though I am not yet a Niswo, as his apprentice, I feel it is my duty. In life, this was Neshte's path to walk. Now, he will walk with me through shadow and void, through river and root, through death and change.
I hope you did not have too much trouble. I feel as though something has shifted. Sithis has ushered in change. Tell me, did you find the Nightwielder's tome? I will see it safely tucked away with the clutch of Niswo. Your reward, as promised. Now, I must perform my rites as Soul Tender. You may observe, if you wish. It would honor him to have another in attendance. 
Here now, clutchkin of nothing speakers. May your soul pass through the void beyond void and return to the hist. Rivers ten and two sundered into the shadow of one. Inelegant, but ever-changing. The hist watches, the soul flows. And so, be born again under nothing stars. It is finished. The task is finished, and the rite is complete. As is our business here. I must return to the heart of the marsh to deliver the news. Until we meet again. You have my thanks. Now that my work here is done, I continue my studies. I am still Vovaste, and someday I will become a Niswo. Hopefully, one that would make Neshte proud. I will return to the marshes and find my way. Change will carry me to where I am needed. Change is inevitable. The clutch of Niswo accounts for this in many ways. It is not a limitation. Neshte's soul has passed on and will return to the Hist. But my journey has only just begun. Be well. Perhaps we will see each other again.